Just getting some uh, data coming across U.S. weekly jobless claims, initial claims coming in a little bit higher than expected. Once again, 239,000 versus 235,000 expected. Uh, PPI, more inflation data, also better than expected. 2.7 percent uh, versus 3 percent expected there on the year over year number. Uh, month over month to the downside as well. Negative 0.5 versus a flat reading. That was expected. So two days in a row, we get some uh, inflation data moving in the right direction. Negative 0.1% on the uh, core month over month number versus a 0.2% uh, print expected. Continuing claims, 1.8 million versus 1.835. So uh, two weeks in a row there. Again, we're seeing a bit of a uh, downtick overall. So uh, futures were holding on to positive territory going into that. Uh, latest reading on uh, PPI again, producer prices. So the prices that producers are paying for manufacturing the goods that uh, you and I spend our hard earned money on. So it looks pretty good actually. Uh, again, 2.7% versus three expected there for that PPI print. Ton of things moving around here in the pre-market. Once again, we'll talk about uh, big tech specifically. There's a number of uh, kind of minor stories in big tech uh, for Apple, for Amazon, for Meta, right across the board. Some cost-cutting uh, talk coming through once again for both Amazon and Meta, uh, both after the close yesterday and this morning, uh, helping both of those stocks at this point. We'll also look at uh, Tesla, I noticed, was back to the upside this morning. Nothing really causing that move, but pretty good look for Tesla as well. It is Thursday, April 13th, 2023. TraderTV.Live starts now. Yeah, nice look overall. Hey, there's Sharif. Uh, nice look overall for the uh, market here, about half a percent right now. Now for the NASDAQ, S&P uh, back to the upside as well. Uh, following that number overall, we're doing pretty well as far as uh, inflation data here. Uh, two days in a row, two prints in a row in the right direction. If you're just joining a little bit late there, U.S. PPI on the year over year, number 2.7 versus 3 expected coming off of, if you remember, 4.6 last month so we are definitely heading in the right direction negative 0.5 there on the month over month number core on the month over month number negative 0.1 so uh market liking this to kick things off initial jobless claims also in the right direction here two weeks in a row we've seen not only initial jobless claims, but uh, this inflation data helping. Yeah, definitely uh, having a disinflationary pressure downwards, Brendo. But, you know, I've been waiting for bad numbers to mean bad and good to mean good. And this may actually be the beginning of it. But we're, you know, if you're looking for the consumer to stop spending money on the back of uh, these, uh, you know, weaker numbers, it doesn't look like they are. Delta actually saying that some of their highest projections for Q2, and that's where we've seen the money being spent, right, from goods to services. Yeah, it's a good, uh, good point, uh, good look for DAL here in the pre-market as well, back to the upside after we got uh, you or no, it was AAL that came out with a negative forecast mm -hmm. going forward. So all of those airlines were under pressure uh, yesterday and uh, earlier on in the week. So we'll have a look at that coming up uh, right back down uh, 0.3 now NASDAQ 0.2 for the uh, S&P after that initial pop. Uh, lots to consider here going into a brand new day here, guys, going to be an interesting one uh, coming off of the now uh, eight and four Blue Jays with another Walk off last night, Neil. <laughs> I'm glad you opened with that, eh? Like, um, yeah, because the 12th game of the season, the, the Jays winning is what we're concerned about. Look, don't scream too loud or the futures are going to make a reversal and flunk uh, on this move to the upside. Uh, obviously, look, the Jays were, f were fine, but I mean, the Raptors had a playoff game last night, and if you're a Toronto fan, then you realize that they blew. Um, a, a large fourth quarter lead with the inability to hit foul shots, and sometimes people get distracted from time to time. Hopefully nobody yells too loud on the trading floor, otherwise yeah, maybe we could get distracted uh, with our job. I don't, it's kind of frustrating. But what, it is what it is. This is good for the Raptors. Because, because I, don't, I mean, the Raptors screwed up a long time ago. So. Oh, by the way, GFAI uh, on a collision course with 35, and it's already 50 cents a share for Locate. That's probably going to be a dollar by the end of the day. That stock is on fire. <laughs> I mean, I'm all about the Blue Jays, and I don't want to throw any, you know, shade on it, but I mean, they, they beat the last place, possibly, Detroit Tigers Yay. in extra innings. Hey, win's a win. 
him to win. Yeah, we had Gosman on, which was nice. He played, got 11 strikeouts, which was really good. Yeah, GFAI right now popping like crazy. Um, I wrote down on the – I have the sticky oh, note today. I actually have GFAI on here, and we've just missed it. I said I, – I mean, it's right on here. Break 33-34, which we did, we did right when we were writing this message, uh, and we probably go to 40. Well, there it goes right now. There's 34 level that we we're talking about. It broke it, and it's going to 40. So it looks like we're going to be pretty good here um, with that call. But, yeah, I mean, early, early on, who knows where this is going to go. Uh, the AI names continue to pop upside, oh, and here the? goes uh, guard force again here today with a huge move to the upside. So, I mean, it's starting to go. You can see the market has pulled back a little bit there off the PPI and the... Um, we got, we got, what, uh, jobless claims uh, jobless. as well. So um, some num numbers coming through there, and it's fading out a little bit right there. Oil as well today uh, down just slightly. So we got a little slightly down move in oil, slightly up move in the market, and then this guard force starting to go as well, up to 36. I always think that when you break a level like that, you, get, you go to 40. That's why I just wrote down 40. I mean, obviously on a daily chart, we don't see anything like that. So we're going to wait to see what happens here. But it's already 36.20. And the volume coming in right now, 660,000 shares. We'll see what happens here. But there's that mark that already got broken, that 34. It was actually 34.50, 34.60. Now you're up to 36. So I still think there's lots of room to run here. We've got Apple on our mind. Look at this. 37 taking off goes guard force right there. Wow, that's going to be this one. We'll start it off right now with a little slap action here because that is a, wow, 38 right now for guard force. I mean, this name is really starting to get going here um, once again. So I don't know. I mean, we took out that $34 level. We wrote on the sticky note that level up to 40 bucks right now. Guard Force taking names um, and cashing checks if you're long. That's for sure. I was thinking 24 would be a great support level, so but to come back to 24 uh, means that we have to fall quite a bit right now. Next level here for Guard Force looks to be 40 bucks, and then we see what happens right there. I mean, everyone always looking at even dollars, but just in the last... Uh, three or four minutes, man, $33, $34. And there's $39 right now. So we'll hit some bangs right now as Guard Force taking out levels, man. It looks like that $40 that we wrote down right here is going to be coming a little quicker than we thought. Now you're at $39. Uh, we're getting there anyways on GFAI, boys. This is going to be a wild ride here today. We just did 150,000 shares in about 30 seconds. So it's starting to get spicy once again. Yeah, absolutely nuts yesterday. Uh, 1.1 million shares on that one, remember. Uh, there's also this, which uh, I didn't even notice late in the day yesterday, but CXAI, the next maybe uh, to start going here. A ton of volume on this one already as well. 65% to the upside. So uh, the key, as we were just saying, <laughs> apparently just have AI in your ticker and all is well. That's my um, takeaway. Yeah, I mean, this one's actually a little bit bigger, like eight and a half million floats. So I mean, the whole group's probably gonna get going uh, once again today. So we'll keep an eye on uh, some AI stocks, but wanted to highlight this to kick things off because it, it's tough to see, I know, but I'll zoom in here. Cooling inflation in March seems to be the key. Over the past couple of days here, we got uh, two prints in the row for the overall market uh, heading in the right direction, but a lot of analysts and a lot of notes uh, I was reading this morning pointing to this as well. Uh, just remember, coming up just around the corner, like tomorrow, <laughs> we're back in earnings season. So oh, baby. we could get uh, a rude awakening, I feel. Uh, I mean, I don't know how this is going to go, obviously, but yeah. a lot of cautionary talk heading into earnings. Yeah, and that's what I'm hearing as well. So I, I'm going to reiterate what I said in the beginning of the quarter. It's going to be a stock picker's market. You can't just go in and throw money into an ETF. Some will outperform, some won't. And uh, yeah, that's how you'll make money, I think, going forward for a little bit. But it's interesting, Brendo. I mean, at what point, and we talk about this a lot, do bad numbers become bad, yeah. right? I mean, we're waiting for that switch, and sometimes you don't really know exactly when uh, that switch goes on. And we had the conversation with uh, Danielle Shea earlier in the week in the sense that, you know, if they guide or if they talk negative enough and then come out, you know, and just beat the bare minimum, it's still going to be positive. So we'll see. Uh, just uh, to get everyone up to speed, though, City, uh, Wells Fargo, and JP Morgan coming through first. We'll get that pre-market tomorrow. And then I was noticing, I was reading uh, yesterday, I mean, next week we get Netflix, we oh, get yeah. Tesla next week. So uh, coming quick and fast here, guys, as far as earnings are concerned. 
Yes, they are coming quick and fast like the Toronto Raptors blowing leads. We're just talking about some Raptors again because um, it, it, that's all it's about. And look, earnings, we, look, we, we like the banks. It'll be interesting tomorrow when we, when we start off earnings season with them. But when you start to get to the big boys uh, and the tech names, when you, when, when, and Shreve said it, said it best, when, when bad is bad, um, when bad news is bad news, you're kind of getting to that point where unemployment goes up, and all of a sudden, we start. To, we we know inflation's already peaked at this particular point. You get some lighter prints, okay. Then you start to realize what else is the Fed going to do except for um, eventually pause and then and drop rates. So we know that's likely to happen at some point. Whether the pause is right away, it kind of feels like that's a decent chance. At least at least the way the at least the way we're seeing with the inflation prints, but the job market really turning around. And we know it's gonna, we know unemployment's gonna go up. It's just a matter of when. Netflix is an interesting name for us because, you know, you've, you've already put in a bit of a lower high. You're coming into earnings, resting on a 330 support level. And we just had the test and the bounce just to let you know how, how big the level is. We get there to the bottom and we kind of are running away from it here today. I don't know how strong we can get away from these lower highs of Netflix 350 was a bit of a wall. So on any break in the market, like this is one, I didn't think this would happen today because, you know, we're sitting, when I came in and sat down, like this was, at, like, we were testing 330. So at the end of the day, I was thinking that was more likely to test 330, look for bounce plays over unders if I was looking at this name. All of a sudden that 345 into the high 340s for a short becomes available to us on Netflix because it's made a $7 move in the last hour and a half and you know quite frankly that's a lot i don't know that i'd want to be chasing netflix up here uh going into next week but that's one that i wasn't necessarily watching uh when i sat down for the levels and you know could come into play to the upside we know what happened yesterday sort of to end the day let's go to the queues here to end the day uh on the queues we're still at that thirteen thousand level we didn't really get off that much off the bottom so we're essentially flat that's why i was pointing out netflix like up two and a half percent or almost two and a half percent on a big bounce kind of a strong move there in, in the face of not that much on the market. Still much better than we looked at in the afternoon. But that 13,000, it's like a magnet right now. Like, it's just we cannot get too far away from it um, all overnight, basically. That 13,000 just sort of back and forth, like in a 40 handle range. Tried to break it just now, and we're still testing it. Uh, so Netflix on the radar. If we get into the high 40s, that's where I would short it. But didn't think so about a half an hour ago. Yeah, Netflix has been on slide uh, the last couple of days, but still 330, so it's still it's still nice, man. Still still back up from 300, of course. You know, the name that Brendan brought up, the other name there was going to be Tesla, so I'll talk about that just real quick. It's still really in the middle here. Um, you know, this is a name that's going to be dangerous into earnings because there's been those price cuts that they talked about in Japan. Um, we've talked all, all about Elon Musk and sort of where his thoughts are. seems to be more maybe towards... Twitter and getting that all figured out, but um, hopefully, you know, he'll hop on the call, talk a little bit about, you know, what they expect with some of their deliveries of the truck and, you know, some of the talk there of batteries and, and production numbers in China. I'm, I'm just excited to see what happens. I mean, they're going to have their two million car goal. Uh, they're going to talk about that. We're going to see how close they are to that um, and if there's any supply chain disruptions or anything um, in, the, in, the, in the loop here, but I really like Tesla. I, I just feel like they're really producing at a high level right now, and they're just been coming down with the market, just like they sort of led the market. Now they're coming back in a little bit. We're just going to see where, where where their earnings call goes, and I feel like it's going to be a great name to trade, and it's really just coiling up to make a move somewhere, just like it kind of was up here, 200, 210, 220, and then the move was down, and then right back up to 210, and now we're back in uh, to, to where I think is a pretty comfortable area for Tesla right now around this 180 mark. It doesn't seem to want to go too far uh, off of 180, but we'll see. If we can get going there next week on Tesla, it's a name that again today is outpacing the market. So I, you know, I, I like it. I think that this is a name that's going to work. I'm a little bit tired of all the EV stuff, but um, you know, it, it, it continues to be a talk of the town. And you know, with some of the new rules there and um, legislations in the U.S. Uh, as far as uh, energy is concerned. I still think that Tesla's a winner and, uh, you know, up 0.73 right now. If we've cleared up some of the supply chain issues, I really think that this one has a good chance to not only beat earnings, but then go back to somewhere, 
you know, in that mid to, to low 200 area, 210, 220. So I like Tesla here. Obviously, uh, we have to have Danielle Shea on. She's like Tesla all the time, um, and we can talk about this. But it's a name that I think can work as well as Netflix. I think they both can have good earnings, right? I mean, the only real earnings that I'm, I'm a little concerned, we get some mixed reports about Apple uh, coming through a little bit. So, so sometimes you get some worries about some of their shipments and, and what's going on. We had that uh, Sirius yesterday, S, uh, CRUS. Um, uh, Sharif talked about them yesterday, and his friend, what's your friend's name? Alfred, uh, did some work under the hood there with that guy. Alf, I, I don't even know this guy, and he's already become he's famous. Every time Sharif mentions, you know, my friend Alfred bought Square at $30, let it go all the way to 300 and then wrote he's it like, all the way back down. But now Alfred's sniffing under the hood here of Apple. I'm going to have to get this Alfred guy's number and find out what he thinks about Tesla as well. Get it so. on the bat phone. Sharif, Tesla have any, uh, Alfred have any opinions on Tesla there, Sharif? He, dude, he, okay, so shout out Alfred. I'm going to have to send him this piece here, but. We got to get Alfred on the show. He like. made a lot of money. He was pounding the desk in 2019. He didn't know where to put his money, and he bought everything. Tesla, 2019, you do the math. Yeah, the earnings yeah. coming up uh, <laughs> next week, guys, uh, Wednesday for Tesla. Uh, Raheem Alani is here, if uh, anyone didn't know. <laughs> There's no good way to do that. Uh, Managing Director of uh, OCI Groups here in Toronto. We're going to talk some uh, cannabis because uh, if you missed it earlier in the week, big uh, M&A headlines that turned out to be uh, pretty shocking as far as the valuation is concerned. But uh, this was the deal that was announced, uh, Hexo getting taken out by Tilray. It was funny because we were sitting here in the afternoon when this news first came out, and there was a few people that reported it as $250 million. So that had Hexo higher. Tilray actually popped on it as well. And then after the close, we learned what the actual <laughs> number was, and it was nowhere near 250 Yeah, and actually it was funny. If you looked at it on Monday, uh, because of the rumor of them potentially being acquired, the stock popped on Monday up 30%, because generally when someone's getting taken out, it's above market, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this ended up on a value basis, ended up being 24% below market, which seldom, if ever, happens. Uh, and ended up being 56 cash. There was 173 of a promissory note that Tilray was doing. Yeah. And Tilray had really bad numbers a couple of days before. So you put all of that together and throw it in the Vitamix and see what you get. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about, uh, <laughs> I might want to throw a few things in the uh, Vitamix as far as uh, uh, cannabis names are concerned. We've been talking about the possibility of more M&A, more consolidation in this group for, you know, it seems like a couple of years now at yeah. least. Um, talk us through what this means overall as far as, as you said, valuations nowhere near what they once were. Right. Uh, well, if you look at Hexo from 2017 to what they got acquired for, uh, $2 billion down. Unreal. Like, and these are billion dollars, Unreal. right? Like, they, they had made an acquisition we were talking off camera for, they've made several acquisitions in the, in the nine-figure range. And to lose all of that value over the course of the last five and a half years is quite, you know, profound. Uh, so, you know, we've been talking about what are the catalysts to get M&A? What are the catalysts for these stocks? It's going to be U.S. legalization. It's going to be when the next election is. So we've been talking about these things until we're sort of blue in the face. And one of the things that's always been there since the beginning is this is a new thing that's coming to the market, much like booze did, you know post-prohibition, and you're not going to have 40 companies out there that are right. worth a billion dollars. It's right. just not going to happen. It's going to be one or two or three major players, and some of them have had missteps, like Canopy going into South Africa was a massive misstep, as an example. Uh, there are going to be international markets where they'll be able to segue into, but not to the same size as what, A, people thought the Canadian market was going to be, and B, hopefully what the U.S. market might end up becoming, because... Um, like we were again just talking about off market, there's so much distribution now. There's so much cannabis out there that where are you going to like how much how much can people consume is is sort of the, the the prevailing thought process. But with the U.S., we've always talked about the multi states getting into new states. Uh, Maryland's coming online. Kentucky's coming online. Connecticut just opened and they had 22 million in sales, uh, or they're projecting 22 million in sales. Uh, the U.S. economy is projecting. I think it was 10 billion worth of economic activity that cannabis is going to bring to the market in 2023. So the U.S. markets are still where you want to look at, still where you want to be. Uh, we'll talk about some of the companies on here that are either in the U.S., not in the U.S., but the Canadian market is highly saturated at this point, and that's why you see someone like Hexo, who is very Canadian-centric, Canadian-focused, losing $2 billion in valuation. Do you worry about the margins in this business uh, at times? Because you have so many deflationary pressures. You've got to meet uh, the price of the black market to weed them out. You've also got more market participants getting involved. How do you kind of overcome that? What's your look on that? 
Yeah, so actually there was the, the CEO of Organigram, I actually just mentioned that uh, yesterday. He said he's going to have a hard time uh, meeting just cheap cannabis that's out there, again, from the black market and from other competitors that are out there that are going to have to start knocking prices down to just sort of, because there is no really cartel that sort of says, hey, this is how much a can of beer is going to cost, right? Yeah, like the LCBO yeah. sort of has that here in Ontario. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a competitive market, which is great if you're a consumer. Uh, if you're an investor, you sort of have to just watch to see what the company's plans are going to be. How are they going to cut costs? Where are they going to cut costs? Um, you know, some of these companies are now shutting facilities, shutting grows, shutting different things just to keep um, CapEx as low as possible to fight sort of the stem of what's there. So, um, you know, I think initially you saw that big surge of a lot of competitors coming into the market. Now a lot of them going away. Now it's going to be, I think, right sizing before you start to see price stability, I think. All right. Uh, so that leads us to two two individual uh, issues. I, I, when this first came out, uh, going back to the beginning of the week, I saw a lot of people saying, what on earth is Hexo? So <laughs> maybe we can give you know, a bit sure. of an overview as far as Hexo is concerned. And then naturally that kind of leads us to, okay, so where else could we look potentially for this same kind of activity? Right, so uh, Hexo is a Quebec-based player. They are, one, they are the largest, one of the largest, if not the largest in the province of Quebec. Uh, Tilray had done a strategic alliance with them last year, so that's why they were already in bed together. So Hexo has put up good numbers, has been there, but again, when you keep making large acquisitions, large purchases, and if you don't right-size them into your company aggressively and on time, uh, you're going to start to see what Hexo did, which is acquired too much, and valuations just couldn't maintain where they thought they were going to be. When you start projecting where your revenue is going to be in 21, 22, and 23, and like Sharif said, with the price of cannabis coming down, with the number of competitors coming down, the amount of cannabis that's being consumed, et cetera, et cetera, you're just not going to be able to hit your revenue numbers, and if you don't, you lose $2 billion in market value. I was walking around uh, just in our neighborhood on the weekend, and I, I was telling Sharif this this morning. There's in a two block radius, essentially, around our neighborhood, there's five, five cannabis stores. Yeah, you remember when you couldn't walk two blocks without seeing, you know, seven Starbucks and four Tim Hortons? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now same. it's 11 cannabis shops. <laughs> same thing. I got to go find um, the Starbucks. Let's talk about a few others here. Uh, yeah. Cura, to start things off, C-U-R-A uh, on the CSE here in Toronto. Yeah, and, and they're listed in, in the U.S. as well. Yeah. And the reason that we thought about Cure Leaf is, is just to that point. Uh, they right-sized some operations, laid off some headcount in, uh, in California, in Colorado, which were the biggest, California, Colorado, and Arizona were the, and Nevada, excuse me, were the biggest M&A markets. So they had make, made some acquisitions, right-sized, but they just made an acquisition in Utah, which now gives them a footprint four times the size of where they're going to be in Utah. Uh, they spent $20 million on an acquisition there. Um, three, uh, three retail shops in Park City, Provo, and um, one other. And so they're growing their footprint in a place like Utah, which is now coming online. And if you watch Yellowstone, you know how big sort of Park City can be. Sort of that's what they wanted to. Great show. <laughs> <That was laughs> what great they show. wanted to uh, yeah, make yeah. the Yellowstone like, right? Like Park City. So yeah. anyway, they're continuing to grow, but they are, you know, right-sizing some of their larger operations and growing where they see the opportunities to be. Shout out to Kevin Costner. Uh, yeah, even, I mean, even this popped up uh, this week on this news, it would appear anyways, a couple of days anyways, of uh, uh, good-looking price action. Uh, T-E-R, another one kind of in this same space. Yeah, so Terrasense, one that we have talked about as well in the past. And both of these, if you look at the chart the last day, they're both up 7 and 9%, I believe. Uh, Terrasense has been acquisitive in nature. Uh, the, the chairman is an M&A background financier. So they have been acquisitive. They bought a company called Gage here last, I think it was a year, year and a half ago. And uh, they got, grew their footprint into Michigan. So they are going into some of those states that are growing uh, as sort of as versus being on the cusp of having grown already. Uh, so Terrasen has continued to grow. They are moving to the TSX now. So that might uh, widen their audience as well. So that's one that I think you keep an eye on if you're looking at companies that will be growing through acquisitions. Uh, another one that's uh, dual listed and also well known, a little bit more well known, uh, Aurora Cannabis, ACB. Uh, one that we kind of group with the till rays of the yeah. world. Uh, tell us about them. Yeah, so Aurora is sort of a blast from the past, right? Like that was, that was one of the darlings at the beginning and they could do nothing wrong. They had a million square foot facility in Edmonton and that was supposed to be the thing and then just didn't grow yeah. as they were supposed to. So the reason I thought Aurora was interesting is simply I saw, uh, we saw some news that uh, they are listed on uh, the NASDAQ. And if you, mean, if you miss your price of a dollar and you stay below a dollar for a certain time period, uh, you get a sort of a, a letter from the uh, exchange. So they have until mid-September uh, to get 10 days of consecutive pricing over a dollar. They're around 70 cents US right now, I believe, and they trade a couple million shares a day. So they are very active, but you may want to just main monitor what that's looking like as they continue to go here, as they hit their September deadline, because you really don't want to be moving off an exchange like that once you're on it. So 
Uh, I imagine they're going to be doing some stuff around that. Right. Uh, but outside of that, you know, they're they're producing, they're generating revenue, missing numbers, and you know, let's see how they go. Uh, similar story. Uh, AVNT. If you want to take a bit of a flyer, maybe on something that's uh, much much lower priced, uh, AVNT. Isn't the one. Yeah, so that was one, again, just they have been acquisitive, but uh, much smaller in nature, making a couple acquisitions here in Canada. They're at about 18 cents, trading between 16 and 32, and that's one of those if you want to take a lottery ticket and yeah. see what happens. Uh, but they have made some acquisitions. They have they just announced their quarter, uh, and, and they had $7.9 in revenue, so they have their third consecutive quarter of growth. Uh, they've brought their net loss down to just a hundred grand from a million last year, quarter over quarter, sorry, year over year. So um, that's one of those smaller ones that will continue potentially to acquire the smaller, smaller guys that sort of had the hopes and dreams of going public and realize that the market wasn't there for them. So they might be in an opportune place to take advantage of the fact that they are of a small cap size, but picking up some of the smaller, smaller guys and right sizing those as well. Because the most recent acquisition they did, they said they're going to right size sort of there and they've saved, I think, already a million bucks in costs. Uh, through those acquisitions. As we said, though, uh, the sector itself, I think it needs more, obviously, of this uh, activity to come through. It's still too big, uh, definitely, in uh, this country. So uh, more to come as far as uh, cannabis in Canada specifically is concerned. Raheem Milani is Managing Director of OCI Groups here in Toronto. Appreciate it, as always. Anytime. Yes, sir. And uh, look, thank you, Raheem, always for coming in. And uh, you know, always just about education, looking at some different ideas, as we always say. But uh, there's something that I wanted to sort of get out. And we talked, we did talk about this previously. And I know it's, it's it can be a source po uh, point for everybody. But the lesson that can be learned from what happened uh, with Hexo, and I think Brendan talked about this a couple of times, is when there is deal speculation, it's like, oh, WWE might get bought or uh, whoever it might be, like whatever the rumor is. In this particular case, it was Hexo and Tilray. You need to be careful chasing moves or how aggressively you buy. Like just because um, something is for sale or there's a, a bid coming in or maybe Man U's going to get a bid, it doesn't necessarily mean that the valuation that's going to get paid is going to be an attractive one if you chase the move. And that ended up being the case with Hexo when you had all these wild reports and speculation out there that there was going to be you know, 250 million or whatever it was, and, and then it just ends up being a fraction of that. So be, as a trader, you've got to be really careful chasing those moves. A lot of times you'll see us on like spike news, first thing evaluated, okay, what is the news? Is this something that's worthy of trying to buy the dip and it doesn't have a chance to continue? In this particular case, you ended up finding out it was a fraction and you, you know, kind of the rest, I mean, the rest speaks for itself. If you bought at any point during the breakout, you were essentially never in the money um, the following day and have not been since. So just always be careful when you're trading that spike news, make sure you have it right. If there is no actual price given or valuation given, then you don't really know how to price a move like that unless you have some insider information. And if you do, congrats, uh, let me know. Um, but yeah, that was an ugly one there for Hexo if you happen to have gotten caught in it. Um, thankfully, I don't think anyone did. Yeah, next list is super strong. And by the way, GFAI turned at like 3880. And I am looking at Bullfrog. Uh, we do mention, and we mentioned some of the other AI names out there. Bullfrog, Bullfrog failed the high of the day, interestingly enough on that pop in GFAI. So we look, it, it made a move, it got back to green. It was gapping down, got back green, tried to break out that high, 650 looks like resistance on Bullfrog, but it didn't get through it. If GFAI were to falter today, then Bullfrog get like one cent a share for locates. Quite frankly, if GFAI were to fall back to say like 30 or underneath 30, I would think shorts off 650 makes sense. If GFI continues to go and we're just ramping, a 650 break on Bullfrog uh, is setting up a little bit there. So that's, this is one that's going to be on watch. Not as much volume, which is, that's why I would look for this as a sympathy play on any flush or halt down on GFAI. I'd probably come over to Bullfrog and try and play it. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, you know, we talked about this yesterday with the marijuana stocks, and that is just how cheap it is to produce them now. We talked about that story in Colombia, and then he mentioned there, and some people talking about how, you know, 2 to $5 a gram and things like that. I feel like consolidation is necessary. Um, yeah, the Hexel thing's funny because I knew that Tilray had 49% already uh, of a stake in or interest in Hexo. So, um, you know, I knew it wasn't going to be a huge premium there, but they get controlling stake. And I think, it, I think it's good for Tilray. I think the more that you can sort of merge together, then if you do get that good news from the U.S. or, you know, some of these big 
monumental decisions that are going to come on cannabis. Uh, hopefully that can rally some of those stocks. So I, I, I think consolidation in this space is good. What Raheem was saying makes a lot of sense. There are some other multi-state operators out there uh, that can also work out. So I think that there's a lot of different pockets of strength. Uh, there we talked about grow generation brands yesterday um, and, and, and how that could be a play as well as you legalize the growing of marijuana plants uh, as well by state. So there could be some more push to even a Scott's Miracle Grow, SMG. Let's check out SMG actually because that was a really good stock uh, for a while. I don't know what, what it's been doing lately. We'll have to check on this. Um, but this was a name that, you know, I was looking at for a while. And also, you know, Scott's Miracle Grow also heading into uh, the spring you know, obviously we're gonna talk about, talk about it with marijuana as well, but this is another name here, wow. I mean, this is what I'm talking about, how high fly, how high flyer it was during all that ramp up there, 2021, 2022. Huge move down to 40 bucks and now back up to 74 and kind of hovering around this 50 period. Well, you can't see that right now because of the surge trader, but right there, uh, 65, 70, this kind of a little bottom there. I like Scott's Miracle Grow, plus heading into the spring, like I said, you know, out, out there people actually planting non-medicinal plants could benefit from this. So there's a few different runs here that you could play. I actually don't mind Scott's Miracle Grow. I'm gonna look at some of these numbers because it has come down a lot. Um, we're gonna find out about SMG. That's a name that I'm gonna have to dig a little deeper in because although I am well invested in these cannabis names, which has been a nightmare, this is never a name that I've gotten involved with. So SMG here with an amazing 137 shares today. You talked about deals and oh, buying them early. I wish I bought WWE oh. um, on, a, on any sort of deal news for this one. As look where it is today, up another 2%. This is when it started going here, $65, $70. The Saudis are coming, the Saudis are coming. And then Endeavor swoops in there and buys everything and takes out control of WWE. And this one hasn't looked back uh, at any moment at all. I was actually watching uh, the last match there from Roman Reigns and the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, our WrestleMania. I haven't watched wrestling in forever. It actually was a great uh, main event there. And WrestleMania was on two nights. I thought that was absolutely genius. Sell out SoFi Stadium back-to-back -back nights instead of one. Absolute genius move. And it's too bad that WWE is gone now because it's... Uh, it would have been a great investment. They have that WWE network. You want to talk about streaming services. They're charging 10 bucks a month to basically just stream the goods that they already have, which is, it's incredible. It's a great business. And there's another buyout that actually worked out quite well for shareholders. The World Wrestling Entertainment there, Sharif. I'm so big. That's what I want to know. All of a sudden he blew up. Blair. I'm, all right. <laughs> Uh, first segment of the show, guys, brought to you by Surge Trader, where traders can get a funded trading account up to a million dollars, keep 90% of the profits, trade stocks, indices, forex, crypto, and more. Program has simple rules and no time limits. Go to surgetrader.com forward slash TTV. Promo code bottom of the screen there, guys. Shout out to Surge Trader, as always, again, with the uh, first segment of the show. Uh, here are a few upgrades and downgrades for you so far this morning. Uh, Chevron DraftKings. Hasn't been on this board for quite some time. There it is, WWE, Morgan Stanley liking it. Uh, Costco on here to the upside as well. FSLR, very strong for SEDG uh, all week long. Some of the uh, clean energy solars popping up. Uh, JD.com, we're going to talk uh, Chinese ADRs back to the upside this morning, even with that uh, downgrade uh, this morning for JD. But uh, positive Chinese economic data out overnight, helping some of the uh, Chinese names get, uh, catch a bit of a bit. Anyways, to kick things off. Uh, let's go right to Arun here and get a check of the overall market as we head towards the open. Arun, what do we need to know for a Thursday? Well, we've got a couple numbers. Well, one number out. The PPI has come out. We've kind of digested that. Looks like we're going to go up for now, but we're also going up into a resistance zone created yesterday. So I'm going to keep an eye out for some shorts. Let's see if we can find it for now. It is obviously strong. But let's see if, if somewhere between 30 and 45, if we can actually hesitate a little bit or even just kind of catch a small sell, I think there could be a decent short here. If, of course, if we get above 45, then we got to deal with that whole mess that is above 50 uh, based on yesterday's trade, even before the CPI number. Uh, it, it, it was getting a little tricky up there. So now uh, we've got Fed numbers to deal with. We got CPI action as well. So north of 50 becomes a very tricky uh, scenario to trade. So if we can find that trade somewhere, or the short side trade between 30 and 45, that'll be easy once we get above that. If we get above that, uh, we're going to have to wait and see how that trades out. 
with the strength it is, uh, the way it's moving right now, I think if we can get back underneath 25, we're sitting at 41.35 right now. If we can drop 10 points or so, I think that that'll give me just enough to make the idea of the short valid. And we'll try to play that against 45. And of course, down below, that 15 has been breached. So that one's gone. But yet, they're still catching bids down there. So we're going to have to move that down. 40.95 is now going to be the bottom end support level, just south of 4,100. So there's still a buy zone between 41.05 and 40.95. So let's see if we can catch another bid down there. It's essentially, we're going from range to range today. So be prepared for that type of trade until we really clear these ranges. We're, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure if we're going to get that kind of expansion, large trending moves that we're, we're really looking forward to. So let's see how today, today trades out. But for now, it does seem like it's going to be a range trade. Great stuff. Thanks, Arun. We'll check back in again tomorrow morning. Uh, just taking a note on FFIE, a little EV name, Faraday Future, announcing the uh, date of the first production vehicle to come off their line. Uh, that's the watch list. If you haven't grabbed it yet, make sure you do that. Scan the QR code, watchlist.tradertv.live. We'll get you there as well. All you need is an email address, and you get that for free every single day. So, yeah, uh, just a heads up on FFIE there, popping up on some volume. Uh, let's start with uh, Amazon. Interesting note. Uh, there's a bit of a theme to the watch list today, and uh, cost cutting will come up a few times here. Uh, one of those with uh, Amazon, Andy Jassy coming out, CEO Andy Jassy coming out, uh, talking about the fact that what they've already done has already started to work, and they're confident that uh, they'll see continued benefit from not only some of the job cuts that have come through, but some of the other cost cutting that they've uh, or cost cutting measures that they've made. Uh, looking pretty good. So Amazon kind of re restating you know, yeah. what we've already heard. Yeah, what they did basically was they uh, paused the expansion of their fresh supermarkets. They slowed down the expansion of their warehouses. They also laid off 27,000 people. But even in the face of all that cost cutting, Brendo, they're still looking to expand on certain projects. The Kiefer uh, internet satellite uh, product, and that's named after the Kiefer belt, super nerd, space nerd, the Kiefer belt, shout out. Uh, yeah, so it looks like they're, uh, they're looking to expand some other stuff. I, I was watching an interesting video on that over the weekend, and it was mo mostly about um, uh, Starlink, uh, Tesla's uh, satellite internet, but the, um, the sheer amount of satellites that they have to put into yeah. orbit to cover uh, the geographic space is unbelievable. So it's like 10,000 already, and they're, they're planning on getting more and more and more. Anyways, uh, different uh, different story. Uh, here's Amazon trying to bounce right now, guys, back towards 98 and a half after uh, sitting there a couple of times on the way down yesterday. Uh, so not a huge move, but positive anyways to start. Yeah, very quickly, before we get to Amazon, I just want to I want to go over GFAI and BFRG, Bullfrog, for a quick second, because GFAI just failed the top. We were talking about um, as a sympathy play, BFRG just two seconds ago or a few minutes ago. And then there was this move on GFAI. It took out 38 and change, which was the previous high, wicked above. And then this flush happened, flushed right back into support at $36, actually now beneath it. And at the same time, Bullfrog, which we said was much cheaper locates, by much cheaper, I mean one's like ridiculously more expensive than the other uh, per share, on a per share basis. At the same time, you're getting a lower high on Bullfrog. So instead of trying to figure out when GFAI is gonna turn around or run, just go to the sympathy play. So grab the shorts in there. I did get a small partial fill at 30 and then got 25s. It's now bouncing off 590. I got a couple of legs out there, over one leg out over six and a couple under six. I'll look to get the rest out if it gets into the 80s. But got to watch GFAI if you're going to be trading uh, the group. It has been the leader. We saw that with C3AI, and now GFAI tends to be the uh, yada, yada, yada leader there. So not too bad. I think this is kind of like the, the old cost GME kind of thing. We know 100 is going to be a thing. Just from the technical standpoint, you know 100 is going to be a thing, but the 50 period on Amazon, we bounced off it yesterday after closing below, and that sits at that 98 level. So 98, pretty significant. You've got a little over-under action kind of showing you what's going on at that 50 period on the daily. So it's, I usually try to keep it pretty simple. When you're at the level, wait out the opening range. If opening range can't support a bid above that support level, then you look for the short. If it does support the bid over, then you're looking for longs probably into that 100. And like any significant economic number that has a U-turn, whether it's the Fed, whether it's CPI, whether it's PPI, I really don't care. We had a U-turn and a kind of a rug pull after the 830. That tends to be a resistance zone for me the next day uh, because you had 
essentially you go up into a vacuum and then that's where the turn was. So 101 and a half to 102, if Amazon gets up there, that's why I'd be looking for those shorts. But I'll be sitting Amazon out for the first, I don't wanna say like the first like, like two or three minutes, it could be five minutes, could be 15 minutes, but I need to see it hold above that 98. You've already got a double bottom in there. Once it holds the range, I'd only be looking longs in the morning above that price. And it feels like that's the way it's gonna go today, but I don't wanna be overly obsessed with one direction. That was a problem yesterday. Yesterday was looking too many tech longs on the dips. I like two short ideas into the strength. Those ended up being the two names I was short all day long. And instead of looking for opportunities to reverse, I was just trying to find places to buy because of a bias. I don't want to get too overly biased, although I am looking for those chances, especially on Amazon at that 50 period. All right, uh, for, for, for me, I'm just gonna go trying to go long off Amazon here. I mean, I think a 97 bottom, sort of where we bottomed out yesterday. They're already talking right now about uh, generative AI and how it's gonna change their business and all this stuff. And we've seen rallies happen on you know much less news than that. Cost cutting, delivery uh, times getting better, things like that is all that I wrote down here. You can find all my stuff on the sticky note right now. Uh, I just think that this kind of a bottom that we made yesterday was a big move to the downside here. We started the day off really nice, man, up, up north of 100 bucks, and then just basically gave it up all day. We, it was the only red name we had yesterday. We traded four or five names. We had one red stock. It was Amazon, and um, it was off the open where we initially went short on 100 before it busted out and went to $100.80 in the first 15 minutes, and now starting to come back down a little bit here into the close, which was a pretty bad close for the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ wound up down 0.8 yesterday. I still like this bid down here at 97, 97, 50. We'll see if it comes through. I just, you're looking at the, whoopsies, you're looking at the daily chart here and it just kind of looks the same uh, that you have this decent bottom at 96, 95, something like that. So let's just see if, if, if this kind of causes a little bit move back up to the upside. Amazon's not going anywhere, that's for sure. I like the name. I don't know if we like the valuation, but you know, still down here, 96, $97. Let me just check out what is there uh, PE after all, because it was, I'm not sure what it is at 97 bucks. Uh, oh, they don't have it here on, I don't know, that's funny. I don't know why it doesn't have it here on um, trade ideas, but we'll find out what their PE is eventually. But uh, anyways, Amazon, I just like the level. I like the level that we're at here, 96, 97 dollars. Some good talk today. Forward Let's 39. see if it can get back up to the upside. How much is the it? The forward's 39. 39, okay. Um, do you have your, that on trade ideas? Oh, you got it off No, trade else. ideas, I don't have it either. Yeah, I'm gonna find out why that's, that's not on there. But uh, 39, so 39 well, seems forward, pretty high. forward P. Yeah, yeah, well, regardless. Um, their earnings are going to be coming out and that number will change pretty soon. So uh, nice to see, still $500 billion name. I like Amazon long, but it has to come down a little bit. Not going to win. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is the map I was talking about on the uh, Starlink uh, thing. So you can, it's totally interactive. You can play with it. But yeah, white dots are Starlink satellites right now. It's crazy how many there are. Uh, anyways, uh, Cool link. I'll, I'll grab that link for anyone who wants it. Uh, let's talk about uh, Apple here. Seven uh, percent, according to Bloomberg, seven percent of iPhone production now uh, coming out of India versus uh, China. Um, they're also talking about ten percent possibly uh, getting it to ten percent in the next uh, coming quarters. Uh, also, this kind of popped up this morning was interesting as well. They're looking at Thailand apparently for MacBook production now as well. We're talking Thailand, we're talking India, we're talking Vietnam, but we're also talking away from China. Um, and it's part of the geo -tension, geopolitical tensions that are, uh, that are continuing to expand. And, you know, they're looking elsewhere to kind of hedge their bets. And I think we're going to see more of this, Brendo. Yeah, nice look. Uh, I mean, none of these uh, tech names really, you know, making huge moves this morning, but positive anyways as well. Well, Apple, Apple's a little bit more positive, not a ton, but it's a little bit more positive than the overall market with the ES3, you know, 0.3 and the NASDAQ half percent. Apple's almost a full percent, 0.8. And we already saw it bounce off that one. It didn't really bounce off the 160 yesterday. It, that's not, I guess that's not fair to say. It held the 160 yesterday, and now we're sort of gapping above it. So it got underneath. I was, I actually reversed into a short then was like, nah, 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 it's not, it didn't have the velocity. You could see other things were selling off a little bit more, but it just didn't have the velocity to get through. So I think that support level's uh, all well and good. Oh, that's just a dark pool wick. Uh, so we're still trading about 161. I think that's the level to support on Apple. I did write down, what did I write down for Apple here? I, write, I, I wrote down this, this 162.75. 162 
as the top of this channel. And the more I look at it, it might be more like a 162.5. I might revise that. Yeah, this is like 162.5 uh, area. If we get to that in the upside, I think that's the top where you could run into a little bit of resistance up there. So I don't want to play in the middle on, on Apple. I think we know that 160 got, uh, got held. I, look, I think ultimately it's a good sign that di they're divesting. That cannot be a bad thing for them. Uh, at the end of the day, I mean, Apple... It has had a, a pretty decent pullback the last couple of the last few sessions, I should say, not couple. So the chance that you bounce off that 160, it's got some room to give you a little bit of a bounce zone. But it has been a pretty decent turnaround. It had it's not necessarily a trend reversal just yet. If we get through 155, I think that's a little bit different, especially under that 160 level. But uh, you know, today it's a support level till it's not. I don't want to be trying multiple levels on Apple, like that's the one. If it breaks it, I don't want to be looking long 59, then looking long 58 or anything like that. Like once 160 is gone, I think you're looking for shorts underneath that price. Look, so we, um, we wrote down here, you can check out the sticky note right now with a couple explanations here. I just said we, broke, we breached the 160 level yesterday um, and now the long, I like the long above 160 for sure, but we had that 159.80 uh, level that held yesterday. So it's right here on the sticky note, 160 long. Uh, for Apple, you can find it at Trader TV. Sean, you can look at that uh, and see what you like. But if I just go like that, the chart will load up. There's that 159.80. I mean, it's 159.80 pretty much exactly on. So if we break that level to the downside, then we're going to go short on Apple and use 160 as our out. Or, at, or, or we'll see, maybe 160.30. We'll see what it's looking like at that time as the market's pulling back a little bit. So I still like it. Apple's outpacing the market one more time here today. And I like that 160 level. So we'll see. We're trying to play long. I'm already bidding 160.20. So again, we'll take that against this 159.80, see if that holds, hopefully it does. We'll go long against it. Once it breaks, then we can uh, start to flood, the, flood it short. So let's see if that happens right there for Apple. I think it's a pretty simple trade. Uh, bouncing off 160 would be what we'd be looking for, but then if it doesn't hold, then we think the, you know, sort of the dam breaks here on Apple, and then we go back down to the downside off of, like we, you know, we stopped at 160 there, went back up to 160, 160, so you got a nice buck 50 off that move. This is kind of the play that I'm looking for right now. A little bit of a dip down here off the open. Now this isn't the open, this is 11 o'clock, but I like that fade right back in here into 160, which we held, right? The market was getting killed yesterday afternoon, and Apple did a decent job right here of holding. So if it doesn't hold today on what appears to be okay news from PPI, CPI was okay. If we can't hold 160, then we just have to short Apple. So it's going to be a big play for me today. Let's just hope it's on the long first so we can grab that one. All right, let's uh, go to Meta here. Uh, more cost cutting, uh, <laughs> the theme of the day, I said. Uh, coming through from uh, Mark Zuckerberg late in the day yesterday, they were talking about uh, a number of ways they've not only begun to pull, tighten the strings a little bit, and how it's uh, affecting things. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a funny story in the sense that people are complaining about, what is it, cereal and snack foods? There will be no more cereal, no, no more cereal in the meta uh, cafeteria, I guess, for free. But uh, anyways, it, long story is, it's working and yeah. it's positive. Uh, Piper Sandler with a positive note and uh, price target increase as well. Yeah, just another one of uh, PT upgrades for a meta. Uh, obviously, I'm holding this one. Same, same view I've had for the last little while. I don't know what kind of intraday trade we're going to have today, but it's been choppy. It was very choppy yesterday. Didn't, didn't do too well on it. Yeah, more of the same. Uh, we saw, I want to say, two or three different analysts with a similar note on Meta last week that uh, gave it some positive catalyst here. So uh, do we see more to the upside today, guys, from Meta? A little weaker in the market right now. I mean, I don't want to diddle with this one. Like, there's... There's, a couple, there's too many names that are at like the, those key levels or a little bit closer to the key levels, and Meta is exactly plumb right in the middle at 215, whereas 17's been the top. Ignore those. Like that's 17 on the top. Uh, and then when it comes to the bottom, I know the one. I, I did this last week where I sort of wrote down, and I still like it, 280, 208.50. It just feels as if we haven't had, like this week, on any pullback, why it's been a strong name is you haven't had any pullback into the bigger support level, uh, and that's that too. I have it as 208.50, maybe you call it 208 even, uh, whatever floats your boat, and that hasn't happened. And if we have a real reversal again, like we had the number yesterday, we went to the upside, it ended up being a wick top. If that does it the same and then we kind of press to the, to the bottom, I think this might be the day that you actually get a decent pullback on Meta. And I don't want to be fighting a trend and thinking about any catch falling knife until it's beneath uh, 210. 
and then looking off that 28.5 level. So 217, I think, is a bit of a short. But we've been consolidating up at the top here uh, on Meta. And at some point, you either you know what or get off the pot. It's going to take quite a bit for us to get through that 217, it seems. And if we don't, then at some point we are testing that 208 uh, and a half level. That's the one I want to be ready for. It's just the theme yesterday in the morning was too aggressive catching falling knives. So there's stocks that are it, at the levels like Apple 160 is a pretty clean level. NVIDIA 264 is a pretty clean level. Meta for the bid, I don't really have anything I like until you get down beneath that 210. I mean, Meta's just been on a, on a nice move up, right? I mean, you still have that 214 here that we're going to look at. I, it's just a matter of figuring out what the day is going to be like. I mean, Meta's going to follow the market here. We saw a big move down yesterday into the close, just like the market did. A nice rally for the market, this top of 217. Will it get hit today? Could, could. I mean, we, we, you know, we could break it off the open. I would say you want to short this name if you get anywhere near this 217. There's just not enough good news right now in the market to make this, this stock get any higher, I don't feel like. So anything up here near 217 for me is going to be a fade on Meta. I'm actually going to write that one down because I, 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 don't even, I didn't even look at Meta yet today. Um, forget about the longs. I like the longs better, like I said, in Amazon, in Apple, um, than in Meta. But, uh, you know, you get down to 212. Maybe it's something to look at. We actually really hit Meta really well yesterday. And again, it sucks that I don't have the orders on here, but Meta was, I think, the number one stock uh, for me yesterday as we shorted right up here. The same short that we had yesterday. Actually, I think it was into the close. I think we shorted right here, 215. This is where we were short into the close, and we had some nice pullbacks down. And then we, I think we even shorted up here as well. Oh, yeah, 2 o'clock. Yeah, it was up here. Now that sucks because I don't have the marks. But yesterday we have this, we pretty much had this near this top tick yesterday, giving it to 217 if you remember. So if we get that opportunity today to short, I want to short Meta again. So, because I remember asked, Fahad came over to me and was like, what do I think of Amazon short? And I was talking about AMD and Meta at that time. So we had this move yesterday to the downside. We actually, we actually also like today, we only have crypto coming up, so maybe we'll talk about AMD a little bit there too, but I really like AMD faded off 93, 94 today. So there's a couple good short opportunities that I like. I'm gonna add meta to the list right now. All right, we saw a negative movement in some of the airlines uh, over the past couple of days. Yesterday it was uh, AAL and UAL, uh, leading to the downside on a forecast uh, warning. Even Delta got hit here uh, yesterday all the way down to 33, which is the bottom end of the daily chart range. I mean, back and forth we go for these airlines, but uh, pretty good report right across yeah. the board here for Delta, specifically the forecast going forward, looking really good. Yeah, super interesting. Uh, for me, my takeaway from this is money is still being spent. Uh, they have bookings up 15 to 17 percent year over year for the quarter. Uh, they're seeing a lot more growth revenue wise in their business and um, and uh, first class bookings. Uh, you also see, you see Ed Bastian bas basically saying what we've been saying here, basically he's saying, um, where is the, yeah. It, air travel is something the consumer is prioritizing. Um, they may be pulling back in other areas, but I don't see it in the credit card data. I don't see it in our bookings. If so. you've traveled of late, uh, most airports are insane. So yeah, that definitely backs up that uh, thought. $35, however, a uh, bit of a sticking point on the daily chart here for DAL. Thoughts exactly. And the other thing, the other sticking point uh, for trading this one, uh, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, they, they have their call. So you know how that goes. If you're day trading and you're looking at multiple names and you're, and you're trying to trade Delta and you're not listening to the call, it just, a lot of times that can get really tricky because you can have severe price shocks. Uh, relatively severe price shocks for a day trader can happen when, when a conference call is going on. So I tend to stay away from those and maybe look for it after. But there's really no ignoring the 35 level. I think it gives you a decent line, a decent line in the sand. And the only break occurred kind of in the pre-market on the initial release. Once, once, once they got a hold of that guide, I mean, that's why it made that spike. And it's been falling ever since. But, you know, that 35 level, it's still valid as far as I'm concerned because we haven't broken it while open. So you can look for the shorts underneath. It is a valid breakout. Like if it took out the pre-market high with a 35 or a 34.90 stop back in, that's not that bad. I'd just be really cautious with holding a bunch of shares into 10 o'clock. So that is set up there for you. I think maybe shorts first in front of it, but that's usually the way that I go on any really key price level. So I don't know if I like this one more than American Airlines, where you don't have to necessarily worry as much specifically about the call. Um, they got absolutely punked yesterday, and everybody knows that. That $13 level did hold up. Uh, come on, Daly. Uh, that $13 level did hold up. 
were to even go to the upside, it's got a pretty strong downward trend. Like there's multiple areas where you could fade this, whether it's off of like 1380, whether it's off of the mid 14s. Um, you know, or 13 break, I don't know if I would take that. I think you want to, if, if it's trending downside, you probably want Delta. But yeah, definitely any pop is a little safer to shorten AL because you don't have to worry about that call. And they were so crushed yesterday. I'd expect a little bit of a bounce maybe at the open for AL, just given how bad it was yesterday. Uh, yeah, I don't really, I didn't trade AL yesterday. Probably won't be trading Delta today. I mean, it's a nice move, obviously up 2%, but I would fade all these moves. I mean, airlines aren't really... I mean, like, like I said, it's better to leave it for other people, but I, it's very hard to invest in these names. So I think if you're going to look for a day trade, it's like a 35, 36 short, something like that, uh, if you can get into this area. Uh, but again, a nice move up. You know, you've just got your 10% there in about two weeks. So it's a good move from 31 up to 35. You might want to take that profit. You're up in the money now, 2%. But again, I don't... I don't know, airlines are just too hard to figure out, man. Gas prices are starting to go back up. We saw that yesterday uh, as the uh, uh, core inflation there, the highest runner was airline tickets and airfares, right? So that's up 13 or 14% or something year over year, 17% maybe. Uh, we had a little talk about that yesterday. So no surprise that Delta keeps on working as more and more people uh, have pent up demand for travel. So, you know, take, take the long, I would say, but I, I don't mind this short on here on the daily chart. I just... I, I don't look at it enough to, to, for this to be a worry for me. So it's 925 right now. Let's check out the imbalances quickly here, as that's something that a lot of people like to look at. STLA, is that Stellantis? Uh, right there with a buy. Uh, AMC with a bid Amsterdam, as well. Uh, right now, other than that, man, I don't really see Palantir. No. We talked about that the other day. Ali, ooh, I just saw Alibaba there. Uh, buy for Alibaba. That's a nice move there from 92 bottom, I believe, yesterday or so. Uh, no, yesterday's bottom was only, oh, that's, that's today. What was yesterday's 90, bottom? 90, oh, 93. 93. Yeah, 93, bottom. 93, 50. So nice move upside for Alibaba there. I think it's on more AI news or something. Uh, some of the Chinese ADRs are, are, are moving around. So, yeah, not much here on the imbalances that we only now have four minutes to go. Uh, we've already talked about the key names that I'm going to be looking at. We've added Meta to the short, and then we have AMD. But we could talk about crypto as uh, Ethereum is breaking through two Gs right now. My name's Sean. Uh, here is the chart, uh, just getting ready, uh, through 2000, as Sean was saying there, a nice move mm -hmm. up over uh, the past 12 hours or so. We were talking about the past couple of days, this uh, update, software update for mm -hmm. Ethereum coming through as of 6.30 Eastern time yesterday. Uh, so benefiting not only Ethereum, we saw 4% plus uh, on the day so far for ETH, Bitcoin not really doing anything, uh, but all the equity related or stocks tied to crypto to the upside as well. Uh, Coinbase here, 3%, not, that, not a heck of a lot of volume, but uh, 70 line in the sand there for coin. I saw block was higher. All the miners are higher today. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically ones that are tied to Ethereum more so than Bitcoin. So BTBT is one, uh, Riot and Mara as well. Uh, yeah. To the upside. Interesting move today on ETH because there had been speculation that it would sell off after the lockout date because there was a two-year lockout date uh, after staking that was uh, being unlocked by the Shanghai update, but it continued to buy up. So uh, maybe because a lot of that money is still underwater, though. So there, that could be a reason. Yeah, we'll see how uh, the day plays out, obviously. But uh, as far as the stocks are concerned, guys, any trades here for you? Well, I mean, look, You're once coin, 70 on coin is kind of the level. Up. So, you know, once coin got beneath 70, I got away from an initial lo loss long, so I was long above, reversed to the short and shorted it multiple times. And in the afternoon, that was the same trade. Like, you shorted in front of the 70 level. It gave you the flush at the end of the day, so that was good. I don't know how much I like it at 928 when the spread, the volume's pissed, the spread is sometimes 20 cents uh, up there. But a breakout looks interesting here. You know, just like, like a little mini break, even like it takes out this pre-market high, maybe gets through the quarters, throw like a relatively tight stop on it. I kind of like this initial long, and if it ends up failing the long, just do what happened yesterday. If the long ends up failing, then you just work the shorts beneath that 70 level. So that's what I'll probably do there for coin. Um, just because we only have 90 seconds to go until the open, if Micron, it's not going to get there, Micron is so weak. Um, I forget about the 64 level on Micron. I'm now looking at the 63. Well, if it gets to 64, I'll try to short it there. Uh, 63 level on Micron from the afternoon was the one. It's already flushed a dollar in the pre-market. The stock, ever since earnings, has just been, it's showing you the top, and then it just kind of keep, keep, creeps on down. The 50 period's at 59. That or 60, I think, could be a little bit of a bottom there. But, yeah, I guess we're shorting pops again in Micron. Already down 1% when the market just went up there. Crazy, this stock. 
Yeah, look, I mean, if Micron pops 5% to that 64 level, then yeah, we may, uh, hopefully we're banking on some of these longs. I, I, I agree, I think that we need to be short, and just talking about crypto, talking about some of these names here um, that sort of uh, have been rallied with crypto, it would be more of an NVIDIA play, but AMD right now, actually looking pretty strong. I was gonna fade this 93 area, but I think we've gotta switch it up to that short that we had yesterday, 94. So let's watch out for a 94 level coming through on AMD at some point. I'm gonna hold off on the, ni we, we may wind up shorting 93. It's just for right now, because of what this market's doing, I'm gonna put in an offer closer to 94 right now, 93. 75 for a couple hundred shares and we'll see about building that from there so right now 94 coming into play here on amd and nvidia also uh starting to move up i mean this market's starting to go right now too up 0.6 looks like we're going to open the market up with only 10 seconds to go at the pre-market highs or in and about the pre-market highs which is really nice there's nvidia right now taking out 268 yeah, trying to do so let's see what happens right now as we're ready to rock and roll two and one let's go Thank you, Sharif. And there it is right now. Now we are now open and we can uh, look for some trading opportunities. So thank you again for joining us one more time. Make sure you hit that like and that subscribe as uh, the only position I have waiting for me is Apple uh, down here near 160. So we'll see if that comes through and we're watching everything else, man. Micron is coming to the downside as well. Yeah, Micron just falling like an apps. It just doesn't want to go. Uh, Coinbase is trying to break that pre-market high. It's not through it yet. So all I have is, G uh, not GFAI, BFRG. GFAI, however, for those that are tracking it just caught a little bit of a bid so if, G if bullfrog is going to work short then gfai has to kind of hold a uh, lower high here and right now it's trying to press it rejected 39 um, in the pre-market but has a chance here at the open meta already at two yeah okay yeah meta already at 216 67 it's screaming into that 217 level so remember meta 217 in the afternoon well we're here now all right, we're going to, we have a small short, but like I said, we didn't, we don't want to go too hard on this right now. So we're going to wait uh, out to see what does happen here with our friend um, in need, uh, AMD. So we're going to wait to see where this one goes. Doesn't look like it wants to do too much right now, bouncing off this 93. I, like I said, I want to hold out, hope for a little bit of a better short uh, coming through on AMD, hopefully back up into, while well, we just got to 90, well, we're getting to 93 right now. I'll put on another little bit here as the market is absolutely screaming right now 90 I mean is this Amazon related Apple's going to the upside we just put on another short rate there as well we can check out our Google off that max level of 104.50 that already came in this 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 morning basically 105 now up to 107 looks like Google wants to run to the high side as well but here we go we're short AMD let's see if this one wants to work just to reload up there at 93 which was again it's the number one name on the sticky note AMD short 93 but because the market rallied so much off the open and into the open, I was more waiting for that 94 level. So we're not gonna put on a huge position yet. Like I said, just a couple hundred. And then if it comes up to 94, you know, then that would be a spot that, you know, we're looking to get a little more excited with here for advanced micro devices. That's the only position right now. So two things. One, we got coin break, we got meta, and then meta broke the upside. So I had a short at basically 85 average price. It broke that top. I gave it a few extra cents above the high. It could end up being a wick top and I could get back in, but that's a pretty strong move on meta. Want to wait for it to calm down a little bit. Coinbase, on the other hand, it broke the 70, got some 70 50s out there, got to 70 65, and then came back in. I picked up a reload. And I got the reload at the quarters here, so a little bit, little bit further away than, the, than I ideally like here on that reload. So I got quarters as an average price on the way back to the upside on the downside here. If it holds 69.5, fair enough, but after the morning rush is done, if we settle beneath, I'm probably going to look back for the shorts. The breakout happened. I might try to get some 50s out again, or maybe 50s to 60s, just the way that that move uh, did come in. A huge size on the offer of Apple at 162, but... I thought I had the level at 162 and a half for resistance, so I don't want to try a short there just yet on something like an Apple. But Coinbase going to the upside, like I said, Meta uh, already through, did not reshort that. 117 was clearly the level. Oh, Bullfrog, by the way, that's just, uh, I'm going to make a guess that GFAI continued to the downside because Bullfrog just filled me at 575. So it's going to be arrows down and flush for this. The reason for that short, GFAI fell at the top, Bullfrog was at a lower high, it wasn't exactly rocket science.
All right. Um, yeah, we're just, uh, you know, chilling right now. So it's been, been a good trade so far here uh, for us, obviously, on AMD as that continues to work. Man, we got a 50 fill uh, off this. We're short at 92.75 and still waiting for something uh, to go down. Microsoft also made a nice little high there and it wicked. Oh, now, now it's back 285. Okay. I was going to say on the one minute, look at this, just busted up there. And we looked at that wick right there, 285.25. Uh, that was a nice move. Let's see if that could be maybe faded against. We're still short. We've still are obviously short here on AMD. So that's going to be the name that I'm waiting to see if anything's going on with. But there was a name that did wick higher um, and that was Amazon. Amazon just went for a nice little jog up there. 100? Stopped at nine, no. uh, close. Stopped at 99.40 uh, there before falling back down. So, you know, the market does want to go for a little bit of a jog. It's up above that 13,000. You know, we saw this happen yesterday. So I'm just going to like just hang out, man. We've got a 15 cent winner on AMD and it's looking pretty good. So uh, we'll look to see if there's any more movement here. AMC, uh, break, uh, AMC, we're gonna go to Brandon in a second, but AMC right now just breaking through 550. Uh, again, this was a level from yesterday, so we could watch out for AMC up here at 550. What's up, Brando? Uh, the squeeze continuing possibly here for WW, 8% uh, right now, huge move from 660 up to seven and through it. Uh, testing that high from uh, a couple months ago anyways. Uh, we were talking about this one earlier in the week off of uh, earnings, but Goldman with an upgrade here, guys, on WW. Like at the same time, I can take a sip because I just got, I got wow. on a bullfrog and coin. At the same time I was getting reload in coin was exactly the moment that I had to decide whether I was reversing meta. So a stop order gets me out, but I didn't have a stop to reverse long meta. Now it's at 218. That was the big level. Sorry, I have Coinbase up there. We went long. We told you we would have a relatively tight stop for the breakout, and if we can't hold the opening rush, I got to look for the shorts on a reversal play just like it did yesterday. So wick the top yesterday on a breakout and then reverse for the rest of the day. But meta is unreal. Like, that's that break. you got to be really quick if you want the reversal at 9.30 in the mornings. We shorted in front of the big level, and now it's absolutely gonzo. Uh, a buck through. If the market goes up, then this is probably trends. I think you can try to buy the dip back at the breakout. Price is usually good. Bullfrog came out. So, I mean, it gets it all right. Yeah, it went all the way to the pre-market low. So, already got top to bottom. That's 550 in there. So, short at 625s into 550. But I'm, meta is just, that's going to be the one, man. That reverse. Got to have that early reverse. Let's see if we can't catch that dip by. And then Netflix was the only other name I wanted to mention. We talked about those high for, the high 40s. And Netflix is getting a chance to get there. If you think meta's strong, Netflix is up 4% right now. As the chips flush, by the way. The chips are money, flushing. Money, 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 money. Nice to hear the chips are flushing and we have one position, the chips, short. Uh, so that's a good one right there. As we, we, I mean, we're just banking it out, man. 50 cents in the money now. One trade. I mean, like I said, you don't need too much more than that. But we want to make more money than this. So, um, you know, we called Apple again. You know, the top names on here, AMD short, the number one name on the sticky note. Neil just talked about that. Chips flushing, so thank you for that one. Uh, Apple as well, 160 long. Apple's only been a dream all morning. There's not even a red candle for Apple. You know, and again, like some days we make, look, I mean, I look at, look at AMD uh, coming in here a little bit, but Apple anyways, some days we make these calls on, um, you know, on, on Apple, they don't work out. Other days they're absolute monsters and look at AMD where we're sitting at 30. Let's take a 30 bid right now. There it is again right now. Look at the outs, man. We are not, I told you we're a change man. We're not, we're not going to sit here and just scalp, scalp out for five, six pennies. Now we're going to take this out. Now it's 50 cents in the money. One trade, one for one. This is what we're doing. So, so so far, so good. We'll watch it. Um, should have taken a little bit more shares, obviously, but we'll still take this. We thought that there was a chance for this to get to 94 as the market really rallied upside right there. But hey, man, we'll take it. We'll go one for one and then just sit back and relax. And it's not only that. If you like the long today, we already sniffed out the long on all these names. We had Amazon. We had Apple. Amazon's hovering around that high as well. Um, and then that GFAI, I wrote down 33 um, as a level that we could come back into. Jeez, what? is even going, I didn't even know about this. Like, look, look at the sticky note right here. And again, ye of little faith, I'm the worst person uh, here to be promoting this because every day I put stuff on here and don't take it. This says GFAI, 33 long, right? I mean, and right there, just coming into it again, 30, I, I wrote this at seven, I wrote this when, what, eight o'clock, something down here, 28, 29, 30s. Look at this, 33 right there coming in for GFAI, bouncing multiple times, giving you $3 winner uh, on GFAI, but whatever, we don't have it. So uh, good to know there. And I was talking with 
uh, OB behind me, and I said, I don't normally trade these, but look at that, right there, $33 GFAI, definitely banking out, man. I'm really glad that some of you hopefully have that. Shout out to Tisha and everybody else. There's Apple right now, 163, and just going absolutely insane. The meta break of, of 217 is the shame, because yesterday we were short. Actually, I was just looking at it. Uh, no, that's the notepad here. Hold on a second. We had... Um, this yesterday, these are our trades yesterday on Meta, uh, short here, 216, 217 right there, all the way down to 214 to close out our short straight to the downside there yesterday, $3 winner at the end of the day. So yeah, if you violate that area, that was, an, that was a pretty good one there to go long, needless to say. So we're gonna have to work out some trades here because our AMD, we already cashed out a little bit, but it's back up into the 50s. So I'm watching GFAI like an absolute hawk because if it puts in a lower high, I'm going back to Bullfrog. I just like the sympathy play. I said if we broke down that that 70, we'd go for the short uh, to the high on Coinbase. So that's what we're going to do. I still want any single pop to get Micron, but NVIDIA just took a 265 bid. Uh, that was the other name I was watching, was NVIDIA, that 264 is, that's the level I like on it, 264. It just took 265, or it is trying to. I think that's the only line in the sand for a tip, for a chip name, sorry, that is an Intel that I'm going to like along. So another dollar down, or a couple of dollars, and I would look for that there. Just got some coin, but I just heard them, coin just went in the money, but I just heard people say, wow, meta in the back. So no dip buy on meta, back at that. You have to reverse right away off a level like this. You either get it the first time or you don't. Oh, I gotta get coin out. Coin just came all the way. You gotta be kidding me. No, Coinbase. I just tried to get more shares off the high at 70 and a half, and it's already at 69 even. So this is absolutely flushing. Uh, so once it made that fail break, just look for the short. I told you guys I wanted that reversal. The reversal is on right now. I did not just get BFRG, but that's also coming back in here. So let's see what happens. I haven't looked at Alibaba. That was the other name I did not want to trade at the open. Yeah, Bob is making that bounce off the 50 period. So 95, that's a 50 period on the daily. I think if you've got the long now, I don't want to chase it personally, but we've been talking about room to 100. 100 was a brick wall. If you can't see that, then I don't know what to tell you. If we get to 100, I'd look for the short. But be patient shorting Bob on days where it has this going on. I mean, secretly, or not secretly, it's what, in everybody's face right now. All the trades that I make are right in front of everybody. So uh, right there, look at this meta short, man. 64s out 24s. That's a 40 cent win right there on meta uh, coming through. And then we have 50 cents already. And we just got some more out. Could you believe AMD went to 20 there? So we got a 25 bid. I'm going to put another bid now at 30. Um, I don't know. The market's holding out pretty high right now. So we'll see if, the, if it can exactly hold out for the highs. But I'm a short guy today, man. I mean, look at this. Two 218.20. We'll see if we get another bid on Meta down here, 217, uh, something like that. If we can get something 217.50 uh, right here, if we can flush a little bit on Meta. Man, this could be the day that, that I'm waiting for. I mean, this has been a big one. We're going to go two for two on big trades so far, man. Uh, we just got another 30 fill there on AMD. So this has been really sweet. And then the Meta short is really cashing in right now. So we're going to go two for two. Wait to see what happens here with Meta. This, 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 is, this is pending. I mean, we could say two for two here. I mean, it's 50 cents in the money if we want to take it right now. But this name, I mean, if this market blasts higher, then this is definitely a stop out up here. But the thing about this stop out is we're short at 62. We want to get a little bit more up here near 219 and then get out at 219.20. So this is already a 50 cent winner. We're already one to one, but we've only taken out 20% here on Meta as it looks like it's trying to bounce again here off 218. So maybe 218 is the level right there, but I'm just going to, yeah, I, I, you know, I think Meta could be along all day. I mean, I see what you guys are saying there in the chat. I'm not trying to hate on that. I'm just trying to make a little bit of bread right now. We're, right now, we're two for two. And this is a good trade, man. We're 50 cents in the money on Meta. Let's see if it can break 218. I'm feeling like maybe I'll put another bid at 218. And then if we once we get it, hopefully, um, then we can make the move down. And we'll have enough left, obviously, to hold out for a 217 and change. But right now, I'm just going to put a 218 bid, take that 65 cents, um, and then hold the last le 60% or so uh, for a little bit lower. But meta, man, this is not like, this could easily take that 219. We're just trying to see if we can catch lightning in a bottle off that top. Yeah, speaking of tops, uh, we saw Baba go to the upside. That means Pin Duo Duo is also coming up. So you know that 70 level, we wait around. That's what we like, so it has to get up there. Once it's over 69, I'm looking for the shorts into that 70. I haven't got any fills just yet. I'm just kind of above the highs, looking patiently for it. Oh, NVIDIA's at 64. We're going to go to Brennan, but NVIDIA just got to 264. Uh, anything with AI in the symbol uh, strength 
uh, not only late in the day yesterday, but uh, so far this morning. Here's IDAI, huge move into the close yesterday, just popping up on volume. Uh, we talked about this one as well, CXAI, uh, pretty impressive. 100% now to the upside. CXAI. Uh, just going to add that one to my list. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I want to make sure I have it. Even if I'm not trading it um, at the open, I just want to make sure I have it on my quote board so that we can go over to that one, have some names to look at when things slow down that could be strong if the market reverses. So NVIDIA, we talked about 264. Didn't really like anything but that. Going to be on the bid here. Um, as that's going to the upside, I didn't get any chance to dip by Meta because it didn't go any, get anywhere close to 217. And then Netflix... Netflix didn't get to 245, got 44s there, uh, not quite into that mid to high 40, so no short yet for that. I'm looking for a reload on the coin. We've already kind of taken some, taken some out and looking for the reload above that 70 area to grab it. And then GFAI, for those of you that are still tracking it, it is still coming back into the downside. I didn't quite get any refills on Bullfrog. That's what I paid for locates on. So this might just be breaking down. If there is a pop that I can get, I want to stay net short this. As long as GFAI is coming down, Bullfrog never broke the top. Um, but that was, you know, that was kind of low-hanging fruit there. NVIDIA, give me that fill at 264. Oh, yeah, and Micron could break 60. Uh, that was the other one. I uh, could do that today. I'm shorting pops now into the pre-market highs on Micron. I just want to take whatever pop we can get. Only long I'm looking for right now would be either 217 on Meta, or it'll be that 64 and NVIDIA. We're too far away on Apple. Yeah, Apple, what a, what a call that was there for Apple. Damn it. You just couldn't uh, get 60. Uh, you, so no, you couldn't even come close to getting 60s. Yeah, but close. wow, what a, what a great run up that name was uh, there today. Wow. Um, yeah, should have just taken it in the pre-market. But, you know, we've taken pre-market trades before and not worked out. But uh, there's 163. Looks like that wants to try to go as well. We're now out of half. Uh, of our AMD because look what just happened. Meanwhile, you know, we got these 20s, all that kind of stuff. And then app, face, Facebook, Meta bounces off. I, I had a 10 level there. I think it went to 12. Uh, we'll see if 218 can come through. What am I bidding? I am bidding 218.10. So hopefully that can come in right now. We're flat on this trade. Good thing we took out, we only took out 20% right there for 40 cents. Hopefully we can, and that's 40 cents back in the money again. Hopefully we can get this. All right, AMD, here we go, man. If you're looking for one trade today. Oh my God. That's it right there, man. As we get a good idea for AMD. And again, it's the number one name here on the sticky note, short at 93. So that's 90 clean cents. We just taking it right now. Hopefully it can come back in. Well, we're short at 87. So it's 870 cents. And I'm just waiting for this to come through. That's all, and it's coming through. So here we go. There we go. Another out right there at flat for AMD. And there it is, man. The you know we talked about Cody Rhodes being the American nightmare. It looks like today, uh, right now. Yeah, Sharif, you got to do some work on him. He's very, very big in wrestling. No, no, because he went over to AEW. Yeah, he's been big for a while. I, I didn't realize it. There's either. another Rhodes um, though. Yeah, I... there's Gold Dust and Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes is yeah. the father. Yeah, it's, um, but it's Dustin, Dustin Runnels. His last name is Reynolds. That's why it's not Rhodes. But he's fathered. Oh, that's he, right. He's fathered it's by Dustin. Terry Runnels. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, what. I, okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, there it goes to the downside. Right now, goes AMD. We talked about WWE a little bit uh, earlier, and they were up on an upgrade. But again, they've already been bought out. So you got to you got to watch out for that. Look at the deal value. It looks like Meta wants to just keep on going up. We we do have another short here. I thought somewhere. Yeah, uh, very close right now. Two nineteen. So if we can get another little short in there and just play it off this 219.20 but this name just looks super strong man and it's it's going to be a hard one to fade for sure but we're up here trying to get a little bit more oh my goodness look at the over under on nvidia just there i was in the long stop that I had an accidental short i had to get out of that one but that long looks like it's going to hold that 264 i had my stop underneath i did give it a few extra shekels it didn't matter it took it out now you're going to be bouncing pretty heavily i do have coinbase and i'm reloading that one for the short side so that's going to be the primary concern here because i'm in position but i want to get back into that long off the nvidia 264 it's definitely a good level by the way it's not it's not just meta out there i just noticed alphabet is making a pretty strong move. And Alphabet 107, it's 107, right? Alphabet 107 yesterday, yeah, yeah there it is. One. That was the big top in the morning. So 107 Alphabet, just top 107 again. This sets up two ways. One, possible breakout if the market takes out highs, but a shortable level there as well. Uh, so Alphabet and Facebook looking like they're showing some signs of strength. As I said, I just reloaded on that coin. So I just got some above that 70 level. Let's see if it gets back down in the 69s like it did the first time. All right, um, so we just shorted again at O's at 219 or so here. So our average price 77 right now for Meta. So it's worth, 
the risk here to the upside. I, I, I feel like at this point, especially if this market, I mean, the problem right now with the NASDAQ as I'm looking at it is, is that, you know, yesterday, maybe we can look at yesterday's, but that 13.1, I almost still feel like it wants to test that. And, you know, we're bouncing off 13.80. I mean, maybe that's close enough, but I don't know. Like, if you look at yesterday's little chart there, as we're trying to get some out of meta here, um, just hopefully it can fall down just a little bit. I think we have, actually, no, I don't think we have any. Do we have any economic numbers? I don't think so. Uh, I tweeted out some we stuff. We had but, them all. Yeah, we had them all at 8.30, all at 8 right? Yeah, all at 8.30. Yeah, so we're okay. I think, yeah. Um, yeah. But there's 31. I mean, yesterday that was the top was 31.10 or so. I mean, yesterday we had we we had, we had some bigger moves, but right there that 31 31.10, 30 sorry 13.10 or so, 13.110 uh, is that level right there that we were looking at yesterday. So I just wonder if it wants to come back up and have a quick look uh, again. That was in the afternoon before we had that huge move coming back in, and sort of coincides with 40. 41.20 or so, or 41.50 on the ES, because right now we're at 41.34. So, uh, okay, um, you know, we're still in this name. We're gonna watch out for it. That's Meta and AMD. We've only had two positions on. It's 9.50 right now, and they've both been short against a market that's just making new highs. So, I don't know, man. We need this market to pull back at some point, and I just hope I'm not stopped out before that point does happen right now. Uh, but if we do get a little bit of a fall down, I do like the names that I'm in, but Meta is a little sketchy right now, right back up to the highs again, and we've only been able to get it out once. So uh, we, you know, this is looking sketchy here. 219.25, watch out for it. AMD definitely working. What's up, Brendo? I uh, saw a few people mentioning this one. CNSL up on a potential takeover uh, bid. So just be aware, it might uh, not move the way you think it might. Uh, this has not been accepted. So just a proposal right now, $4 uh, per share in cash. So we're at three ninety right now, $4 right here. Huge move though for CNSL. Yeah, don't. Uh, uh, we we just said don't chase those kind of things. I think just don't take, don't chase it. I haven't even looked at it, but uh, with no details not accepted, you got to be really careful with those. I just missed that PDD. I'm gonna cancel these orders on PDD. I'll tell you why. Because it turned at 69 and a half when I thought 70 was the short. So if it gets up there again, I got to be a little bit more nimble with it because it, it's already pulled back pretty much a dollar. So let's just respect the fact that we missed it by 20 cents. If it gets back up there, we'll make a different decision. Lower high right now on Alphabet. I still like that 107 short. The notion of a long on a breakout, we'll have to wait till it actually breaks out. That's the thing with the breakout. It's got to go. So I'm looking for shorts up top. I got the reload on coin. Once it gets under 670s, I'll start taking some out. Kind of an over-under with that stock. And then, and what I mean by over-under is it keeps on making the breaks, but the top end of the range, it failed the breakout, but now you have tops up here, and this is the range. Over 70 shorts cover under 70 if it breaks 69 hold for the rest of the day as far as micron goes i know i want it short it's just a matter of where can i actually get it short um, the levels i liked i've canceled all my orders 64 63 i'm really just looking at 62 uh, if we can even get that oh and Vinny just came back into six, uh, 264 if that takes out the bottom i might end up with a 60 break short on Micron at that level goes, because that could be the only one. Yeah, NVIDIA is right back into these bottoms, just like yesterday. Like the one stock I keep trying to go long on is NVIDIA. At least it's only one, but it's now through that level. I'm gonna give it up. I'm done with you, NVIDIA. It's just a short on this name. So I'm gonna only hunt for shorts beneath and then go back to, I'm not gonna, I, I see the super chat there, Javier. Uh, I know you looked at Shop already. I have not looked at Shopify. Uh, I, I looked at yesterday with Shopify. Oh, okay, well, yeah. I, I, I haven't really looked at it, so I mean, I. Well, I'll comment in a second, but I want to find a way into some Micron, which I know I like short, and into some Pinduo Duo. We'll get to that when we have an opportunity to, because if the chips are weak, and the one I want short I'm not getting, and the one I'm trying long twice, we go over two. So I want to find my way into the short, because I think it is going to be on. Coin's good, but I feel like Micron and maybe NVIDIA, maybe Intel uh, can also be good as well. Google, by the way, I'm going to start getting short in front of that 107 uh, if we can catch it. I still think it can be a breakout, but it's short first. I don't know if you want to look at Shopify. I... No, I don't have much to say. I mean, I've been, you know, you guys know, Neil just talked all about the shorts there in the chip names, and it's the number one name here. Chip name short today. Uh, number one idea for me today was so AMD whoopsies right there on the short. So we've been doing that. We talked about why we like that short. I was... 
it, it's, it's okay. We have enough shares that we're, you know, we, we're hit, hitting some goals and making some money. But uh, at the same time, this AMD trade, um, it's a good thing we got that 93. So we started it early, man. That, that was at 930. And we don't want to dig into too many shares too early. But then it did pop up, which we really liked right there. Um, there goes Meta, by the way. And the thing about it, I was just going to talk about Meta. It sucks uh, that we didn't get a chance to do that right there. But we got some out there at the, in the 60s when it dipped down. So we still wind up taking an L because it goes back up to the upside there on Meta. But definitely definitely not as bad as uh, it was going to be if we sort of would have held all that. Um, but yeah, like, you know, you don't want to go long. I mean, we know the chip Shut names up. are weak, right? And so that to me was sort of a much easier play um, than trying to fight the trend here with Meta. But still happy with Meta, man. Um, we're able to get some out. It is going to be an L for us. But that was also a good out. Uh, well, that was a good out at, at 92, but we missed the 90s there on AMD. So let's look to see about getting something around there. But yeah, Meta just busted up again, and it just wicked that high again at 60. I don't want to keep doing this, but I'm going to go short one more time, just thinking that that high wick um, might, might be something there. And if we take it out, then fine. But we have enough shares now that we don't have to too much, you know, worry too much about that. We're not loading up into a short into meta. We're just trying to play that pullback if we do get it. And there it is right now. We've almost made back what we lost uh, right there already with another one right there. We're just going to go uh, downside here because if this market can flush, then maybe meta can as well. We're short right now at 20s. We just took out O's. Let's see what happens here for meta on the short. What's up, Brendo? I just seeing a Kathy Wood name popping up here, guys. CRSP. Uh, Cantor with an initiation on this today, but not seeing much else. A little bit late to the party here, but volume coming in up 10% now for CRISPR. Yeah, that's an old, uh, that, uh, the Pack w Therapeutics. like I watch out for some of those. Like, it's an interesting concept. It's actually, I have, I have a buddy who, who really, really likes that stock. But uh, either way, I just, I might stay away from trading that one. You're into a market where you're going 1% on the NASDAQ. And if you have a reversal, like if you think the market can, is going to turn around, that's a difficult one. Uh, so I did get Alphabet here. I'm not reloading coin just yet. I want a better price. And yeah, I see NVIDIA. It, even if it's bouncing here, it doesn't matter. Because the amount that I would have to hold it against me is utter, it's oh, utter yeah. nonsense. Oh, yeah. Like, and I would never make that, I would never make a hold like that because if it doesn't work for you, then one stock is ruining not your day, but then multiple days. And that's not a way that anybody retains profitability. So yeah, it's, it's back at 265, but not a trade I would have had. Oh, I do have really alpha good. because I know my 107 is the level. So I just got 77s here. I want to get some in the 80s, well, 90s if I can, about that price. So that 107 is going to be the line in the sand. Wait for it to get there. And Brendan brought you guys uh, Weight Watchers, uh, WW, I want to say several minutes ago. It was probably 15, 20 minutes ago. It just broke $7. So once again, the squeeze name is on one, 15% short. It's now through this high on the daily chart. It looks like a long, even back into like 690s. This is a pretty good breakout. It is a bit of a squeeze play, so you know you can watch for those pullbacks to be a little bit violent. But up another 11% here. I know they got an upgrade the other day, but you know this is a strong, strong name. It's a good, it's a good break. I'm treating this kind of like any other small cap squeeze type play. I want a tight stop when you're long in those highs and then give it back into that first area of previous resistance. So you, I am long 21s here. I'm, on, I'm not on the minute chart, I'm on the daily chart. I am long 21s here, got that breakout, and now just looking if it can make that continuation for the homer. Yeah, I guess we can cancel our 94 offers on AMD uh, right now. But, um, okay, so it looks like Meta's going to give it one more go here, and we're going to get stopped out one more time uh, as Meta right now just keeps on going to the upside. Like, we're not actually... We're not actually losing that much money on Meta. Uh, we're just trying to see if we can get a pullback here. And uh, there it is. So now, like, see, we're short at 25s. All right, because we just got another average in, let's see if we can get an O's out. Um, and then if it wants to fall from there, then great. Uh, but right now, hopefully Meta can come. See, like, this is what I mean. It's there for profit, then it's not. And you sort of just got to battle with this name. So I, that's what I'm doing right now with Meta. Just trying to figure this one out. Uh, if it does take out that top of 60, we just got pretty close to it. Like, we're short at 24, so it'll be a 30 cent hit if we wind up taking it. But um, so if we can make 30 cents right now on this bit of O's, then, you know, we'll at least take a piece out. But every time it makes a dip, it's just getting bought up. So this is a really super strong stock, regardless of what this market really wants to do here. Although now you're starting to pull back, which is great for the AMD short that we've been talking about all morning. But uh, there it is. Can we get this meta bid? Where am I bidding exactly here? Oh, threes? Oh, don't. 
I'm bidding 03 just so we can watch this, just to laugh at it when it doesn't fill. But hopefully it can come back down right now as we put, put our profit back in uh, on some meta trades. So hopefully, hopefully that will fill. Um, AMD, I am bidding a little bit lower right now, obviously. Um, we're right here at 92 again. We've already gotten this fill, but that's all that we got. We didn't, we didn't get anything lower than that. So we're now going to try to, we are bidding here. Uh, I thought I was, I was bidding 92s right now. So hopefully that can come in. Did we just get that fill? No, we did not. We're still waiting for this one right here on uh, Meta to come through. And if that does happen, that'd be pretty nice. And there it is, we get that 92 fill. Now we have an 85 bid now, uh, hopefully coming through here on AMD as well. So, so far so good. Let's see this Meta sing to the downside, hopefully. Uh, that can come in pretty soon here uh, and get that going. There it is. Yes, sir, let's go Meta. We are now positive on Meta. So yeah, we're hitting this and we're ready to rock and roll right now. So far so good here on the day. Good trade for Meta on the short. We are now, see, if you keep going back to the well, eventually it'll come through. And there it is right now with a nice 80 cent win on META Meta. Yeah, and as that market did come down there, I did get some out of Google, but I'll go to the new position we just put on. Uh, I talked about wanting to get into Micron. What's available is 61 and a half, which is currently VWAP. So I'm working into position in front of that level. We did take an initial entry. It is in the money about 10 cents, but I'm not, I'm not fully in. I'm waiting for the low of the day. Um, I got some out of Google or Alphabet, and I'll get to Coinbase because it's the better one. So Google can't take the 107 high, at least just yet. But trying to back, bounce back into Ooh. VWAP. It's a bull flag. It's a strong stock. It's higher lows. I get it. But 107 is going to be the out. So short into that while scalping some out. Make sure you ring the register. This is going against the grain on Alphabet. Acknowledge uh, to be sure. While that was all happening, Coinbase as well came over under. I'm tr I did try to get some better fills in there. And I just realized, I just realized why I did not get those shorts because I had my stop order in and it was rejecting my offers for a wash trade. So I'm going to try and grab these in 70 and a half. I've been getting the lower ends like 30s, getting out underneath 70 every single time. But that's been the jam on Coinbase as we go to Brendan to see what's happening now. Hey guys, yeah, 10 o'clock, first day all week that uh, we don't have anything happening. Uh, as far as economic numbers right now at 10 o'clock as well. And uh, still to this point today, I've not seen any sign of Fed officials coming through as well, uh, which is good. A uh, quarter of a percent for the S&P right now, Dow back in positive territory. It's been flip-flopping between uh, negative and positive uh, most of the morning, half a percent there for the Russell 2000. It's the NASDAQ in charge, though. After two straights, if you missed it, inflation prints come in better than expected. Yesterday, CPI. Today, we get PPI. Uh, both pointing to cooling inflation. If you're with us pre-market, we talked about, yeah, that uh, ETH update coming through last night. Crypto stocks higher on that. Amazon's Andy Jassy speaking highly of cost-cutting measures uh, after the close yesterday. And uh, Delta with a beat. However, uh, I'll show you in a sec here. There's uh, CRSP still watching that. Now 11% just uh, taking out the highs. Yeah, Delta getting crushed here, guys, ahead of the uh, call. But wow, what a move back down for Delta. Yeah, the call, oh, the call just started now, right? Yeah, oh, oh my goodness. What? Yuck. Yeah, you know, I was about to say, like, maybe there's a trade for Delta off the 35 still. Yeah, the joke's on me for not looking at it. For the, wow, that's bad. That's bad. So anyways, I'm not. What? Yeah, I know. It's down 3%. Where's American at? Just, it's only because, it's only because I was watching American and look at yeah, 13 already broke on American. Am I chasing American Airlines? Nah, I'm not going to do it. Let's just. Let's just stick to what we're doing and not get too far ahead of ourselves. So the high on coins, someone was just asking that. It's about 70, oh, 75. No, it is exactly 70, 70, 75. So this time I got myself that 50 short I was looking for. I had been missing it because I had my stops kind of, I don't want to say misplaced, but we have a stop order that we use. It sits in our order log. Essentially, you can't trade against it. So if it's out there, you can't get more short because it thinks you're uh, already trying to buy. But anyways, I fixed that now, so I got the shorts at that 50 level. We'll see if it does a little bit of a rinse and repeat. Uh, Weight Watchers, which we just put in, hasn't really done much. It went a whopping 10 cents in the money. Uh, it is now about five cents in the money. I want to see like 750 on this, and then we'll get a little bit more excited uh, for WW, not the one that's going crazy, WWE. Wish we had that one um, yeah. for the long term. This is more of like a squeeze play there. But uh, Weight Watcher is still pretty strong. Let's see how it goes. Going back over to Alphabet. That's another one that we just grabbed. Not a huge move off that 106 or that 107 just yet. I haven't even been able to get any shares 
at the 90 range. So 77 was the only entry I captured. If we get to 106, I want out of this one. As we're still, I mean, the NASDAQ's trying to get to 1%, faltering just a little bit here. So if you have a pullback name, it looks like they are going to be working out. Coin, still not underneath 70. I might get on the bid at 70 just to join a guy that's there and then see if we can't get the rest of that flush. That's been the one for me. And then uh, there was one other name I wanted to look at. Uh, actually, never mind, never mind. I already talked about it. We talked about Google. Man, Neil, Neil talks, uh, mentioned there about finding something that's been falling down. We've only been short uh, right here today. We're in an up market, which oh, to me is like blowing my mind a little bit because that's not something that I normally do. Uh, but I'm liking uh, the new Sean. Much more calm down, much more relaxed, um, and just trying to find those, those, those winners, right? I mean, and that's what we're doing. I mean, Meta, we, we just had both, both these stocks dollar in the money. We had Meta dollar in the money. Meta just touched, by the way, like we weren't there, but Meta just touched 218.25, which, which, you know, we're short at 219.40. That was a dollar 15 in the money there, and it bounced. I didn't even, I wasn't even paying attention. I was looking for other trades. It bounced straight off VWAP there. Should have had an out uh, there for VWAP. But we, we, we're only now in 25% uh, of this trade, which reminds me, let me change my stop order right now because we've got to change. Me and Neil were just talking about this. Um, you know, when we have stop orders set out there um, and you put it out for the amount of shares that you have, and then when you cover, um, now you have less shares. So you got to change that stop order or else what happens is, is that, and you, you'll hear us say this sometimes, oh, like we just made like a keystroke here. I have too many shares or there's shares left over or something. So if you don't change it, like if you had 100 shares and now you only have 20, then you got to, thank you, Mr. Rob, uh, then you got to change no. that order uh, there at 219 and change. It is the Raptor Red Toronto uh, Skyline right here. Stupid I'll Raptors. I, I missed the message. Mm. Just always the same. Thanks for that, wall. Rob, uh, as we're going there. But um, anyways, so that's what you got to do. So right now we're only in 20% of Meta. Meta, good stock today, but, um, you know, should have probably had something out on VWAP as we retrace all the way up. And we also said that there was going to be a really good chance that the NASDAQ was going to test 13.1 right there. So here it comes up to 13.1 again. And, uh, yeah, it is testing that level right now uh, of Meta and of the NASDAQ. So I really like the Google long. I know Neil's looking at the short. I like the long. Oh, it's a reverse 107, 100%. I've said right. it five so, times. Yep, Th exactly. This is a reverse level. Yep, so just like that, that, this is a level that I'm looking at to bust the long. I mean, we had this long the other day uh, and it didn't work. We tried it. Oh, no, actually, we didn't. Um, we were looking at it. Maybe we had it right there. I can't remember. Uh, but this is a good level to go long, 107 there on Google. So that's what I'm looking for as well. As right there, thankfully, um, our boy just came back a little bit there in Meta. So Meta just does touch the top and then comes right back in. Hopefully the market can fall as uh, I'm net short, which would be really nice. I don't know what GFAI is doing right now. Back down, yeah, nah. so there, bye-bye 33. That was level was yeah, yeah. good until it wasn't. Oh. Now down there to 30. What's up right now? Uh, just talking uh, Veru, guys, with uh, our man Fahad over here. Uh, looks like a $5 million investment from something called Frost Gamma Investments Trust on an 8K filing that came through this morning. So. A uh, decent volume spike there for Veru, which I just saw was at a dollar yesterday. Wow. That's the dollar bounce. Oh, dollar bounces are good, man. Uh, so anyways, uh, Alphabet, I still, the 107, it's here. I'm trying to get more. If, if we get more, I'll let you guys know, but I haven't even gotten many fills here above that 75 range. Doesn't want to give it to you at the end of the day. Coin took out the high, so we have to get out of it. A lot of times, the last time you short it or long it at a key price level it's probably gonna be a loser it's now five percent it's gone the next level up 73 and then it's gap time like but above 73 I mean you guys can see there's pretty much nothing there so you do want to be very careful it has to get to 73 alphabet yeah alphabet just filled at that 106 80 area so that 107 still in play it has been okay the short hasn't quite gone into VWAP but you kind of one for one on the short at this level, but it is still a reverse. Like if 107 breaks, it's a bull flag, it's whatever, I don't know, whatever pattern you want to accord to it. It's a strong upward trend and the market is screaming higher, so got to respect it. I do still have Micron because Micron's bleeding VWAP. I want those fills into 6150. And Netflix was the other one we wanted to continue to monitor. Uh, Netflix now lower high. So I never got the short in the mid to high two, uh, 340s. Sometimes it's how it is. Like the one you really want is the one that never really gets to your price. Um, it's up 3%, but not really as strong as the rest of the market, as the market's at highs uh, currently. So I would respect this top on Netflix 
I think you just short in front of the current high of the day because it doesn't want to seem to go as strong as everything else. Yeah, uh, okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, just, just watching out here because we, we did put that order in for a 107 break long, so I feel like that's probably uh, the next shoe to drop right here. Wow, Amazon, man. And again, it doesn't matter because we don't have it, but I mean, Amazon, with that long news, if you rewind this to like 9.30, 9.25, when we said like Amazon had all this AI news today, um, you know, nice to hear about that. And then look what's been happening ever since today on Amazon. Straight, 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 fire, all the way to the upside now, $100.52. I saw someone in the chat say, um, as Amazon was approaching 100, they're like, short Amazon at 100. And I just, you know, I don't really want to short stocks that have great news behind them. Um, I know I'm short meta right now. That's, that's more against that high. But like Amazon right there at $100, it's just too key of a level uh, to short it on an investor day or whatever they call it today, corporate action day. I don't know what the hell it was. Uh, but nice move up there. Jaffe's corporate talking action. all about uh, AI, oh, yeah, yeah. all about cost efficiencies and this kind of stuff. That's going to send Amazon to the moon because we've already seen it work for them before when they announced some layoffs. And it was such a small little number there for layoffs uh, that, you know, it didn't really affect it. But we still saw a nice bump. I think that was from 97 to 100 the first time. And now you get it again today. I'm still looking at this 105 top. It's kind of like that Alibaba trade. We had that um, uh, D. Westermeyer yesterday talking about being trapped on Alibaba uh, there as well. I still feel like Amazon, um, you know, you, you don't really want to go long until you break through 105, I feel, because you're still in the middle right now. So that's something to look at. Um, all right. So another something to look at for me is Meta, as Meta, of course, did fade off again. I don't really want that short up there because of where the market is. But look what the market's doing. Exactly like we mentioned when it was at 1320 or 1330. I said, I think we're going to go to 131. And that's where we're at right now on the NASDAQ. And now it looks like we want to hit that and then fade out. So we could have some decent wins uh, in, our, in our portfolio here moving forward, especially if that meta doesn't want to hold this 219. Maybe we do come back and test this view up down to 20. I'm not even putting a bid there. That's how low I think it can go. Um, what's moved up? here though is AMD uh, back to the upside is we only have 15% of this name left but it's coming back up to this 9280 area where I think is a reload again uh, for me so let's wait to see about 9280 on a reload here for Amazon so a couple of things here I did just get a Finally, we got something a little tighter to 107, but then got some out there at the 70 range on Alphabet. So that looks like it's still holding the same range. We'll play the range until it breaks. If we get VWAP, I have a, oh, I had a bid at VWAP. Uh, and I don't know what happened to it. There we go. Now we got a bit, in, a bit out in front of VWAP there. Thought we had one. If it gets there, want to respect it. It's putting in higher lows. So you have to respect that. If it's going higher highs, higher lows into it, then each time you short, you want to be a little bit tighter to 107 and you want to start getting out a little bit closer, um, a little bit more above that VWAP. Weight Watchers is still kind of going sideways, so not much to see there. And I see a lot of small cap names in there. I'm not going not gonna to fall for AMC, but I want to acknowledge what's going on with CrowdStrike. Uh, because it made another strong press today, and it actually broke. So here's the thing, it, bro it did break that previous high, that 139, but it wicked it. So what I mean by that is it wicked the previous high, got to 140 in reverse. So if it never really breaks that previous high again, that's a bit of a fail breakout for CrowdStrike. It's been a beast for two days in a row. I know Arun was in it. Um, he was in it the first day looking for the big move, and then it kind of goes the next day. Uh, but if it does not get through 139, hard reversal on CrowdStrike at that 140. But congrats if you've been playing that one to the long side. Short's still working on the two names that I got left, and then never any opportunity to get into meta just yet. And uh, this could be, 220 just might be it. It still feels like a bit of a long, but I haven't been, been reluctant to chase it. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, um, so we, I, I said we weren't going to get out of anything here, but I saw AMD start to rip up, so we're back into the short. And then I was just like, I got to get something out on Meta here because if AMD is starting to go back up to the upside and we are going to try to break this 13,000 and hold, 13,1 and hold it, then I got to get something out. So we're short there at 40. We took out an 88 fill there. So we take out uh, uh, 52 pennies on that last fill and now I have to adjust this just one more time because we have less shares now in case we do bump up to the upside but what is looking a little bit nasty here right back up to the day's high is AMD so we're going to give some back because we're short here against 93 we're short at 84 right now um, so we're out of the money eight pennies 
which is nothing, but uh, we've already taken a dollar plus on this trade. Uh, look at those fills, man, 91.83, wow. Uh, okay, so here it's coming back in a little bit. Remember, we're short at 84, looking to get some profit on this name. Let's see if it can work. It is now making that move right back up to the high of the day, which is 93.03. So that's kind of what we're looking for here on AMD is a little bit of a flush back and like just the strength in this name. I mean, you could check out NVIDIA, I'm assuming is ripping to the 68. upside. 68. Uh, as well oh, right now. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's okay, 68 right now. If that comes through, then that's great uh, for an AMD short, for, for an NVIDIA short to get short. But right now, like I said, man, we're sort of putting you know, the stock on the line because we have the shares now. So uh, yeah, we're just kind of just waiting to see what this NASDAQ wants to do. Looks like it wants to take out this 13-1, guys. So yep, our, our out will be respected right now on AMD. No, no challenging this one, man. If the market wants to rip, fine. Uh, that's actually fine because we'll take it. But for right now, AMD looking to take a 15 cent hit if it breaks above 93. Yeah, and uh, uh, speaking of which, I mean, uh, look, that NVIDIA, I meant to slap the fail because I was long. It was the only stock I liked to the long side. Well, I have Weight Watchers. That's, we try to group stocks. These, I try to group stocks a lot of times. So if I call it like a squeeze name or something like that, I don't really care what, the, what it's doing relative to the market. But if I pick like an NVIDIA to go long, then, you know, if the market goes up, then I, I need to still have yeah. it. And I don't. So I'm down on NVIDIA when right, it was, you know, it's absolutely booming to the upside. I do have Micron short and I just reloaded again in Google. So we get some out. Anytime you get some out, then I want to reload off the level. 107 is going to be a break. Once again, I'm going to get on the bid if it pops into the 70s. So just getting tighter and tighter to that top. Speaking of the one long I have, uh, WW uh, actually just broke the high. So there, it, it wasn't doing anything. And then finally, it makes it bounce off VWAP. I reload when it puts in a higher low, so trend continues. Kind of add to it once you see the trend continuation. Breaks a top, working into that 750 level. If it breaks 750, I do want to hold on to something uh, because you could see anything on the stock. When you look at the daily chart, you're kind of already through this. And you could see $8, like why not? But you know, I want to make sure we're paying ourselves out here. Um, only one entry point since uh, we first got in. But the more I get out, the more willing I am to put some dip buys in. All right, here we go. There goes Google. Google. Yeah, Google. So Google, we're long Google right now uh, as it just broke to the upside. We did get out of our AMD, which is kind of like just flashing around and not doing a whole heck of a lot right now. But we are back, not back in. We are into Google for the first time as we sort of thought that that was gonna break a little bit, but right now it's just broke and stopped. So you're gonna to have to be as patient as you can. We're long, of course. Am I on Google? Yeah, there it is. I'm long at a once. So uh, hopefully, yeah, you're welcome there, Momo Pro, man. This is what we're trying to do is bring the energy here uh, every single day. So it's glad to see that you're uh, enjoying it today. But right now, man, we're gonna see about Google going to the upside. I like the trade, we're in this name. We've Nobody liked it on a strong shorts. opportunity right now. Uh, again, moving to the upside. So here goes Google, or sorry, here goes AMD um, upside. Here goes Google, hopefully upside as well. I have a meta reverse long if it takes out 219.66 uh, or 65. So let's see if that goes on. Oh, apparently Pratt also owns a pair of jorts. Are those jorts? Yeah. yeah I guess so. Wow, those are jorts. I mean, a nice it, one. They're, uh, they're jean material and they're shorts, so they're jorts. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And so got the jorts. socks and sandals. In socks jorts. and sandals and jorts. Wow. Interesting combo there. The Raptors, uh, the Raptors lose a game and people lose their minds around here. Like, it's just... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What, so what are we doing? We're just, okay. gonna, we're just gonna hold on. Uh, we're just gonna hold on to this uh, Google trade and then we're gonna figure it out. Can't unsee uh, that. Where, where, where oh, we're get gonna out of go uh, right now. So AMD, Google, we're, that's the only thing we're long right now. AMD, the reason why I keep talking about it is it busted through and then stopped out at 16. So I'm kind of glad that we got out at 92, sorry, 93, but now it's coming back in a little bit. Just making sure we, we don't, I don't have any bids, so nothing can go too wrong on this, but let's see what happens now. Oh, that's too bad that that's starting to fade out because if the market does fade, I do like AMD to the short side, but I can't be short AMD and long Google. So that, yeah, won't, that won't work out. Well, so. okay. okay, but hold on. The, the, the way I sort of see it is uh, we've seen this before. I've seen the chips one way and then big tech kind of trend the other way. Now, eventually it catches up, but there have been these opportunities, especially at the open this morning, like Meta, Google were both longs, and then you had the chip names going down. So like there are these pockets that are available. Now I'm saying that, look, I'm literally saying that short micron long Google. So um, I guess it's like the whole talking up your old book, but this stock's down 1%. The chip showed a lot of weakness um, this morning. I'm still in this one. I've, I've taken some of the overfills above VWAP here. I got this wick, I'll try to clean it up to 64. 
If this gets to 64, I probably have lost three times shorting Micron. Maybe even four times, but I think it's going to be worth it. So anyways, that's Micron. I'm still in it. I'm not really getting anything out till it's beneath VWAP and getting closer to 61 even. Then that low of the day. Alphabet, Google, it's back. Uh, it's not really going much. I think 09 is literally the high of that move on the 107 break. So not a heck of a lot yet, but the market's still screaming. I don't see like a level like this. I don't know that you want to give up on it. If it's going to break out, there's a dollar fifty here, a dollar to a dollar fifty till the next resistance level. So I don't think I want to be too quick uh, to get out and give up on this trade. Meta 220 could be a thing. And how about Tesla? This is it's 1018. This is the first time we've gone 40 minutes without even mentioning the name Tesla, up two and a half percent and looking like it wants to make a bit of a break after yesterday's resistance at 185. 185 was a level on Tesla. Here we are. It's my first time looking at it. All right. Um, yeah, so I took a little bit out there on Google because it, it went to the upside here. And this is a good point about uh, what Neil's talking about here, about breaking lower to it for a dollar fifty and things like that, right? Is, is that you got to sort of judge, the, you know, the position that you have and the sort of the risk that you're willing to take on, right? Like when that ripped upside there, um, you know, and I, it, it's not going. So I took out some eights there or something like that. I'm, I'm going to only give this back, I think, here to 106.50 at most. Uh, and again, you know, the one thing that you guys don't see, which, you know, is, is share size, right? And so I have to be a little more cautious uh, about this trade in case it does break back down below because I don't, I don't want to lose too much uh, of what, I'm, what I've made here. So 106.50 on a low... It sucks too because yeah, AMD now is falling and we could have really cashed out on that one. But AMD did go against us, 10 cents against our stop. So for me, that, that's an out. So it does come back down now, which kind of is what it is. But I'm gonna give this down here on Google, on Google is to that level of 106.50, yeah. If we don't, if we don't hold 106.50, we're gonna get out. I mean, we've held it the whole time. So now if we don't, then forget about it. Um, and then Meta, man, we did, so we made money on Meta today. Meta's a good stock for us. We're positive on it. But now we have this against us. I said we'd take the long if it broke above that 60 level. So again, you know, I'm going to hold this one to about 218.50. I want to give these ones a little bit of room to breathe here. But so far, it's not breathing too well as here comes Google right back down in again uh, on this name. So let's just see what happens here on this. Now, I see I was short um, into 13.10. So I keep saying 1310, it's 13100 uh, right there. And, that, and then that worked out well, the shorts worked out well, but then we got excited when it broke it and took out some of these levels. So looks like we should have stayed in that AMD short. The meta short hasn't, has been fine, but we're long now. And I still do like this Google long with another try. Because we got out of a little bit, we'll try to get back in, but it won't be that many shares against 106.50. If it breaks 106.50, we're gonna be out of Google, but uh, all right, it's 1021 already, man. Thank you again yes, uh, for that super chat right here uh, by Jose, or uh, sorry, Momo. Thank you, Momo Pro. What's up? Uh, love the energy. Thank you so much for that. You get a shout out uh, today for that super chat. So shout out to you, Momo Pro, and a shout out to Brendan over there at the big desk. Hey guys, a bit of a quiet day so far for small cap land. We'll talk about a couple here, though, that are moving around. I mentioned in the uh, pre-market, if you're with us, anything it seemed at that point, anyways, with uh, AI in the name was going to be a thing today. It turns out uh, only a few continued. CXAI, this CX app incorporated, uh, still kind of hanging out here at day highs. 343.50, if you go out to uh, the daily chart, is this level from the gap to the downside on this uh, CXAI on a big move to the upside. Uh, this one as well, AUUD, not AI related from what I see, rejected a dollar there pretty hard, uh, back downside on heavy volume, but still up significantly. Uh, didn't find much in the way of uh, a reason for that move this morning for AUUD. Uh, this one, CNSL, nice gap higher this morning, trying to hold 375 down here. Uh, there it is, 380, 375, bit of an area of consolidation for consolidated communications. Uh, that was the one that got a uh, potential takeover up at uh, $4. Uh, so it's trading uh, just below that. Uh, obviously, BBA, I left it on here just to show you. Yeah, not much participation here. Actually, down 4% versus some of the other ones taking the spotlight today, guys, in AI land. Back over to you. So a couple of things. When Tesla broke the level, 85, failed, 
and then broke the level again and then failed again. Now, I, the first time I had it, I had it right in front of 185. I just stopped out at 01s. Um, but then we jump back in. Like, it does the wick top. I jump right back into the short and then see what happens. So I feel the same thing is going to happen. Uh, I don't want to get away from the Tesla because we just put that one on. I have my stop on Alphabet. Uh, just beneath 75 for half and then give the rest to the 60 level but it just feels like yeah that last little test in there that's going to be that flush now you're getting confirmation so even google i just got half out of that one and really i wasn't going to take any profit till it got into the 40s at the end of the day i did want to find something else to be short um it ended up being tesla because i happened to look at it but if i didn't look at tesla then I wouldn't have been able to put anything on there uh, and then get some of this to the short side. I still have Micron. That's okay. Oh, Weight Watchers. Uh, this is, is this going to fail at 750 again? Yeah, maybe. So WW got up to 744, was able to get some out there at 41, kind of pull back. Now it's testing 750 a second time, and it's already slowing down. So this is the volumes tapering off. You always want to see volume on a squeeze or a breakout play. The volume is really starting to taper off here. I'll get another leg out in front of set. <sighs> I was just talking about the volumes tapering off. I'll get another leg out in front of 750. It might not break, and then it breaks. So I guess this one is still going to the upside for now. But I just got a little bit more defensive on it, like two seconds before it broke the high. I still have half to position on Weight Watchers, but we'll see what happens. Uh, if it gets to $8, it feels like it's going to be an uphill battle, the way the volume is going with this. As I said, I got into Tesla. I just scalped some out in front of 184.50. I'll look for 184s. This is also trending to the upside. Every short is against the grain right now, so you want to respect that, at least the way this is going. And Micron, the other short that I'm in. It's sleepy, but if the market continues to break highs and Micron can't break the lower high it's sitting in right now, then I'm any kind of market flush and this stock is toast and we should see 60 bucks. Yeah, it's funny because, um, yeah, I mean, I'm agreeing with all that, but uh, right now, like, we were short Google, or sorry, uh, not Google, this is called Amazon, uh, this is called Meta. Uh, we were short Meta, and then all of a sudden now, it looks like it wants to blow up in our face uh, one more time to the long side. We are long, and that's the side that it looks like wants to blow up. So uh, we're going to have to wait, wait on this one, I'm guessing now, uh, for Meta as... I just tried, I mean, it's funny because I just tried to buy 75s there. It went to 79. Uh, maybe if we can come back in a little bit, then we can get some luck uh, going on our side here with Amazon, uh, or sorry, with Meta. I keep saying Amazon because Amazon, I was looking at that as well. Amazon is just continues uh, to make a move to the upside here, just touching one, almost 101 uh, right there. So I don't know, do we want to, I mean, we've, we, we faded uh, Meta for a while until it took out the top, which fooled us, I guess, right there at 219. I thought for sure if we were taking this 219.60 that we were going to 220. Like, that's where my offer is. And I thought, I thought we would get that, and we didn't. So a uh, definite missed opportunity there uh, with Meta. Um, try, you know, should have just held on to that short, but it did take us out on the high of the day. And I guess shorting against a key level of 219 was really, the, or 220 was really the play there. But for right now, yeah, we're fading out Ooh, on that. Yeah. And if this takes this 218.50, we just got our 75. If this takes our 218.50, then we're gone uh, on that one. And we'll just say, you know what? Good on you, Meta Man. We had the right idea early, but then just got punched out of it right there. And then we went long. Like, if I don't take the long there, then I'm upset oh, now pending. because we got out of our short. But at least we wouldn't be trapped long uh, right now. We talk about bull traps. I feel like that's exactly uh, what's happened to me here. So um, we're going to have to wait on it, but it is coming back down now. Meta, our average price is 46. So it's going to be a hit. It's just not going to be a super nasty one. Uh, it'll be about a buck if it takes down that 218.50. Uh, that's the level that we're waiting out for. But uh, it's not good right now. And then the same kind of level for uh, Google as well, this 106.50. We'll see if that can come into play here. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's like I was short four times alphabet and long once. It, it's trying to hold up, but the more that it goes sideways here, I'm like, the original thesis was um, short this level until it gives you confirmation on the break. All it did is break. It hasn't actually really given a ton of confirmation above. This could still be an over-under. So I just kind of adjusted. I was going to get half out on the, on the, on the three-quarter level. I just adjusted that to getting 75% out if it breaks at 106.75. Um, so it's a little more aggressive. not getting all out together, but it just does not feel as strong. You mentioned the word bull trap. Yeah, it could be one. It definitely could be one. And uh, if we get to the, I actually don't have bids on the bottom here. If we do get a harsh reversal uh, in the market, 
I, I do like Micron Short. I did talk about the, the chip names. It's worth noting Intel. I have not looked at Intel once, but look what's happening here at 3210. Now, I'm only saying this because I was long the entire afternoon uh, at 32, and it could only give you 3210. Intel will not break this. Well, it's gone like one cent, two cents above. This is exactly what happened in the afternoon. It just does not want to go. So if the market continues through highs, this is probably a solid break through the high of the day on Intel at like 32.20. But if we get back underneath and fail 32, I think we're shorting, we're back to shorting Intel. Um, I don't want to make a decision here because I've already made the decision I like Micron at the prices we're at. But if Intel breaks either direction beneath 32s, above 32.30, I just bracket, I'll bracket both sides. Come on, Sharif, talk to your meta, man, and see if you can get this one going No, back. Alfred uh, needs to talk uh, to, to the upset. Yeah, or, or, yeah, get Alfred to phone about meta. That's a good call, Neil. I like that one. Uh, maybe Alfred can uh, we change, get him on the change up the, uh, you know, the momentum here. Okay, and you send him this now, too, and get him to get, tell him to get on work. We can, yeah, we, yeah, we, we need, can get him on. We need, uh, we need to get, yeah, he can come on with you if he wants, if he wants to. It's up to him. Uh, right there, I like to hear what Alfred has to say. Uh, but uh, that's up to you. All right, here we go. We're, uh, we're, we're setting up Alfred maybe for the midday show or when he's available. Uh, we will hear from the infamous Alfred uh, coming up very, very, maybe coming up soon. We'll see. Uh, but uh, right now, okay, so what is coming down right now is Meta. Um, get Alfred on the phone quick uh, because, yeah, here comes Meta right down to the downside right now. We're getting close to being stopped out, which is going to definitely suck. So we'll, fl whoops, we'll flush ourselves. It was money early on Meta. We'll flush ourselves down the toilet as, ugh. Believe in the short, man, uh, but uh, the short was definitely not right early, but it was right until it was wrong, and there's the short, short, short. So we captured profit, man. We were up on meta, and then we were like, you know what? If we take out the high of the day, plus we're over 13.1 on the NASDAQ, yeah, man, we have a chance to go, but no, uh, it's the complete opposite of that. It has the chance to fall, and there it is right now, bouncing off that high of the day, and we were trapped and fooled on that. So um, I have nothing to say other than, yeah, that's exactly what happened, and I can't do much about it because... I'm stuck right now. I mean, I could get out. We could get out for 50 cent hit. I don't. I mean, if we want that, I don't know. I think we can hold out hope for a little bit better on that one. Um, I'm willing to take the hit on this one. That's meta. Um, of course, our AMD is down again right now. Apple still, you know, I guess I was fine picking meta because meta was super strong, I thought. But look what's happening right now. I mean, Apple continues, man. Upside, now up that 2% up just as much as Meta now uh, is Apple and trying to hold this market upside a little bit. So Apple, great move up. Uh, I, I mean, is there any levels here that we can look at? 164, 165, maybe. I want to look at GFAI because all we're, both of us are now only talking about big caps, it seems like. I know you've, yeah, I've, you've traded some good, good small ones. I thought ones, it was too far down. That's the Yeah, problem. 20, it's still at 30, bouncing around 30. So there is a play there probably. There's Meta, just broke that top, so that sucks. But broke the bottom, sorry. Meta going down to 218. So we do get flushed out on that one. Negative stock there for me. Meta, flush city down there. So that sucks. Well... So uh, this is actually, I thought, I said, I said I made the bottom wick. I think I said I made the bottom wick on NVIDIA. Um, but it can always be worse. I defended the level twice. It broke down. And this is what it comes down to. Like, at the end of the day, like, a lot of times I'll beat myself up way more than this. However, I do know that if I try to hold, like, if I hold along at 64 beneath that bottom, I'm not putting up that dollar. It's just... I'm not, that's not the trade I was intending to make off that level. I'll give it a little bit underneath, sometimes 25, 30 cents, 50, but there's no chance I was anticipating you'd have to hold it almost a dollar against you uh, to have that. So your entry, your entry is going to matter in that particular case. If I thought it was going to be that, you take a little bit less, but yeah, NVIDIA, bottom wick, 268 resistance, but I'm short Micron. Uh, so, I mean, I, yeah, you know what, this is pro it's probably worth the short on its own. But I have the Micron, which is going to work if that's going to work anyways. But Alphabet just rolled over, so I got a little more defensive there. Took out three quarters instead of a half. Now the question becomes, can it hold this 106.60? My guess is it cannot, quite frankly. I thought I was going to get some more Tesla. I guess I'm not going to. Um, I'm on the bid here underneath 184 to grab more on the shorts. It's... It's just one of those kinds of days, right? Like, even before that worked, you had to get stopped out. I had to get stopped out first, re-enter the trade, yeah, no, and yeah, now we're just absolutely flushing into the downside. Uh. So there we go. Now we're getting them. Oh, why do I still have a coin bid? Don't want, don't want, don't want, don't want. We're going to go to our crypto update, but even though this is trending up, 
I know why I put it in there, but I don't want it on a wick like that. I put it up wow. because of the trend line. I don't want an auto fill on a wick to the downside like that. So Micron printing, Tesla printing, but Google just came out to the downside. Brendo, what's going on in the world of crypto? Uh. Hey guys, yeah, positive so far, right across the board, for the most part anyways. We'll uh, show you the chart here uh, coming up of uh, Ethereum, but uh, all talk, all eyes on ETH late yesterday. Uh, when this comes through, the uh, latest upgrade, or since the merge anyways, the first uh, upgrade takes this right back to 2000. So we're actually through and holding nicely, or were anyway, uh, for ETH. Uh, this is an hourly chart, so a nice move up over the past 12 hours or so, uh, right at as we speak here, $2,000 for Ethereum. Good to see. Bitcoin not really participating in this move, but still holding nicely at 30,000 here, which uh, is turning into a nice little support area for Bitcoin so far this week. Uh, overall positive, as I was mentioning, 4% right now, about 2,000, 30,304, up half a percent for BTC. Everything else pretty much uh, top to bottom here, nicely green as well. Solana, Matic, Doge, even back to the upside, about 5%. Uh, today, 2% as well for uh, Cardano. So, uh, nice day right across the board for crypto, guys. Yeah, it's, it, it uh, yeah. is a good day. We, it, I still track it every now and then. And look, I, you guys would have seen me just get in and out for an $0.08 cent hit on Coinbase. And it's quite frankly, it's going to have worked. So, I, like, here's, here's basically what I'm getting at. Because I kind of glossed through it fast because I had to take the execution. Just... I'm drawing an ugly sort of trend line, like where this was going, and you can draw it like, you can kind of look at it like this, if we're being honest. So this is what I had up, and my trend line, sometimes they stay, sometimes they don't. So I had drawn the trend and said, this is kind of where the body of all the wicks are in my three minute, these are the wick bottoms, so this is like your entry zone, this would be your exit underneath, and I just stuck a bid in the middle, and I had it sitting out there on Coinbase. And then all of a sudden, like all my shorts were like, jam in the money in a, in a quick second and then I catch that film like a little bit aggressive let's just take it out don't like it so yes it ended up working and I sometimes will work on this for a trending trade so that's the setup and that's why I took the fill I want to make sure you guys know it's not just about ins and out wins and losses it's about the why so that's why I took the fill my reason for getting out of it immediately was just the violence of the move to the downside but it ends up holding this channel I'll try to leave this in there but if I flip to another stock and come back it won't be like Sean's Fibonacci's, it's just going to probably go away for good, and I'll have to redraw that uh, uh, there. But if I leave it up on one of my other charts, you can still see it. So anyways, that's that. I did maintain a quarter of my position in Alphabet. It needs to get above 107, and I'm not really... Look, if it goes to 107.20, that's, to me, not worth that much. Like, if it's breaking this 107 level, it should be getting at least past the half into that 108, or it's a failure. So right now, that long is a failure, as far as I'm concerned. All right. Um, yeah. Look, we um, we talked about giving Meta or getting well Meta. First of all, we're back into Meta off that wick bottom. We'll talk about that in a minute. But we talked about giving Google a little bit more um, juice there. I you know, you know sort of I averaged in there, um, and, and this is this is what we could be. We could trade the same stocks and just have completely different ideas. So where Neil got out, I bought there, which is giving me a little bit of an opportunity to get out as right now, we have some nice candles back to the upside, but that doesn't mean that this stock's gonna go. I mean, the NASDAQ is just retracing back to the upside there off a of bounce again off 13.1. So, you know, I don't like when it, like, when it bounces like that, it should actually continue to go and then continue to the highs. It didn't really get to the highs. Like it got to 13.30. It actually got pretty close there. It got 38. So maybe we're okay there on a little bit of a retracement back up. But um, this is what we did on Meta. So there we got flushed out. We lost. Uh, uh, we were long at 50s. Yeah. And then we averaged in there, which was fine. That was nothing. Uh, and then so we take an average out there of a dollar. And then we just bought it back at 20. And we took some out at 50, which we're at right now. So it's only 30 cents now in the money for us. And I'm waiting for a little bit higher. If we can get something around this 218, that's where it's 218. 218.85 is where I'm sitting, right, okay, good. So right into here, I was thinking about getting some out if, it, if we're lucky enough to have that move back up to the upside. That's something that we're looking at. And then just to talk about Google again, because we got it out uh, when it came back in here into the 90s, so we're right here right now, um, our average price is 95. So it is a 10 cent hit, but we have a lot of shares. So uh, 
What's up, Ponzi Fonzie? There it is. You're going to get a shout out right there. I don't, I don't really need a change of luck. The only stock that's really uh, been bad, and we, we did well on AMD, unfortunately, again, got stopped out at the high of the day, which is fine uh, for us on AMD. But uh, Meta's been fine. It's just, yeah, that little, that lat flush there was bad. Making money on the short, take the long, get hit. Now go back long. Let's see, Ponzi Fonzie, if our luck can change in the market, we'll take out days high. But now that I think about it, man, like the NASDAQ is already up 1.33%. I don't know if there's enough good news uh, in this market to keep this going, but let's hope that there is. No Fed speak um, looking for today, so uh, the market just has to sort of float around here. And if you look at that NASDAQ level that we keep talking about over and over again here, is this 13.1? That's where we're at right now. Chance to get to 13,160, and then you have up here 13,2, but you're still sort of in the middle there. I still look at some of these tops that we made back on the 11th, which was two days ago, and that's that, that level that I'm talking about here, 1330. So we're right here right now. Let's see if the, the, this market can hold. Google's pulling back a little bit. Yeah, it's, it just tried to get up to 107 again and failed a little bit. So, and the other thing that just made a little bit of a another checkup it's this Weight Watchers or WW you know it's another time into that 750 it's another failure at that 750 level so what the heck just happened behind me um, so I'm just gonna get some more shares out kind of in this range and I still have a piece but it's just gonna be a piece if it breaks down I think we see VWAP and I can make a judgment if I want to reload back into it before now I mean, I know what I see. I see. I see a wall at 750 off of a break that was at about 715. So those are the entry prices. If we get back down there, I can always look for a dip buy on WW. As those, as you were just mentioning, or I was as well, I guess. Another lower high in alpha. Really, have we have we taken out that 107? No. No. Like we, it broke 107 and it ran stops off 107. But original thesis was short 107 until it proves otherwise. And so I did take three quarters out. I'm just getting out. And, you know, I can talk, you know, wax poetic. That's basically the price. Whether I stop out, you know, half or whatever, it's going to end up the same thing. I'm out of this because it does feel like it has not really shown me enough buy strength. If it's going to trend to 108, like, what are we talking about here? If it's going to trend to 108, it's going to have to, A, break this consolidation, break the high of the day, make a couple of legs into the upside. There's going to be opportunities to get long. Quite frankly, if you can't find your way back into a long that goes a dollar, a dollar to a dollar seventy from here, then you shouldn't be day trading in the first place. So I'm just going to get out because the signals are telling me that it's not the right time or the right entry. If anything, it's a bit of a fail break in Alphabet. And they've got to be able to acknowledge that. So I'll hold on to Micron because that's a dog. And it kind of keeps getting up to 61 and a half and failing. I reloaded that, try to get out, but Tesla is about to come into VWAP here. So we just got, oh, I was just canceling. I hit my escape three times to pull my order back 15 to 20 cents and I just got filled. It's fine, that's okay. We'll definitely take it and I'll hit this one because I happen to be on this page. I meant to hit one of the better ones, but I was on the page for the new animations. That's why I hit the crappy cash one. Uh, but Tesla, short 185. We just got up there, 183.75. So that's been a good short. Not Alphabet, however, as you go to Brennan for Sector Watch. Hey, guys, just looking at the S&P 500 here, I think there's actually more red on this board today than we saw yesterday, but the market actually higher than it was at this point yesterday. So here we go. Pretty mixed as far as uh, advancers and decliners right now, industrials for one. Uh, downside in a pretty big way, uh, PHGWW and ROK leading 2.5 through 2, about 4% there leading the way as far as uh, downside for the industrials group among the leads. Uh, on the weak side, PGR was an earnings name, 6% in the insurance group, also a negative territory. You can see it tough to see, but uh, that's FRC. Downside again, 1.5 coming off. Uh, two straight days to the upside. PayPal having a nice day. 2.3% higher so far for PayPal. Uh, the entire healthcare group uh, positive on the day, led by Moderna there, 3.8. Uh, back to the upside. Had a couple of rough days earlier in the week as well. Uh, this group as well, nice uh, moves to the upside. Communication services, where you'll find Dish, 5%, Match, Netflix, Take Two, uh, Goog, and Google, Meta here as well. Two to two and a half, up to 5% higher. So among the leaders right now, uh, the communications group, utilities are weak. It's all about tech, though. Once tech gets back in charge, this is what we see for the overall market. Uh, Micron, notably weak there in the semi-group, 1.2% lower. WDC, STX among 
uh, decliners offsetting some gains led by uh, the big one there. Uh, Apple up more than 2% on the day. Software is actually the strongest within the tech group right now, guys. But 0.54 uh, overall for the market. Back over to you. Let's go healthcare. Let's hit this one uh, for Brendan, yeah. man. Because uh, if you haven't, one more time. There you go. There you go. Up to the 3,000. Yeah, if you haven't taken a chance, hit the, hit the like, hit the subscribe, because growing this community is what it's all about. I'm going to answer your question, Kevin Sorza, to be sure. Um, but, you know, Brennan going over Sector Watch is huge because you can see us trade a lot of tech and WW because it's in the news, quite frankly. But hey, there's other things out there. I mean, it's a fantastic. Like, how good has healthcare been? Like, we see this uh, time and time again, just watching UNH. Uh, and by the way, um, the answer for me, when did I start trading? Um, the year was two, the year was 2000. Yes, what age? But the year was 2003. I'll just leave it at that one. Um, you were 2002. I want to make the assumption. Yeah. yeah, I already put that in there. Yeah. Oh, you put it in the chat. There you go. So yeah. 2002, 2003 for the two of us. So it has been a while. And uh, Delta still, still, um, still down. But wow, it is my three minute. I'm not going to count them, but I think it's 10 green candles in a row on Delta finding a bottom. So this has absolutely turned around. It's now green. Went from red to green. I still think 35 is a level, so I don't want to diddle in the middle here, but congratulations if you somehow managed to catch a bottom in that sucker. Um, that's crazy. It's been an absolute tear in the last half an hour, so I want to make sure we at least acknowledge that. Yeah, I'm going to acknowledge just getting stops run again um, as we go short on Amazon right here now. I don't know. I mean, I thought that this breaking lower, you know, would have given us, given us an opportunity here. But it's 1044, and of course, you know, I should just trade the market. I'm honestly... I'm getting, I mean, the stocks have been fine, but like when it's this choppy, like the NASDAQ just bounces off the 50 period. Why try to guess, you know, kind of like what stocks are going to do when you could just sort of sit here uh, and trade the market? Because, you know, we've had that kind of a call back and forth a little bit. Like, look at Google. Google breaks 50. I had to get out. That's where VWAP is. We got out there as it breaks back down through 50. So we get out and then it goes back up 15 cents. It doesn't, 15 cents is not. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to be the end of the world or anything like that, but still could have saved it, right? And we'd still be long and not worry about anything. Uh, but then once that bre breaks, also meta breaks. So again, we get in, get out 30%, then get lose on the last 70% as it breaks 218. So yeah, a little frustrated uh, here with some of these levels breaking uh, just right now and then just bouncing around and not really doing much, to be quite honest with you. So I really feel stupid because we had that meta short there. It was a huge move up, and I was just like, ugh. Uh, that, so that's really the one that I'm most upset with. Um, I'm, not, I'm not super upset with Google, but still sucks. And then, again, this one here, when we were short AMD all day, and we wrote down 93, but once it breaks 93 and that wick high, I just didn't give it 17 cents. I don't think I would have done that anyways. So it's a good out there for me, but then the result is looking like, yee, what do you do there, my friend, uh, as it moves all the way back down now. So the only position that I have on right now is this Amazon short. We're short at 23. We had to take an average in here. Uh, it's a decent position and it's just against 50. So we're short 23s against 50. It's a 20... Seven cents, I mean, slippage, let's say maybe 30 cent hit here uh, if it doesn't work out. So let's see if Amazon can come back in. If this does get to 100 flat, then we're roughly one to one on that. Uh, and that's where we just bounced off of, to be quite honest with you, was $100.13. So hopefully this can come back in a little bit here. We like trading Amazon. So, you know, hopefully this will come back as now it's coming in just a little bit here on AMZN. Yeah, and so we'll a couple of things here. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to tweet this out because I'm showing the chart of Alphabet. But um, on the note of reversing, like, like sometimes to reverse a position, as a day trader, there are stocks where if you reverse it, your only chance to reverse is going to be at that exact moment. And there are other times when the market is not nearly strong enough, a name that's fallen the market enough like Break an Alphabet, lower, like it just might need to catch a bit above. And that's the point we're trying to make, I was trying to make earlier. You don't always have to make that reverse, but you want to see it hold that bid. Uh, it looks like it was a good place to get out of Tesla there. I maybe thought if we bounced and held this trend, short-term trend to the upside, that you could see another move into 185 and we just reload the short. Might not be able to get it. I did not get, I'm on the offer at 40. Okay, no, we might get some 45s here. Uh, on Micron. I've been able to get anything kind of tight to that 50 level, which I do want. Tesla still kind of holding an upward trend. And the other one, which is strong, and I want, I want to acknowledge Micro Microsoft has held the top end here, but it feels like this is also about to give it up. And this is how you can get a real, a real turn in this market. 
So Microsoft broke yesterday's highs, did not extend, kind of like Alphabet didn't extend either. Goes a dollar, it hasn't really held that break uh, too well. If it gets back under 87, I think you can be looking for that reversal and uh, short trade. Weight Watchers, by the way, still in WW, doing absolutely nothing. It's in the money, but you know, it's not going anywhere. I'll let you guys know. If it breaks the high of the day, that's great. If it gets down to the 15 area, that would be where I look for that reload, if we can even catch it. Oh, and yeah, NVIDIA was the other one I wanted to talk about. So, you know, I got away from the long. Every single level kind of holds when you, when you want it to, yeah. um, and sometimes you get out of it, and that's what happens to you. But that 268, I'm not in it, but if we do get a shot to short at the 268 level, that's off the 268 level, then I will take my shot. It's been an obvious one on NVIDIA. It didn't stand out on my higher time frame chart, so I would never have been sitting there saying, hey, this is the top on NVIDIA, but it's now telling you it's a high. I would have said 270. That's obvious there, but, you know, 268 is where it's at now. You have to be able to adjust on the fly. That's the level you want to work on NVIDIA here. The bottom, I think you guys can all see there. Once it gets underneath 64, maybe you look for the longs into 63. Uh, okay, man. Uh, hopefully we can get a nice little downside move uh, right now. You guys are asking about my Amazon uh, trade. Look, I have 500 shares, so my stop is going to be a little bit tighter um, you know, than it would be if I didn't have uh, this many shares. So, I, I mean, we're going to wait to see. It'll be a $150 hit, but here it goes, breaking through $100 bucks and 50 cents uh, right now. So there it is. Um, we are going to take that hit, unfortunately, if it does break. And uh, then we'll just be like, ah, damn it. Uh, we have to find another one. But yeah, it's not been a great trade uh, today on this short anyways. It's just, it's just funny because like, not much is happening right now. I'm hoping that it does happen happen uh, pretty soon, but the midday show's coming, there it is. So there goes Amazon, right? It just broke. So uh, it wasn't, it was $148 uh, there. Uh, so a little bit of a hit there on Amazon as it rips up and we take the short into that level. Now you watch, now it's probably gonna go down and that's the life, uh, that's you know oh, part of what we have Tesla to deal too. with here uh, every day it seems like trying to find tops and bottoms. So uh, that's what we're doing right now. And uh, we're, pretty, we're pretty happy with the trade, just not thrilled. So um, Amazon breaking higher right there. You know, a loss is a loss, and that's what that is. And uh, damn it, and like look at Meta too. So I think we just got to slow down right now and wait for some key levels to hit because right now, man, uh, nothing's really coming in too, too much for me uh, on these plays. Like I'm taking shares, hoping for a move, and the move's just not happening. Yeah, well, it's about to happen, I think, Tesla 185. So 10 minutes to go, and a lot of times you're not necessarily seeing this at the midday where you're getting key price levels, but that's a heck of a reversal. I wish I could tell you I was long when I got out. It would have been nice, but I'm just looking for short off the top. So I'm sitting in front of 185 because that's been... If, I, if you short it too early, then you're just kind of putting too much risk out there if the trend continues to the upside. So i got to be at least a little bit patient there. Man, Meta, is, is Google bouncing? No, it's not. Google's not bouncing. Just wanted to double check that at 107. Microsoft's still in the pocket. This one has a chance to go. Maybe it wants to make the break into the upside. But my eyeballs are going to be on Tesla in that 185. We're about to get it. So this is the one I want to be focused on. Once I get the fill... My stop is at the high of the day. I would look to add above 185, like do the old over-under. I feel those can be a little bit money fills as well. And I saw a couple of people talk about names like Bed Bath & Beyond and Tupperware. I didn't pay for Tupperware shorts today, so I'm hoping that's not putting a squeeze on, because that's one of my short it if it tries to squeeze names is Tupperware and Bed Bath & Beyond. I'll double check those after uh, we get this Tesla fill, which I'm trying to manifest it into belief that it's going to break 75 and I can get, get some fills here, uh, but it hasn't oh. happened just yet. Where is, oh my God, Meta. Yeah, I just saw. Meta just went right back to the upside there. Of course, as we get stopped out of everything, uh, that's when the fire comes. So um, yeah, we're, we're fine with it though. Um, as Meta, I, like now I'm re rethinking about a short again, but um, you know, we're just going to take our own advice like we keep saying here and just regroup um, and just watch out now because... Although, you know, we, we're not down what we, what we made oh. yesterday. We're still down, and that's never a good sign. So, um, you know, we definitely want to get some of this back in. Uh, all right, so it's a nice move right back to the upside right here. Can we hold out? Uh, I don't know. So that's the next question coming through right now um, about, about this move. So I want to go back over to a name that we've actually made money on today. And, of course, that was right here uh, with our friend Meta. 
uh, sorry, uh, AMD, Meta we lost on. So we're going to wait to see if this can do anything right now for us. Um, AMD, again, nice little bump up to 92.60. It looks like that's a decent level. We traded this yesterday, something similar to this yesterday um, off AMD where we didn't have the ultimate high, but we played something in the middle, uh, just hoping that this fell down. But it's 10.52 right now, and the NASDAQ is still bouncing around that 13.100. So I'm not, again, you know, overly happy uh, with how this is moving. So let's just watch out for AMD and for the market as we just bouncing around some levels here. So um, AMD upside right now, I'm thinking about a short, but I feel like it has to get a little bit closer to 93 uh, before we do that. But so far so good here um, with this AMD trade. We're just gonna watch out to see about getting into a short. Maybe we gotta go over to Nvidia or something, but I do like this AMD trade. I have it, uh, oh shoot, I don't, I don't have if it If we up. can get it short oh, there, 68's been a good one. Uh, yeah, no, 68's been good. I'm on the offer, I, I got Tesla by the way, but I am on the offer of NVIDIA in front of that 260. And I do want that one. I just got Tesla. I was offering at 75. I moved it to 73. How many times do we say this? And it fills in front of the obvious level and not at the obvious level. So I just got filled at 73. I do have an overfill above 185 uh, to get more shares. But NVIDIA... That's actually close to breaking higher and maybe getting us in in front of that 268. As we go to Brendan for Money Talks. Hey guys, two days in a row, dollar weakness coming into play once again. DXY downside in a pretty big way here. Once again, off the PPI number this morning. Again, two days, two inflation numbers, both pointing towards cooling inflation. So that has uh, the dollar back to 101. We're approaching... Uh, the lowest level since the beginning of the year, that was January, actually February 2nd, uh, was the last time we were down here around this uh, 101 uh, flat area, 100.8, 101 flat area coming into play once again. This is a daily chart. For the DXY, you can see one, two, three, sharp days down, half a percent up here right now for the dollar. So everything sharply higher here, including... Uh, the euro and Canadian dollar, both up half a percent. We're almost back to 75 once again for the CAD. Uh, pound, British pound, 0.2 to the upside. 125 gets taken out. Uh, see if it can hold throughout the day. That was a big resistance area for the pound. Japanese yen, same story, half a percent, 75 and a half right now. Uh, biggest gain on the board here, still Ethereum, 5%. We're back above and holding. 2,000, guys, for ETH. 2,000. Yeah, good level there for Ethereum as uh, they go through that change. Coin at 80 yet? <laughs> kind of rallying everything up right now, uh, obviously. Um, okay, so we'll just continue to look for uh, opportunities. So I got into AMD. I was just sort of deciding the same thing here that I've been deciding for a bit, and that was is that I, I think that this AMD level um, of 60 is a decent one. So I'm going to try to hold out hope that that is true uh, right there, 92.60 or so for AMD. So we're going to go short with that in mind um, and then just be able to hold out hope that uh, it's the right trade for us. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to average it in in the 50s and then get out in the 60s, trying to take smaller cuts. Well, we, we talked about that, taking more shares with some smaller cuts. But I don't know if that's the right strategy because it definitely has not been working uh, out for me yet today. Uh, uh, we, had, we had AMD early and then got stopped out. Um, we had Meta early. Now that's kind of in the middle. I don't really want to do anything with that one. We did like a Google break long. We talked about that. That stopped us out and it's right back to our stop out levels. Um, and then what else, man? Amazon. Amazon was fine, still sucks because we had 500 shares. We talked about that, uh, but you know, shorter stop. Maybe, maybe the wait for that one to the upside is just what is this market going to do? I mean, that's the question that we're all waiting for right now, as it's doing not much, man. It's been doing nothing really since. 10.17, so you're at about a half hour where we had some nice moves, a retracement back to the 50 period. Now we're trying to go up again, 13.128 right now on uh, the market. So it's kind of stuck in the middle, uh, like we said. So Netflix taking off. Oh, the one thing that we didn't oh, do, we'll, Netflix. We'll look at Netflix, was we didn't do any of this. Hola, like and subscribe today. Yes, Miss Cat right there. Hit oh, the like and subscribe. Yeah, we had the proud one. We didn't have the cat one. The and uh, oh, we only have 1.3K. So hit, hit it right here, guys, if you can. Uh, hit the like button on the stream. Let's get this over 2,000 likes. Regardless of what the market's doing, uh, hit like and let's get going right now. So here's AMD, again, trying to get back up to 50s. This is where we're going to short it. If it takes out 60, we're gone as this market's trying to get a little juicier to the upside. Looking to take out the day's high right now of uh, 13,140. Yeah, exactly. 13.14 on the NASDAQ, but the ES is at the high as well, like two handles away from the top. I just got to Tesla overfill, so you can see here 
if it breaks the high, I got to get out. I took some to wet the beak at 75. It did go like 25. So there it is. Automatically out. Oh my goodness. See, this is the problem. Like it's, uh, you fight these over and over again. Over and over again. It's just like every single, every single key level, it just has to break today and put a bit of a test in. Yeah, whatever. I, yep. Uh, how many times are we going to fight the same stocks? I could have been one and done with Tesla. Like 85 works. We had it down into VWAP. You had to go back into it. So we'll essentially end up like flat on the day, but that's actually because I got a little bit for a scalp long in there. So I'll kind of be flat on Tesla, and it could have just been, it could have just been all gravy. Like I'm a little bit frustrated over the, over the move because it was holding a trend to the upside. I can acknowledge that. That's a trend to the upside. A lot of times you don't want to take it that second time. And what you can do, here's the other thing. What you can do if you still like the short is only take it on the way back in. So if it fails the break and comes back in, then you can work the short. Not on the way in, take it on the way out or to that downside. That's what it's all about. I feel like you go one and done if you're going against the grain and then just be very, very patient on that second move. NVIDIA, so I might, I might get back into Tesla as I say all that. Wow. NVIDIA never got to that 268, so maybe jam. Oh, and someone said Intel broke 32. No, no, it did not. I have a stop. I have a stop underneath. So if it breaks 32, I should be short. If Intel breaks 32 even, it has not happened. So I just want to make sure, because I have a stop in there. Yeah, we are just, uh, by the way, Bank City right money, now. We money, could finally money, spend the money, money for money, something money, at least. Money, um, money, as there money. it is, man. It's a nice little break for us on AMD to the downside. So we'll take advantage of this one, break it to the downside, and see where we go. As AMD right now, we are well in the money here um, of this trade. So it's been a good one here for me. Uh, AMD breaking lower right now. Look where we're short, guys. 53. We told you we're putting on some shares, so we're making some money back late here uh, on the show. So it's a good job uh, to take this short. Let's just see if it continues to work as AMD right now starting to go back down to the downside. So we talked about that short. We got the average in that we wanted to. And there it is right now. It's boom goes a dynamite here on AMD to the downside. So really, really happy uh, with the movement here on Advanced Micro. The damn vices. Uh, nice move now. There it is. Finally, we'll take out some profit. Okay, that was good. Like I said, remember we talked about this, guys? Like, you know, the more you trade, if you're trading higher share sizes, you got to take them out when it starts to go down. Um, and, and we, we take a hit on a Amazon, but here we go making that money back on Advanced Micro as, you know, a very similar hit, right? We took, was it 15 cents or whatever it was there on Amazon? Um, and now it's back in uh, for us here on AMD. So, so far so good, but we cannot forget about earnings, right? Earnings on board uh, now. So yes. Let's, yeah, let's go over to Brendan with, uh, the, unless you want to do something. Yeah, officially back into it as of tomorrow morning, guys. Big week to come uh, next week as well. But uh, make sure you're with us tomorrow. We'll bring you some banks to kick it off. Yeah, and United Healthcare, UNH having another good day. Look, we already talk, we always talk about this. I mean, healthcare actually having a bit of a run there. So I I did get the fill on Intel. It did break that 32. So I I am now short of 98. I should have maybe like 99s. Anyways, trying to trade into the downside, but I wanted it breaking that. Somehow got slipped an extra cent. Usually it's like you get 99s when you get a break on Intel. I got 98s here. Uh, it is past 11 o'clock. Never got Nvidia. Uh, Tesla's still above 185. I know we'll probably be looking at that in the midday. But guess who's back? Did, did we see the earnings? Was there an earnings board? It was, it was, yeah, we got the banks and UNH. Oh, I missed it. Okay. So it was uh, Wells Fargo, City, BlackRock, uh, United Healthcare, and somebody else. Um, but guess who's back? Back again. Um, back from his little bit of vacation to join the professor. It's Maximilian. What is up, beautiful people? Look who's next to me. That's Mad Max. This is the Midday Show. I'm Sharif. What do you have in store for us today? We were talking in your absence about small caps. Tell me you've been trading a small capper today, Max. I have been trading a small capper today. This is the kind of uh, treatment you get over here. You got like full service production coming over here and taking care of you. All right, guys. Well, uh, Limited you're ready? success on the, uh, on the small caps today. Uh, uh, just couldn't find a way into a good trade. Uh, stopped out a bunch of times on that CXAI. Now it's going to 450. Should we look I at your chart? I could get, yeah, let's look at my chart yeah. here. Uh, I'm long in the pre-market. Got to fix these charts up because we're all white now. You're looking but, good, uh, yeah, yeah, they're good. Yeah, long, long, long in the pre-market, thinking this is the explosion through that like two ninety, three dollar kind of thing. Doesn't happen. Stopped out off the open. You know, takes out those levels. I uh, 
get in on the pre-market high break, looking for that like push through three, looking to add on three. I had a 274 stop that never triggered. This was a uh, bad wick there. And then, uh, yeah, three bucks, breaks, instant quad nuke down. Quad nuke. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Max is back, baby, and so, so are these small cappers, sorry. So we try again, then try again. This one actually works out, but then this is the time, I don't know if you saw that GFAI just kind of yeah, man, like yesterday was completely nuts. dropped. And uh, so then I bailed on this one. Let me uh, go uh, to that. Sadly, so. okay. and then tried one more time, but uh, yeah, clearly just by the dips, looks like this teal line is holding again uh, on CXAI go today. Now line. we're going to uh, 450, five bucks. Go to your Really, line. if you look at the daily on this name, I mean, mm -hmm. there is nothing. Nope. 575. I think there was this. There should be a little more data on this, but uh, yeah, this clears 575. You are golden. Gone. Let me look Blue at that. Blue sky daily. setup. Yeah, I love say. that. Oh, I haven't heard that in a while because it's been. Uh, yeah, you know what down. it did? That was a SPAC. So that D SPAC at that time. Okay. Because okay. it was a ten dollar range bound trade. I'm looking at CXAI. Looks like it D SPAC around. I want to say early March. So, all right. Um, I'm gonna get to some of the small cappers that I've been watching. I haven't been trading any of them. I've been um, looking at these big cappers in the market in general. But some of the ones of note that look fantastic and that I've been having on my chart here since the morning. OCEA, this is the five minute chart. Nice bounce off that 450 close yesterday. We touched seven, 699 high. We're bouncing off VWAP. Oh baby, uh, could this be another possible high at daybreak? Looking at that one, AMST, that one was moving early, uh, 540 high, and it's been ripping down since. We're at an inflection point here, being at VWAP. Let's see if we hold. Uh, CRSP, this has been a slow and steady one. Let's go to the five-minute chart on this one. Yeah, look at this. This one took the elevator, not the escalator, baby, up to 5057 off that 4350 close yesterday, seven bucks plus. Uh, liquidity, a little suspect, but stability on this one, no doubt. Look at this. You're not getting a lot of bamboozlement on these uh, these stair step. This is definitely an escalator uh, type of trade. And then the other one, Neil's been talking about this ad nauseum in the morning, WW. Uh, you got a continuation. We've been seeing this one in the news a lot more. High short interest rate, I believe, 650 close. Yesterday, 752 top today. Uh, it's been a stable trade, a lot of VWAP bounces earlier on, but it's been, uh, it's been distancing, I can't talk, distancing itself from uh, VWAP as of late with uh, consecutively higher lows. Uh, maybe a flat top break here through the top at uh, 750. We shall see. Keep your eye on that one. And then uh, last but not least, you heard Max mention this one, GFAI, continuation for multiple days now. Uh, you get that big move up, 28. Uh, we were at that around, uh, you know, early 8 a.m. We were at that 28. The volume starts coming in around 8.30 or so. We move up to 39, and we're right back at those levels. Low day 28, basically in line where we're, we're where we were at, I can't talk today, uh, in the pre-market. Yesterday's close should be noted is at 31 levels. So those are the ones I'm looking at, but the play for me has been uh, some of these market moves here. So let's move these uh, stocks out of the way and get to this meta trade that we're nursing at the moment. So got in initially 218, bounce long. Um, it holds on the double bottom here. So I take that as confirmation. I add through the break of VWAP, bigger size, scalp a little bit out, it comes back down into 218, holds 218, also makes a higher low, and now it's popping back up. I'm looking for a 219 continuation before I take some out. We're at the 80s. Let's see. Uh, what is the NASDAQ telling me? The NASDAQ telling me it, it's at day's highs. So it's printing to the high side. I'm holding this long. Maybe the meta move has somewhat exhausted at this point. We have a, a 220 touch. I mean, could we break 220? Is that going to be a top? For me, that's kind of moot because I'm long 218. So if we even reject off 1950, 19s, I'm going to be taking some out there. So let's see how this meta trade treats us max. Sorry, yeah, the position meta. board, by the way, guys, huh? Sorry. Meta, yeah, I had the uh, similar idea to you, just about a dollar too early. Uh, yeah, I figured we could keep going here and just stopped out below VWAP there. Didn't try it again, but oh. what a nice double bottom there. That's a sick trade that you're uh, well, in there. I, my, 
mentality on large caps, like if they get towards that $10 level, they're probably going to touch it. So I'm thinking what I'm getting along here, okay, let's see the, that continuation and whether it fails or not, I'm a dollar in the money right? regardless. But uh, yeah, just couldn't keep going there, but uh, looking good for that potential 220 touch today. And uh, people talking about Coinbase, I didn't even look at this today, but uh, we're above that 72. So go on the daily chart, Coinbase, buy 60s, sell 70s, still, <laughs> still the uh, strategy on this one. You just get that $10, uh, $10 move with $2 of risk, I guess, Yeah. on the swing. Not much of a day trade there, but usually when it gets down to 60s, I'm looking to buy. When it gets up to 70s, I'm looking to sell. But now short's getting a little squeeze maybe on mm -hmm. Coinbase with uh, Bitcoin over 30K now. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, maybe a move through 73 today on uh -oh. Coinbase would get you back into these like 75s, 79s. I mean, we got all these tops here. Does nobody mm -hmm. care about that uh what was it? An SEC? The Wells, Wells something Notice. Or? Wells Notice. Yeah, Maybe the no Notice of anymore. Death if you're, uh, I don't know, I guess coin. I don't even, that's the first I've ever heard of it. I don't even know what the technical <laughs> implications are. I guess it's more for further disclosure or like a notice that we're going to be investigated. I got to Google it. Um, all right. We're Everything back kind of out. rejecting now, by eh? the way. Yeah, I know. That's what I was just going to mention. We made a new high on the NQ, but then, mm-mm. Not uh, not to be uh, continued at the moment. Back down 40 points. We make a 13, 140 and a quarter and three quarter top. We're da back down to 13, 125. So let's see. Are we gonna zigzag here? Or are we gonna are gonna choose a direction? I mean, let's. I'm in the long, but I'm good to go either way. If we're gonna start tanking off these highs and retrace, I mean, were you a little surprised by this move today? up and to the right for some of these NQ names? 100%, yeah, I was not, uh, was not expecting this. I had written down in my uh, mm -hmm. notes this morning, probably a lot of chop today, probably like looking to fade names. Yeah. Like I wanted meta off 217 short, yeah. and uh, it just blew right through there. I never even tried it. I um, mean, I didn't expect it. Like we know PPI was out, but you yeah, know, but it's not. This hasn't moved the market like this No. Before. Well. It, hasn't it has to been the downside. The move, yeah. It hasn't to the upside like this before. And it seems like we don't care about these numbers anymore, but maybe two good ones in a row mm -hmm. equals market go up. I don't know. There's like this fine line that we walk with some of these numbers and how they're going to react, you know? But hey, whatever, we'll take it, uh, especially if you're along some of these uh, tech names. Uh, it's been good for tech. I think it's been good for tech for a little while. So let's keep an eye out. Um, now, what is a strong? Let's talk about some of these big cappers here. We didn't talk about that. We talked about the small cappers. Let's look into the big cappers here. We talked about Meta already, ad nauseum. So let's talk about Amazon. Uh, this is decent, up 3%. We saw a lot of weakness in this name lately. Uh, Andy Jassy coming out uh, and, you know, making... Uh, an appearance today on CNBC, also making, uh, or sorry, releasing that letter to um, employees and basically making the case for cost cutting here and uh, doubling down on some of the closures and cutbacks that they're going to continue to do. He's reviewing all sectors and, you know, at the same time, he's going to continue to invest in what he thinks is going to get him the best bang for his buck. They, uh, they talked about their competition to uh, Starlink, which is called Kiefer. And, you know, they're going to expand with that. They see potential in that. You saw Brendo show you Starlink's whole thing there where, you know, the whole satellite system is graphed uh, using uh, a space view of the globe. Look fantastic. Gives you, uh, you know, a visual representation of what it is on mass. So, uh, yeah, Amazon, great day. 101 high, we get a rejection off 199. It's been stair-stepping up. The retracement got bought up aggressively with a newer high being formed. So it looks fantastic. But I, I, again, you know, I don't want to take these secularly. Let's see if we can get continuity with, with it and the NQ, because that's what I'll be looking at here. But although Amazon does seem to be quite strong, I want to say, you know, most of these big cappers right now, for the exception of Google and Meta, look quite strong. I'm seeing strength in Apple. I'm seeing strength with Microsoft. We're at highs on Apple. We're at highs on Microsoft. Likewise with Tesla. But uh, Google, a little laid back. Meta, definitely a little laid back at this moment. So we'll have to consider what we're going to take long here, Max. Uh, I don't know how you feel about all that. 
Yeah, I'm kind of just scanning, looking. I'm not sure uh, what I want to touch right now. Amazon, I have 101 as a level, but 101.30 as like the key level on Amazon, 101.50 kind of. So yep. I don't know if I wanted to necessarily get short just in front of 101. I would have right. wanted to see it kind of like fail break. But uh, yeah, rejecting kind of 101 for now, but uh, Amazon just up and to the right. Baby. Can't really count this one out today until we're breaking back through 100 probably. I really liked it here when it was breaking out, but that it just went, break up, it went like 30 cents and didn't pull back and then what? just kind of went up and yeah. I, didn't, uh, I couldn't get long there. But yeah, Amazon really strong, probably one to get a dip on at some point today, maybe, I don't know, into the 40s if it happens or maybe if it starts holding 101, but it's near teal, baby. It's near the teal. It's, it's not really teal. respecting the teal that well. I guess yeah. off the open it did. A little you bit. You get long right there, yeah. get a dip into the 60s. That would have been a money trade that mm -hmm. went over a dollar. Uh, but yeah, Amazon, I'm going to have my eye on it. Not quite sure what I want to do with it. Feeling a little rusty today. So, hey, man, that's uh, normal, bro. You know, yeah. Not, uh, totally not trying to jump normal. into too much today. Totally normal. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about where you were and what you were doing? Because a lot of people were like, where's Max? Where's Mr. Beast? <laughs> and they, they want to know what you're up to. I was uh, busy getting smoked by the finest golf courses in the world. Okay. Um, <laughs> in, uh, in Charleston. Uh, yeah, beautiful city, Charleston. So you were, I didn't really you were at the Masters? No, no. Oh, no. Okay, okay. That no, we were in uh, just Charleston, South Carolina. Mm. Eating, drinking. I love it. Beaching. Some of the best. Not people. really beaching. And uh, yeah, we played like golf three days in a row. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, I went to uh, this Kiwa Island course, which was designed to be like one of the hardest golf courses okay. ever made. And I haven't picked up a golf club since October. So oh. uh, it didn't go particularly well. But you enjoy yourself? But it was a beautiful, serene experience That's there. That's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, what a, what a design. Yeah, eh? Like, ridiculous. It's, it's on a beach or it's mainland? It's like right along the ocean. Okay. So like some of the holes go down along the ocean, so okay. the holes come back That's on awesome. the other side. Oh, yeah, goodness. and it's like in a marsh, kind of low country, whatever yeah, they yeah, call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. it. They just kind of placed a golf course in a place that grass doesn't <laughs> grow. It but was it was, crazy. it's like a it's, marshland. Yeah, like Otherwise, a marshland and, and then dunes and then land. Okay. Uh, whatever that ocean is. Pacific, I don't know. The Atlantic, dude. Atlantic? Yeah, that's yeah. the Atlantic. Oh, come on. Wow, yeah, <laughs> I'm tired, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, well, we're gonna, let's, let's look here, cause Meta's doing this dance, bro. Uh, I'm not even gonna talk about this trade because it's just, it's in a consolidation mode. So I'll tell you where my out is. My stop on this trade is the break of 217.70. Uh, that would be a new low uh, for this area. So for breaks at 217.70, that's where I'm out of this trade. I've got a profit taker sitting at 218.80s, high 80s, low 90s, somewhere in around there. So if triggers there, we'll, and we'll, I'll have a notification that we may be testing 219, but ultimately I wanna see that 219.77 break. But it's in consolidation mode right now, um, holding VWAP. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll let that one go and we'll look for something different here that can occupy our attention. Um, CXAI, oh baby, this one continues to go. Four is a distant memory on this one, CXA, is that NQ? Yes, yeah. it is, okay. So now we are looking four and two thirds right in the face and we just broke it. Uh, 468 now, the high of day on uh, CXAI. There we go, there right we into go. the 70s, baby. Now into the quarter dollar, uh, <sighs> three quarter dollar. Yeah, I know, I know, take over, have a look. I don't know, man. What yeah, a whiff. Going. What a whiff. How many times did I long this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times I was long down when on the it name. Wants to go, it's going to go. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's going for that five bucks. So Jeez. 570 would probably be that uh, kind of like real, like halt up, breakout kind of maybe this goes to 30 bucks kind of thing. But uh, yeah. Is a, is a short off long. five viable here or is it too risky? Try it. Try yeah. it with like with the tight wrist. pennies. Yeah. Pain, not yeah. even. No way. Because like you're gonna get slipped 30 pennies on the way out if this <laughs> thing wants to like do What's that like the, snap like, halt up. On this? Yeah. Because if this turns into GFAI, then you know 40 bucks is the target, right? So I think it's an eight million share float. Brendo, I think Brendo was telling me this morning my system was off. Let's look at uh, let's look at 
um, trade ideas. CXAI, see what they got. Flow, 8.97 billion, okay. Billion? Yeah. I got 1.87 million on the flow. Yeah, this one's telling me 8.97 billion. No, I'm pretty sure that's accurate. Super irrelevant short float, according to trade ideas, 0. Yeah. 0.63. So not sure, you know, if you're gonna get that sort of parabolic short squeeze, but definitely you have the short float working to your advantage on this one. CXA. Also, for what it's worth, the shorts were like five cents a share this morning. Jeez. So I didn't buy them. They were like super expensive. I didn't really, I mean, I did see this move coming, but uh, I what don't know, in the pre-market, it wasn't, it wasn't really showing that it wanted to do anything crazy, so I didn't bother paying for shorts, but maybe five cents per share is reasonable, probably more expensive now that it's up at $5. Uh, maybe the $5 break is the play, but those have mm -hmm. not been working very well recently. So. I don't know. I guess just buy the teal. Look, you get that, you get that teal right there. Once again, the teal, buy the, the teal. teal. Does not lie, bro. Buy the teal. The teal knows all. Um, <laughs> the Did we just clutch. speak that into existence? Maybe I know, like, no, but the teal's been clutch. Whatever, been the clutch. teal is a 20 EMA, and if anybody's wondering. Uh, on Max's chart, on mine, you're gonna see the red is the 50 EMA, and the blue is the 200 EMA. Um, and usually if there's a horizontal trend line, that is yesterday's close. I almost always don't put any other horizontal trend lines on my intraday charts. Um, so right there for GFAI. Shout out to Kevin for letting me know GFAI is bouncing. In fact, it found a bit of a bottom there right at 28 because 28 exactly is the low day. We talked about this one earlier. That's where the uh, pre-market action was in and around that 28, 27 area. It's getting bought up. Now it's green on the day again, up a percentage and a half, just breaking through yesterday's close, which was around 31. We're now pumping up to 31.60s. It's a good move here, uh, but you know what? The, it's, it's still a downtrend, but you're seeing a, a lot more consecutive five-minute candles that are green than you have on any of these two retracements to the downside. You only had a couple, even though they were quite aggressive uh, in, their, in their retracement to the high side. Like, look at this, 29.50 pops all the way up to 32.66. So uh, an aggressive retracement. But in terms of consistency here, um, this one looks to be the better one. Now, we are at an inflection point because you got to say, we are at yesterday's close, which is a key area of resistance, at least on in my interpretation of things. So I'm gonna be looking to see how this acts. Now, obviously it's very tough to trade, very spready, you know, obviously very short float and uh, small float, excuse me. And uh, yeah, really whipsaw. We dabbled with this one yesterday, but it was super small shareage and then didn't really touch it again. Haven't been really focusing on these small caps. It's been, been more big caps for me, even though it's been small cap season, Max. I got to get my wits yeah, about me. Small cap season is on, man. You got to. I know, uh, bro. You got to get involved. This is your this is your bread and butter. I feel like I feel like <laughs> I'm like losing my touch. I suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we'll have to focus on these. Our CXAI just made an ugly reversal candle on my five minute chart. Uh, that's a topping tail candle if I've ever seen one. Let it close though on this one. It's got 50 seconds and this is gonna close. So if it closes like this, the short may be in possibly for this. Let's see, wait for a new low. So what I would, if you're gonna take this type of trade, obviously take it with small size because you're against the trend. Second of all, wait for the first five minute candle to make a new low. In this case, it would be below the K 445. So I'd take a 440 break possibly here. But it looks, looks like it's still getting bought up, but that's not oh. the kind. OCEA. Go for it. Taking out the high. This one has Ooh. halted before. OCEA. Nasdaq. 727 top. Kind of breaks that seven. I was kind of looking at that seven break, but again, breakouts haven't been working. And uh, yeah, it gets to like, I don't know if this is real. It says 725 high on my uh, time of sale or on my level two here. Uh, yeah, trying to go. This one went from $7 to $27 not too long ago. I might have been involved in that. And uh, that was a huge, huge winner. It halted up like 10 times. Maybe we can do it again. Volume not looking like we can today. Maybe this is the rejection of that uh, high of day on OCEA. Back down to, uh, you know, five bucks. Let's see. If OCEA can take out that 706. Let me check on my other platform if that's legit. But, uh, what is the real high on OCEA here? It is 727. So it did get to 727 apparently. Got to take that out. There we go. Take that out and then uh, see where this one can go. Not oh, going baby. to be buying the highs on this one today. 
unless it can show me something, maybe like a $10 break, I don't know. Uh, yeah, let's, we need to see some halts up. We haven't really been seeing anything halt up today yet, so can't really buy the highs until things are halting up, in my opinion. I'm waiting for the break of 440 on CX, CXAI for possible short here. And I'm gonna try it with small size and see if we get continuation. It's just against the trend, so obviously it has to be with small size. Uh, but you're seeing that kind of uh, move on OCEA, even though on CXAI, it's been more stair-steppy than elevatory. You know what I mean? And so that's why I'm waiting for confirmation, and then if we get a, a flush to the downside, I'll add to it. Otherwise, you know, it's just it's really not worth it. Um, keeping an eye <coughs> currently still on the NQ, we're still hovering obviously much nearer days highs and days low, but we're in a consolidation zone between, I wanna say, the top of 13,140 and the low area of 13,100, about a 40 point range that we've been in uh, since about 10.30 this morning. So going on the better part of an hour now, um, we'll have to wait uh, whether we break to the high side or the downside, that will dictate um, a lot of the trends or that will dictate the trend on a lot of these big tech names. Uh, I'm talking about the ones that I look at, which are Meta, Microsoft, Google, Tesla, Apple, and Amazon. So that's what I'm keeping my eye on. I'm in this Meta long, currently a little bit out of the money, about 15 pennies out of the money, but I've got my stop set below 17.70. So if it breaks there, that'll be a new low, and I may start looking uh, possibly for a double top here on either the ES or the NQ. If I'm trading some of these big cappers, I'll definitely be looking more on the NQ, but Maybe, maybe a little bit of a double top brewing, but not quite, not quite. So, uh, still long bias max, but you know, gonna sit on my hands for now until really something uh, presents itself. Yeah, I'm just waiting to buy the dip on something like an Amazon or yeah. a uh, Tesla. Not really looking to buy the dip on that one's been weak recently. CXAI, I would like to see this break <laughs> back through 450 and then kind of instant rebid, and then I will get in there for that like push through five dollars with you know, maybe 10 cents risk, really not trying to get uh, smoked again on this one, but I think that's kind of what it's been displaying today, is like it breaks this high, goes up, comes back down, breaks it again, and then like just wicks and starts to go back up. So let's see if we can break 450 here and then instantly come back up and then I will be long CXAI. Amazon kind of coming into my prices, but not there yet. I like it kind of in this, you know, 140 to 120 range. Not necessarily at 50s, though, like, looking kind of like a decent dip buy right now. I just don't want to buy the dip too early when we're up so much on some of these names. I mean, we're only yeah. 40 cents off the high And we're on in Amazon. a range, too, so. Yeah. Like, look at your, look at the top. It's so rangy. Look at that. Yeah, look I at mean, the flip. Yeah, <laughs> meta. I mean, super meta, rangy. Meta, clearly 218 is the level right mm -hmm. now. So if we take For out now. those 75s or whatever, maybe that's, maybe that's over. But we just need continuation. Know, good dip by looking. Look at meta right now. I that's just don't want to play the, the ranges. In. They're just not my kind of game. You know, yeah. I'd rather buy the bot, like hold, hold, hold yeah. until a decisive trend change. Otherwise, yeah. you know. Yeah, so like uh, somewhere in here, like the 50s, 80s, maybe the 219, if it breaks 219 and doesn't kind of wick it and just die, maybe that's where, you know, Meta is back on. But uh, CXAI did oh, not wow. give me did the dip trade. That. So, yeah, maybe you should have just bought 50s. Yeah, forget well, that's the, what it uh, is. Forget the wick, just buy 50s, I guess. But uh, just hard to pay up on this one when, you know, it just keeps touching every price. It just goes up, comes back down, stops everybody out, goes back up. So I was looking for everybody to get stopped out in here and then get back in on the way back up instead of trying to predict what's going to happen by uh, getting in there at 450. But clearly that was the play for now. Oof. Uh, trying to take out those highs. $5 probably incoming on this name. Does it do a nasty mm. candle off oh, the $5 baby. or does it just halt up? Here we go. I I've mean, been kind of waiting for the halt up all day on this name. Yeah, I figured we, really we could just it. go like directly into a halt off one of these breakouts. The 350 felt like it could do it for a second and then just died. Small cap is a 310 back, looked like it was going to do it and died. Jeez. It's five dollars the one where it just halts up at like five. Are we going to get a Quaduk here, bro? Are we going to get know. here? We come. I'm not, here comes I'm not five, counting man. his name out. No, no, neither am I. What? I'm At a different time, this. I would be taking I'm this five break this. right now with size, looking for a move to six. But mm -hmm. 
It hasn't shown it to me yet, although I have not been watching over the past three days whether small cap breakouts have oh, they been have working been, or not. They've been, there's been great continuation. Like, come yeah. to my chart. I mean, this is why I want to say there's a bit of... Um, I talked about this a little bit a couple of weeks ago. If you're weaning yourself off like a certain time frame, there are certain things visually that are represented in, a, in like a certain visual way on the one minute that you you will not see it that way on the five minute. And here's what I want to talk about. Like look at these opportunities on the three minutes to pull back and then you, the first three minute candle to make a new high, which would have been entry here and then you get continuation. Now, you don't see that on the, uh, on the five minute chart. In fact, there's a bit of bamboozlement because you, you start seeing these reversal candles and um, what look like to be topping tail candles while in reality they're just retracements and good entry areas and that they would have been better represented on the three minute chart and so as I try to use wider time frames for some of these big cappers I got to remind myself that uh, the, the micro time frame is probably more appropriate for these small cappers I'm talking about three and one and then obviously having the five and you I always have another one there that I can kind of flip five, 15, half day, whatever you want, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, that's kind of how I play that. Here comes five again though, Max. Here um, it comes, yeah, five, aggressive there, now. There's some size sitting at five there, not a little bit I of mean, size. No here we go, that's baby, nothing. here we go. Notionally, it's nothing exactly, but it's what you don't see, yeah. especially with these small cappers, a lot of iceberg orders. You get the first rejection some, yeah, right there. Yeah, some reserve uh, sellers on the offer To be there. expected, yeah. to be expected, but you get a, you're probably gonna have another test two or three uh, up here at five, unless we really chwadunk all these levels, and doesn't look like we are now. Here we go again, Max. Some size there. Bucks. It gets eaten up, baby. Here we go. We're gonna probably test tens real soon. Um, here we, yeah, tape. Tape slowing right. down a little bit here to the downside. All right, let's see if we go back up. Do we get Not that test? Great. This is a bear trap. Here we go. Here we go. Back into the seventies. We go. Oh my goodness. I don't know why this is. I think up uh, the scenario now, if they take out five ten like right away, then this halts. I'm not going to touch it anymore. I don't like what this is doing on the tape. It's not uh, not doing that breakout that I like to see. WW for what it's worth is Ooh, breaking the high as it is. well. Uh, this one WWNQ. So yeah, 775 high. This one has room to go. I had 750 as a level on my other platform from, I don't know, previous uh, squeeze day, I guess. Uh, 790 would be my next stop for this one. So WW starting to move, starting to take out those highs. Still kind of feeling light on volume right now, strangely, but uh, yeah, this one going. And look, we're back above five already on CXAI, so. That 510, that 510 breakout, do I want it? Do I want it? Do I want it? Here I don't we go. Know. Yeah, well, we, I mean, where'd you say this? You you said the daily candle went up to what? Okay, so pre, post back 1350. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's post back. So that's the level we have to look at there. I mean, there's plenty of room. And then you've essentially got a good level, I'd say, at seven. There's a lot, there's a couple of wicks at seven that present themselves another level at eight. So essentially every, uh, every whole dollar, except I don't see much at six, to be fair. So it looks like seven and eight from the previous price action. Doesn't mean you won't encounter psychological resistance at the whole dollar level, so. Yeah, there we go, yeah. man. Holy, OCEA, GFAI, WW. Uh, it's OCEA at, rejected the top, right? And back, yeah. uh, and, but I see a couple of uh, green five minute candles posting here. Yeah, so still it, holding. Yeah. So if this one was gonna die, it would be below $6 right now. Right. It hasn't fully died yet. Not so yet. this one, maybe they're buying the dips, trying to push it back up, trying to, uh, you know, <coughs> do what they wanna do with the short sellers and uh, squeeze this thing back up above that $7 level into like 10. This one can really, really squeeze if it decides to go. So uh, yeah, we'll be we'll have our eyes on this one right now, kind of dead, but takes out that high again. This is an old dog back in like the uh, in the uh, small cap game. A lot of a, yeah, a lot of us know this one from back when, right? Like OCA. Yeah, it's not a new name for us. All right, um, where are we at here? We're real close to high day on the ES. Now there's been a little bit of divergence between the ES and the Q. There was earlier. Now there seems to be a bit more confluence between the two. Here, let's bring them in. There we go. There was a way to kind of just uh, put these in the corner, but because I have multiple screen, it's a little bit harder. So we'll just center them. Yeah, we're we're at both both uh, both futures contracts. We're near day highs on. Um, 
but we're not seeing much in the way of breakout kind of action, unless you were Tesla. Tesla just bounced off 185, sorry, 184.75, and now it's back up to 186.17. So Tesla making a good relative move here um, at a time where I think some of these other big cappers are a bit asleep. Um, I'm talking about my meta trade, which is doing nothing, still holding 218. But Max, CXAI is back up to your 510 level again. Are you looking at this? Yeah, I'm looking not, still not liking what I'm seeing. Like, I don't know how to get into this name. You just got to buy a dip and yeah. then hope it doesn't keep dipping, which is not really a strategy that I like to use. I want to see it break a key level and then instantly rebid back above it. If it broke five, 450 here, that's how I would have got long. Right now, I mean, you're paying all the way up here. Where are you risking down to? 450 probably. Not going to do that on a small cap, on a $5 stock. Risk 10%. That'd be no. crazy. So I uh, just kind of kind of got to wait. Wait for a new level to set up on this one. Um, and, yeah, hopefully uh, for the sake of the longs, we get that $10 today. But uh, this one's still holding the teal for now. Maybe a 50-period retracement on this one could be good. Yeah, nothing for me yet on this. INPX, 50 cent stock, is going. Somebody in the chat said that INPX owns CXAI. I can't confirm that, but uh, if that's the case, I mean, it would make sense if you look at this chart, just straight to the upside. Um, this one, 14 mil float. So $7 million market cap on this one. And uh, yeah, just just going to the upside, only six mil in volume today. So if this one picks up, wants to break that 50 cent level, that's key, key, key psychological mm -hmm. resistance. You know, maybe we see a dollar today on this one. I don't know. Oh let's baby. See some, let's see some excitement. I like it, I like it. This guy's getting pumped up. <laughs> All right. Um, another big mover that we did not talk about, and I don't know if the guy, with respect to a headline on our friend Netflix, but one must think, that it's in sympathy to the Warner Brothers, uh, or uh, sorry, the um, Discovery Warner deal with merging uh, HBO Max and Discovery Plus together, uh, packaging it called Max. I don't know, I mean, it's a competitor maybe now that we know exactly what the deal is. Netflix is bouncing up because people maybe were underwhelmed by it, I don't know. In any event, um, it's an obvious competitor for Netflix. They, uh, they're, they're set to have a deeper uh, catalog of like, you know, older movies, uh, more kind of like studio Hollywood style movies, while Netflix set to have the edge, you know, on the more cutting edge and uh, trending uh, producers and directors and stuff like that, have the better contacts, current contacts as opposed to historical. So. I don't know, Netflix up four and a quarter percent. I haven't been, I held, actually I wanna say uh, WBD in anticipation f with the merger or uh, the divestment of HBO Max by AT&T. I held that last year in 2021 and did bupkis. I broke even on it. So I haven't really been interested in the stock since, but now we have, um, we have the announcement and I was just telling you about that because your name is Max and I found that <laughs> to be uh, interesting, so. I like the 350 level Max on for that Max, Netflix. says John Sproul. What? <laughs> I like the 350 on Netflix. Okay. Uh, whenever it gets there, that I'll be involved in that break. Seems like a big level yeah. there. Did we, we break there? We have a halt right now. Recent? That's about to halt, reopen. Yeah, IDAI. There it is. Just open. Mm -hmm. Kind of holding that halt price right now. Oh, baby. This one ran yesterday. High mm -hmm. of day yesterday was, I think, 415. And we just cleared that, and now we are running. So... IDAI, maybe the small cap of the day, could have punched in there. They're back, At Max. that 420. They're back. Could have punched 420. <laughs> See if this one can halt again. The pre-market high on this one is 450, I believe. Uh, hard to tell, but uh, yeah, it went to like 475 after hours yesterday. So that 475 Jeez. break could be the one that sends us to the moon on this one. Let's take a look at the daily chart. If it'll load for me, come on. Let's go daily. Kind of got nothing recently. Oh, so there it is. Target $8. $8 from the last time this thing got running. Wow. Uh, we got, you know, $5.50 kind of in there. $5 would be a key le psychological level. So, yeah, if this thing starts running, breaks 5 bucks. maybe that's the long to have. $5 break on this one. I'll see what it looks like when we get up there. 
But yeah, for now, this one's running, holding the halt price. If it goes below the halt price, I would say, you know, maybe the short is in, maybe $4, $3.99 short. Probably don't have free shorts on this one. Probably not, yeah. But uh, yeah, it hasn't really done enough volume right now to short it. No. Because look at this spread, five cents. Yeah. I don't like getting into shorts when For the spread is huge because no. they can just shoot up a dollar. Absolutely. On you. Yeah. Uh, a, a key level, guys, uh, on OCE, I just wanted to announce that because we just did a VWAP dip and it's getting bought up immediately. So I wanted to interrupt Max, but I know that was a halter. So, you know, it's important to get to that. But look at this dip buy here, you know, possibly a good entry off 43. If you really got bottom wick there, you got 37 now popping up back into 60 or 59, whatever. Uh, look for a new high. There we go into 65. So the VWAP dip coming there. If you if you were sitting there with some size edge, I mean, you're, you're nice. Um, now, depending on what kind of fill you could have gotten there, I don't know what the liquidity was like. I wasn't looking at the tape or the book, but holding for now, it's respected VWAP for the most part. Have a look here. Uh, you don't get any candle really closing decidedly below VWAP. You get the wicks, but they're immediately bought, bought back up. I'm looking at the five minute chart here. You have the ugly uh, reversal topping tail candle, uh, but then you have the hold of VWAP. So we'll see, it's still, still above VWAP, it's still bullish on the dates up. 46 some odd percent so uh, keep an eye on OCEA but uh, Sharif small cap season is on man bro are we halted up again halted up again I tried to punch 430 and I couldn't oh get the God. fill and then it shoots up into another halt kind of rejecting that halt price we'll see if it can get back up there and uh, push that halt price maybe we break the band and go up to like that five dollars but IDAI on the move breaking through all of the highs I the Highest price that I can see on this chart is 484, and that's Netflix, the exact halt yeah. price. So this thing cracks that. We are off oh to the God. races on IDAI. Missed another one. Sadly, I'm, I'm slow today. I'm not, oh, uh, likewise, I don't man. Have it. I don't yeah. have it today. <clears throat> I'm not on the ball, man. I kind of didn't expect what was going on, but I should be awake and ready to go. Man, Netflix is moving up, moving on up, man. It keeps printing high of day, high of day, one new high of day after the other. 349, three, sorry, excuse me, 345, 60 now high of day. Where are we now? Four and a third percent up on the day. Good move for Netflix. We'll look for maybe a dip down. I don't know. Where is it? Where is it respecting? Maybe the 50 period, maybe a dip down into 30, 344, 50, 344 and a quarter. I don't want to get in at these uh, these levels, but it's it may not give me that opportunity. So we'll keep looking out for different trades. Not going to get into anything as of yet. Still in this um, meta trade, exactly break even at this yeah. point. Oh, four pennies in the money, irrelevant. Dan Emmons says U.S. four-week bill auction actual 4.03 forecast. The previous there's no forecast, but the previous was point uh, four point four four zero. Okay, thanks for that, Dan. What else is everybody up to talking? Uh, are the bulls back? Asks Q Daddy eight. 844. Well, it depends who you're asking and it depends what chart you're looking at. If you're looking at the NQ and the ES. We're only and, halfway to yesterday's high. No, I mean, so, are the bulls back? I don't know. I, like I was looking at more high. macro level than micro, I think. I was, I was yeah, going to say, fair, like, on fair. the year, we're moving, we're moving, moving. Yeah, on the year, we're up. Yeah. But uh, in yeah. micro, like, what, we got to get over 13,220 kind we're of. We're 0.69 up on the ES, and we're 1.4 up on the NQ. I'll say we're okay. Yeah, we're doing That's all right. Bad. We're doing all right. We yeah. sold off the whole move yesterday, mm -hmm. so let's see if we can keep this move Keep this move today. ES day high, baby. Yeah, ES 41.48. 41, yeah, Mr. Beast. Yes, the Mr. Beast <laughs> still coming in hot and heavy. The comments coming in. Uh, D-Loaf, Crude, uh, Hwadunk. Can range long here. P uh, Palantir looking to break high of day. Can Palantir. Bum one. Okay, let's see. Um, let's have a look at crude first and foremost. Let's go to, to the futures and bring in the oh, oops, the uh, CL continuous contract. Yes, that is a Hwadunk. That does fall within the definition of such term. Uh, you get kind of a double top, maybe even triple here on the five minute, eighty three forty. Uh, you get a, a nice V-shaped Christmas tree recovery, but then you get a reversal candle brewing here at the moment. I'm not looking at the macro picture for uh, crude on the day. It is down technically 0.6%. It looks like the, the contract closed 
at 83.26. We're at 82.78. So yesterday's high, it looks like we got up to 83.53. So crude still within a range, not much for me on that. Uh, I haven't had a look at the underlying equities uh, to see how the equities have been doing on energy today. I'll have a, a quick look here. I'm seeing uh, CNQ up 2.18%. I'm not seeing anything stand out. Devin's up one and a quarter percent. Oxy's done nothing. It's up 0.09. So uh, I'll keep my focus, I guess, on the tech names for the moment. I'll leave energy to be. Uh, but yeah, man, we're uh, we're still we're still doing okay here on the NQ. We just printed a new high. We just printed a new high on the ES as well. But this doggone meta trade is just you know it's I think it's met its uh, I think it's had its day. <laughs> You know what I mean? At 218, we're holding 218 as a bottom, but we're constantly below VO up. We're constantly selling off the pops uh, to the downside. So I want a 219 test to be happier, but I'm not getting it. I'm not out of the money either, but just a uh, waste of time. A waste of time here. I'm long Amazon now on this uh, 101 break. Got okay. filled 99 somehow, but uh, we'll take that. And uh, let's see if this one can get to that 101.30, if it takes that out. Then we look on the 30-minute chart Netflix here. Netflix is moving again. Netflix. Like 80s and then 102-ish would be the next target. Uh, but if the NASDAQ wants to go, Amazon's the strongest name right now, in my opinion. Has good news. Google also ripping. So, yeah, I'll give this a, like it. 20 cents probably. Maybe add a little bit in front of the uh, teal line, wherever that is. Yeah, baby. And, uh, yeah, see you. See if Amazon can get going, get some of these uh, afternoon-ish longs started on the NQ. See if we can t continue. I mean, we got like 100 points up to that 13,250. That's the uh, recent high. So right. if NQ wants to run, I would like to be long something. Amazon's the name that I would like to be long. Uh, I like IDAI it. did reject that uh, halt price and then just kind of fails. So I thought it was going to just shoot up and break that price and then go higher and higher, but now we're still holding the original halt pr yep. price. Uh, we IDAI. bounced off it, exactly, actually. Yeah, that's kind of what I want to see. The spread is gross and, on this And the teal though. line comes in clutch again. <laughs> teal. <laughs> Look at that. You wouldn't think that the teal line would mean anything <laughs> for a uh, halter, but apparently. You, you guys know that we're joking when we're saying yeah. this, right? Like, it's obviously, look, it's obviously a respectable line. That's why he's using it. But we're kind of trying to make this mythical thing out of it. Like, <laughs> don't make too much into it. It's more need to make tongue some shirts. in cheek. Yeah. Okay. Trust the teals. Triple T. Yeah. We're not actually. But, uh, yeah, no. Holds at 425. Holds 420. So, yeah, kind of gave me the price that I wanted before. And now maybe starting to make the move back up. But, I mean, the spread is really gross on this one. And the way that it's crushing, yeah. it's crushing bids is... Bits just to, get eaten uh, up. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I hear, not I sure hear on that. this guy. Not sure. Haven't found the small cap long for the afternoon yet. But we await such a thing. If this breaks five, that's probably uh, it's probably what you want to see. Okay. Um, seeing Timothy Church, Mara. Yeah. All right. Let's have a look at our friend Mara. It's been a minute. Uh, obviously, crypto. <coughs> obviously, crypto is. Um, up, um, ETH making a lot of the news. Give me a second here. Let's pop this up. Yeah, so this is the daily. Let's flip that into the, let's go to the five. Yeah, so it's been nice up into the right move today for Meta. Let's go to the more micro, I mean for Mara. Let's look at the more micro. So we're getting nice balances off the 50 period. We're currently at that 50 period. So this might be an interesting entry here now i don't know i haven't been watching this i've been seeing how it's been trading on the day it's up 15 percent that's no joke btbt also up 16 percent riot eh, the laggard if i can call a 10 percent a day a laggard because <laughs> the other guys are just up so big coin uh, you know obviously a bigger name and therefore unlikely to be up as high as up five and uh almost five and three quarter percent, six percent almost on coin. So uh, great day for crypto. Uh, with respect to uh, Mara though, this 
is an interesting area here if you're looking for a long. Uh, if you were to enter here, I'm not gonna enter here, but if you were to enter here where I would get out, where I would give my risk would be that 1130, 11 and a quarter area, that would be a new low. Um, so have a look there, see if, you, uh, if that kind of works with uh, your risk management uh, technique. INPX did that uh, 50 cent break. So INPX, you get two cents on the 50 break. That's pretty nice. I don't know if this wick was real. I would have to check that. But uh, yeah, that 50 to like 52.50. I know it doesn't sound like much, but on a uh, on a 50 cent name, you know, two cents is not so bad. And now uh, we're taking out 53. So INPX really starting to uh, pick up. Volume feels like it's picking up on this one. Seeing that green on the tape. Maybe this is the small cap. Maybe all of the small caps are just gonna go. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can have a little fun this afternoon. But yeah, this one, uh, five cents. So that's like almost a 10% return on the 50 break there. Pretty money. And if you trusted the teal, you know, you're almost hey. 10 cents in the money now. <laughs> Trust the teal, baby. Don't, yeah. don't you deny that teal. Okay, Meta finally making a move as the NQ is also making a move. Uh, oh, there you go, back Meta. up into near high of day, 13, 140 and three quarters. We're at 13, I think 136 or 137. So let's see if this continues to trend to the high side. We just saw Amazon print higher highs, 10101. That was a mouthful, eh? Yeah. 10101, that's a high of day. Um, Google also near -er high of days, 106.79 is where we're at, 107.08 is high a day, Tesla as well, 186.17 high a day, we're at 185.50-ish. So let's see if we get continuation. Uh, I don't have any other trades other than the one that I'm currently in, having a look to see what else is popping off here. Uh, you know, I'm already in one big tech name, so it'll have to be something uh, other than that. Give me some ideas in the chat, guys. Uh, tag me with some interesting names to have a look at here. If uh, maybe there's some small cap crappers that haven't shown up INPX on my radar. INPX is looking yet. like the one. AM, say again? INPX. INPX. Just, uh, newer highs, newer highs on this one. Um, is that 55 now? 56? 57? So INPX starting to go. Shame I didn't take okay. this long instead of that Amazon long, but Amazon's still looking okay. But uh, yeah, 58 now. Oh, this baby. One, What's the criteria oh, for my, like a stock under a like, dollar to halt up? not showing up on my yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 58 I cents. Filtered. <laughs> this one is going off that 40 break. Oh, I mean, baby. never looks back. Wow, this one is pretty, pretty chart on this guy. I, uh, I mean, how much further does it go? Anything under a dollar, one dollar is the target for me. So uh, yeah, maybe this breaks a dollar today. We got a decent sized bid at 57 there. So people trying to bid this one up, Nothing really on the yeah. offer. I don't know. What do these? Is it like ten percent to halt up on these? I ones? have no idea. I don't if know it's what the sub one dollar. Yeah, if it's sub 10, a dollar. If it's still ten percent or not. Twenty. Uh, I I don't touch these uh, sub one dollar. Rarely, rarely. Um, someone's saying a micron making a move. It's uh, it just made high day through sixty three, retracing though back into sixty two and three quarters. Let's have a look at MU. Uh, it's not up uh, much. No, let me just pull it up here. Eek. Put free floating window, there we go. So yeah, nice bottom there, nice double bottom at 61, and now popping back up into 63. That is a key level from yesterday. Let's have a look at that. That was an interesting area that we, we found a hard time breaking through. It was yesterday's VWAP where we rejected off 63 multiple times. So that level coming in again on Micron where we're rejecting it, at least 30 pennies downside for the moment. Do we find support? at this uh, level right here, the range between that 62.50 to about 62, you know, 25, 20 area. That's uh, the area of support. You, If you're looking long, you don't want it breaking through this area over here. It should hold up and then maybe test 63 again. But interesting move here uh, for MU. Thanks for that. Nice double bottom continuation up. Goes green on the day. Up a percentage and a quarter, but you saw the guys this morning, they were showing you that the chips were relatively weak. Um, and it was some of these uh, more, you know, communication type names. I'm talking about the metas and, and some of the uh, Googles, et cetera, 
that were making the move. But Emetta, man, holy range, holy range. Can you say range? This is the definition <laughs> of range right now, Emetta. <laughs> Um, we're moving down on the ES, we're moving down on the NQ as well. We're looking to test bottoms, look for 13,100 on the NQ as the bottom end of the range that we've been in. Look for a, you know, a 4140, 4138-ish bottom on the range on the ES. But ideally, you want to continue to see higher lows here um, to kind of keep the trend in tower the the uh, trade intact for the long yeah I'm uh, adding to Amazon here at the 50 period in front of 80s I think this one has the juice to go through 101 today I you know 101 is not really the level for me 101 50 ish is the level so looking for continuation on this one I think I got one more add on in me on this name in front of uh, I don't know 65s we'll see how it acts down there but uh, yeah, Amazon kind of pulling back, everything pulling back. NASDAQ, you know, it's kind of stuck in like a 30-point range right now. So not concerned about anything yet. Looking for that 101 break. I think I would add if it broke 101 again. Um, that, what is it, INPX got to 60 cents. 59. Joe. 20% move off the 50 break. That was beautiful. Uh, beautiful. Maybe we'll uh, maybe I'll be uh, taking the one dollar uh, break on this one today. That would be something. Um, volume still not even there. Like the the ones that are under a dollar can get to 300 million volume, no problem. This one's only at 13. So people start to step into this, you know. Oh baby. 52 week highs of. Uh, I like it. Someone said in the chat, 52 week high is 19 something. So maybe that's your target, $19 for 50 cents. If you're swinging it, I yeah, guess. Yeah, exactly. I don't um, know if there's a short interest on it. But. You want me to have a look? You have the same data right there. Yeah. No, not really a short float, 2%. No. So. Yeah, well, these kind of like obscure names don't really attract much of a short float, right? But yeah, popping off, INPX, could we see a dollar? It's up 77 percentage points on the day. It was up higher. Uh, at the peak there, 58.80, the high. But Meta, back on watch as it creates a series of higher lows. And that's what we were talking about. That's what we want to see for the people who are along. You want to see a series of higher lows. You don't want to necessarily see lower lows, obviously. Uh, the NQ and the ES getting bought back up off that little drop down near resistance, at least for the moment. But I, if I had to guess, I'd still say we're range bound for uh, the foreseeable future or here for the next little while because we're going to get into that lunchtime period no, notoriously known as the more illiquid part of the day. So, you know, you may not be expecting the big boy moves to the high side that we would get, obviously earlier and later on in the day. All right, WW is also back near day high. Uh, small cap crappers back in focus. It, WW is, there's a heavy short float on this. I just want to repeat that. So uh, watch out for possible squeezes here. Uh, double top earlier off that 76, that three quarter area. We're right back there testing that level again. Uh, let's go into the daily to have a better picture of the macro look here. Looks like we broke uh, recent resistance at that seven and a quarter level that we made back on March 7th. And the next level we got to look for here is this obvious top at eight. Uh, looks like we rejected that back in August. And then above that, we're looking at that 831. There's a bit of a top there. Um, you know, it's, there's so many levels to look at here, guys. And then the obvious one, though, is nine, bouncing off nine here and then breaking eventually nine. So, yeah, you, you basically got, uh, you got resistance at every which level on WW. But what's working for it is it's got a short float that's pretty hefty. And as a result, you know, you could get some parabolic moves, even though uh, you may encounter resistance at these levels. So let's keep an eye on that. And keeping the names, keep tagging me with uh, newer uh, with newer stocks here, guys. I know I won't be able to get to all of them, but the ones that I see, I'll keep looking at. Yes, I see INPX still going. 60 pennies and 60s. a half now wow. is the HOD, baby. Wow, INPX going. Should have had that 50 break. Maybe that was, uh, that's, I mean, that could be the trade of the day right there. Oh, baby. 50, you get 60. Who knows where this wants to go? Kind of rejecting 60 for now, but I mean, your real stop on this is like 49999 
which uh, hard to uh, sound like Walmart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It was discount prices oh, on uh, INPX, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I added to that that Amazon Let's go, one Anna. last time. My Let's stop. Go. Hey, doesn't it say? Sorry, I'm excited. My stop gonna be below here, like 59s, and uh, yeah, looking for that that move back up. Kind of chased it, I guess, taking that 101 break. Should have been patient for the dip, but uh, looking good now. Coming back into my average, and then uh, yeah, probably <laughs> looking to add if we break 101 again. Because NQ is kind of uh, soaking up that dip, so yeah. feeling good about Amazon. CXAI just uh, nuked down, but starting nuked. to... Uh, That's a nice one. A little like nuked that. there, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah, four and a quarter yeah. bounce, eh? They're soaking up the dip, though. Soaking up. They can get it back above $5 right now. That's when it halts up and goes wild. We'll see. Oh, baby. We'll see, but uh, for I'm now, this one's kind of... Looking exhausted, it would have to get above $5 in the next like two minutes for me uh, to really be the one. Also, your meta is starting oh, to baby. fly. Here we go. We're about to test 219s. I'm sitting at 95s. Uh, I didn't get the print yet, but the levels there, we're waiting for that. We want a continuation through 219. You know, we may not even get a big boy continuation through 19, but, uh, you know, we, we, can, we can dream. No, uh, look, uh, we're not seeing what I would look for in terms of a reversal here on some of the, on these, on these big cappers, whether it's on the futures or it's on any of the big cappers, you're not seeing anything that's alerting you to a possible reversal. So, uh, you know, go with the trend. Uh, Meta is obviously a stronger name. My concern early was, has the move been made? And you know, we're going to find resistance at these levels, but it looks like 295 is back in business here. We're waiting for that fill. I I'm sick of waiting for it, so here we go. I'll take that out on my own. There it is. Uh, let's let that one uh, run now. I'm not gonna take any more it below 219, so I'll go ahead and sit at 219. We'll, we'll sit at 20s here for an out, but ultimately, you know, you, you are looking for a high of day test. Kevin, Sharif, can you short CXAI? My platform isn't letting me. What are you using? So on IBKR, I can't, I can't short CXAI. There are no shortable shares. I'm almost certain. I don't even need to ask that we can short it here with D day trade the world. Um, I don't know. I don't have we a manager account. We can short this. It's just very expensive for okay, the short Okay, it's very today. expensive, Max says. Uh, you know, he, he had a look. And yes, the answer to your question is yes, but you're going to pay for that, obviously. So it has to be, um, it has to make sense financially. Um, I like what I'm seeing out of NASDAQ right now. Wick down, and now it's like testing the highs again. It just broke the highs. So NASDAQ go, looking meta. for that, uh, you know. AI. Yeah. CXAI. Yeah. yeah. Uh, looking for that 13150. Bump it. 132, then 13250, then, you know, moon, 14,000. Oh, I don't baby. know. Baby. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, uh, any large cap long is looking pretty good. Your meta took out its 219. Yeah, Google's starting to creep back struggling, up. Struggling, though. Amazon kind of lagging, but uh, still looking for that break on Amazon of that 101 again. Um, but yeah, made a little uh, higher low here. So take out that 85, take out 101. 10150. Let's see 102 today. Share. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What else um, we got? Kevin, uh, just to let you know, it would cost us here at Day Trade the World twelve dollars for 100 shares. Oh, so it's gone up. Oh, it went up. All right. Should have so just Max bought just the shorts this yeah, morning, okay. and I could have flipped them for uh, a hefty 200 percent profit. Hold on. What? They were they were five dollars per hundred uh -huh. earlier. So if you could have theoretically bought oh, them and sold them saying. to somebody yeah, else. Yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> I don't know if it works that way, though. It does right? not work yeah. that way. <laughs> it's like, okay, is, it, is that something that I haven't heard of here? I'm like, you, yeah. can you assign borrowed shorts? I'm like, I haven't seen No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, Start trading so, the shorts market? Right? Don't even bother with yeah, the equity. Just, I, just, uh, I buy up the shorts so I can resell them yeah, on like yeah. some short blacklist. <laughs> Black market? Oh, my God, Max, you're onto something. We're coming up. All right. New derivative. Get ready, guys. Yeah, new derivative product coming to market. You heard it here first. We're selling shorts. Uh, we're going to resell shorts to, to other people. We're going to buy them up yeah. all in the morning and then sell them up. We'll be, we'll be the shorts broker anytime small cap <laughs> market what, starts heating you're up. A genius, we're buying Max. all the shorts. You're a genius. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. 
Uh, we're, we're moving up here. I'm, I'm sitting at uh, 50 or 20s here on Meta. Now we're at the 10s and the 12s. We're moving up. We're moving up on the uh, ES. We're moving up on the NQ. Dan Emmons had a little bit there I want to read. He says, NQF 11 a.m. update. Stair-stepped each of the opening ranges. Breakout transition to the next level. Build new value area just under prior day. Um, RTH open and then below that each dip is a hunt for more liquidity thus far and I agree with that because we've been seeing that bought up every single time here oops here comes my meta and there do I get the fill oh, I do get breakout. the fill we spin the money we're over a dollar in the money on this one now good trade on this meta long as we continue to move to the high side here we just printed a new recent high not the high of day recent high at that 24 level we're looking to retrace the 77s that's high of day max yeah, we're just chilling still. Uh, CXAI never made the move back up. Amazon still not making oh. the move. NQ kind of holding the new high, but not making more new highs. I think we need that ES. Sorry for the black chart, guys. But we need ES to break 4150 so we can get into these like 55 highs and, and start pushing higher uh, for these names to really start moving. Uh, but yeah, still hanging out on the market, nothing really happening, but chilling at highs is always good. Mm. Better than chilling at lows, I guess. Yeah, um, definitely. Just waiting for that next, uh, I don't know, I feel like I could get more Amazon here based on how I'm, I've risked this. Holy market. But I'm market. just going to wait. I'm going to wait for that one market. break. And now Tesla's starting to go. Market's starting to move. Market's pumping, baby. Why is Amazon Apple lagging? Apple day high. Apple day high, um, Meta still holding that 219. Um, you're, not, you're not seeing the most strength right now on big tech. What are chips doing? Let me have a look here. Are chips near day high? I mean, NVIDIA is at, is at day high. Just about to test it, 267.88, 268.10, that's day high. So it looks like uh, the chip's waking up. I'm looking at AMD as well. No, we're not quite there yet on AMD. I'm trying to account for why the market's moving up here with the NQ at day's eyes, but none of the uh, other big cappers are except Apple. Looks like Apple really leading the charge here, bro. 163.88 high of day on Apple, and we're at high of day on the NQ, so Apple leading the charge, you know, and then some other laggards here, not at day's highs, but obviously up on the day. That's my opinion. None Apple of these small ripping, caps are, uh, are making new highs, eh? A? WW made a new high, it looks like. But kind Again, of rejecting it. 780 high up. WNQ. Yeah, kind of rejected that 780 level. This one moves very slowly. Yeah, have a this look one, at the chart. Yeah, you can uh, you kind of load up a lot of shares on WWMB. Relatively safe for a small cap, in my opinion. Not really, I mean, this is kind of a gross candle, but you're kind of buying highs here anyway. But yeah, you could, you could get into decent size on this one and, and just make like tidy little 10 cent, 20 cent profits. I kind of like how this one's trading just straight yeah. up holding that 50 holding the uh 21 when it's getting more aggressive maybe that's the buy right here don't really like the high of day uh rejection not even getting through 80 there so maybe eight dollars is the uh is the spot where this thing starts moving again and gets those uh big strong volume candles back into it and we did not get stopped out on amazon and we are finally in the money on it by like two cents but, uh, yeah, starting to pick up volume. Nothing else is really picking up volume, so Amazon going by itself. Jeez. I like that. I like that Amazon trading inverse to the market today for some mm -hmm. reason. <laughs> um, we'll be adding when it breaks that 10101, and then uh, see what happens after that, looking for 30s and then 50s on Amazon. Um, yeah, what else we got? None of these small caps are doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not seeing much either. We're, we're decidedly green, though, on my watch list here for most industries. Everything uh, green. So, obviously, it gives you an idea what kind of day it's been. With respect to Meta, now we've broken down below 219, so that didn't hold as a level, but we're, we're, we're finding liquidity again. We're finding a lot of buying uh, on the dips, and now we're looking to test 219 again to the downside. I got this partial fill up here at uh, 07s. That's why it's yellow. Um, so I, when it gets back up there, if it gets back up there, then I'll get the full fill. Otherwise, we'll continue to do this dance in and around this area. 
Yeah, not much else to report. We are days high as well on Weight Watcher is now 781. WW up 20 percentage IMPX. points on the day. IPX just popped up again. Now new high day 6183. This one's just going sub one dollar small cap crapper. This one's got lots of legs. Elevator upside, baby. Not even the escalator. <laughs> not even the escalator. <laughs> Yeah, I'm thinking I might want to punch into this one, actually. Okay. Well, this has been money on the retracements. All right, like, have a look at this. Yeah. yeah bought up that one. Yeah, this was on the five-minute, too. Let's look more micro. Let's look at the three. Okay, a bit more distorted. Definitely on the three. How's the one look? Yeah, much more distorted on the one and the three. The five is where I would trade this. Much clearer with respect to its retracements. The uh, the uh, consolidation pullbacks, or sorry, the retracements look uh, look much clearer, and the breakouts are a lot clearer too. The ones that I love taking are the first five minute candle to make a new high. Yeah, that fifty eight level just starts to uh, starts to go from there. Yeah, yeah. Is this, it feels like it's holding sixty, but it's just doing no volume. So I feel like. I can't, uh, I can't just punch into this because if the volume comes into the yeah. downside, maybe I get. Yeah, and that's not you something know, you want to say about a 50 penny stock. A exactly. Penny stock you want either. it to be yeah. thick and, and, exactly. and easy and lots of volume. So I'm going to stay away despite thinking that this one could very easily get to like 80 cents today. Yeah, or maybe. Maybe even that Pump dollar it. level. On the daily chart, we have, uh, we have this 60, and then next level is 89, basically. in... Uh, for me, and then you know, a dollar, dollar ten, dollar fifty, nine dollars and seventy-five cents, maybe. All these levels. <laughs> Who knows? This one <laughs> might break a dollar and never look back. Yeah. All right, we take some more shareage out there uh, as Meta pops up, big boy, into that two nineteen thirty. Uh, took some out there. I, I want to say twenty sixes, twenty fives, twenty sixes, something like that. Um, diver, diver right says ADA, ADA had a big pop. Sure, let's have a look at ADA while well, this Adam. meta does its thing. ADA, hold on, what did I just do there? Adams on the LSC. I think What's, they're talking oh, about that's crypto. Cardano, yeah, right? Cardano. ADA is Cardano, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm, I haven't had a look. I don't get Cardano on my platform. I think I only get BTC and ETH, sadly. So those are the, the ones that I, I, I those are the only two that I follow. So I'll have, do you do? You do yeah, do you I can pull that? up, uh, yeah. you give me a minute. Here. Yeah, yeah, sure. Set that up. Uh, we'll have a look at something else. Pump it, elevate the frequency. So di Diver right, Max will look at that for you in a second. NVIDIA new high, says Jason. Yeah, we were looking at the chips a second ago. 268.20, new HOD on our friend. Um, uh, in Vi NVIDIA, Meta just pulling in. Whoa, Meta's Khwadunking here. So we gotta, we gotta be careful because we're long 19. So I've taken some nice shareage out here, but I still have the majority of the position. So this one comes in, I gotta keep my eye, but it's above VWAP, right? It's just, you know, we're gonna have some market term oil at these areas, but gotta be cognizant of that level because I haven't taken out the majority of the position yet. So still heavy in this one. 65 cents now, Max, a high of day on IMPX. This one's really going here. Uh, moving up uh, a whole nine pennies, but you know, that, that matters when you're uh, 60 cents, right? So nice move on that. Uh, how's that Cardano looking? Uh, ADA, no, baby. I actually have that on my phone that I, that I follow. Um, oh, here we go. Um, someone was asking about I know that you're into that, right? Um, here we right go. now, what's it. the percentage up on the day? Uh, up on the day? Four, okay. Yeah, I don't know. What, okay. I don't use trading view very often. Here we go. Yeah, neither do I. It's been a minute since all I've right, been using right. it. All right, all right. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, Sean put it in. It's only up like 5% or in. something. So Carv Cardano kind of ripping? Yeah, yeah. I'll go into the other chat. No, I'm in both. I got it. That just shows the top. Yeah, I got it. I'll pull it up here. Here Nothing we go. Nothing particularly exciting. All the top. Yeah, yeah, right but, there. So uh, today, BTC, uh, what's uh, the one? No, so on the day, that's the seven day, the 24 hour. Let's do 24 hour. So what's Radix, XRD? It's up 25%. ARB, up 11.1. Aptos, 9. Doge, 6%, baby. 
Uh, Ethereum there, we knew about that one, 4.7. I don't know any of these names, bro. I am not a crypto guy. I'm not a crypto <laughs> bull. I know Gregory is there, Cardano up 4.1%. Yeah. The Sandbox, what are these names, bro? Uh, Decentraland, I love it. There's one called Decentraland. Uh, fantastic there, eCash, Flow, Dash, Litecoin, I've heard of Litecoin. Um, I don't mean to make fun of this. Obviously, I just, it's, I find it amusing, that's all. Uh, all right, guys, where are we at here? Now, uh, what do you got? Did you have the Cardano? Do you want to look at that for, uh, for a friend? What's yeah, it's the, just, uh, uh, What's the outlook there on the daily? I mean, just kind of did a, uh, a little false breakout here at that 42 cent level. I mean, I don't know. I'm not, uh, not a big crypto guy, but Neither I feel like you got to clear this 45, clear this 50 to really get going. This doesn't really look like a, a big outsized day for this name. We can see from here and here like what, what this can do, do these like 20% moves. So uh, yeah, until you see some action like this on Cardano, action, I wouldn't get Jackson. too excited. But uh, yeah, crypto really heating up. I mean, what's BTC, oh, not BNTC, BTC doing today? USD, there you go. Still moving up. So oh, Bitcoin, baby. what does this look like to you, Sharif? Um, a bull, bull flag. flag. A bull flag yeah, on the daily. At the same time, there we go. <laughs> uh, confirmation, baby, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, Bitcoin, like 32. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I mean, if... That 30 it level seems that people clutch. are piling into gold and Bitcoin right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gold yeah. is getting bought up aggressively by retail, and then there was a report that came out that central banks bought it up at the highest rates in, like, years, uh, Jan and Feb. So, yeah, obviously, uh, yeah, it's been good. It's been good. Let's look at gold. G GLD, let's look at that. Pull it up on the trading view charts here. GLD. Look at the daily on this bad boy. Where are we at here? Let's go, let's go. All right, so it's up and to the right. I mean, January, yeah, it's been the year of gold. Where are we here? No, I spoke too soon. Where are we here? This is daily. So, yes, right there. This is where we start off the year. Right there. Okay, so it looks like it started... Feb was the bottom, I want to say. Yeah. I know that we've made highs uh, with uh, respect to gold and the Canadian dollar. I'll have a look at uh, the spot price because I don't really like uh, I don't really like the price action on this one. I'll have a look at uh, the other one while Max is talking. But in a second here, was we are now range trading again on Meta as we get that 219 rejection. I still haven't seen a newer low. The newer low will be that 217 and three quarter break. That's where I'll get out near this area. This is, these are my entries right here, clutch entries right at 218. We've been riding it uh, through the range and taking the top break, but still holding the majority of the position, still looking for more on this bad boy. So this has been a good trade, but an incomplete trade so far, Maxim. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm fighting the market here with this Amazon long, but it's still kind of holding up, holding these prices in the 60s. I still have my stop in below 60. I don't know what to do with it. I feel like cutting it because I feel that, you know, this NASDAQ uh, kind of wick high on the 15, probably the same thing on the 5, kind of breaking down. Tried those 50s, didn't like it. Same thing with ES. ES tried 4150 and just rejected. So I don't know. I kind of want to cut this, but it's still going up despite the market coming back down. So trust the stop, leave the stop in, let it play out. Uh, yeah, I'm still looking for 101 on Amazon. Not stressing, not stressing. Yeah, um, I like it. That uh, INPX, 65 high. So could have got in like 500 million shares on INPX at 60 and, you know, retired, I guess, with that five cent move. Uh, keeps just putting in these 10% 10 10 moves for you. Mm -hmm. So this one's still going up. Trusting the teal a little bit here on that 55. The teal. Love Didn't it. notice that at the time. Mm -hmm. Trust the teal. Maybe the, maybe the uh, 60 is the buy here now. Trust the Again, teal. Again, eh? I mean, <laughs> watch it hold. I, people I mean, are loving the teal. I'm going to have to take the teal. People off are loving you, bro. the teal. I don't know. I think some hedge funds are watching and they're just buying the teal now. They, <laughs> they, got they said, who is this, for this smart channel. guy with this teal on his charts? We've got to copy him. <laughs> they just put on the teal, uh, put on the teal buying program, guys. All right, here, I want to look at the. Uh, 
the GLD here on my chart. I put uh, the NASDAQ here. This is the NASDAQ in blue. And the gold and equities, especially the tech-heavy NASDAQ, have traded very similarly since the October bottoms that we put in on uh, the uh, on the NQ and the ES back in October. Surprise, surprise. We also made that kind of same Let's bottom go, with gold, man. and it's been gold's been more steady in its ascent up. I mean, we had the retracement uh, on equities in December while we were continuing up on gold, and then we had the pop. Um, on equities in January and early Feb while we had the descent on gold. Now they're both going up. They diverged during our initial pop on equities earlier in the year, and now they're converging with, with uh, big tech. So that's an interesting development because that signals some sort of change. I'm not intelligent enough or educated enough to know exactly what that means, but that's an observation that I can plainly make. So interesting move here on uh, GLD and uh, the tech heavy NASDAQ. I, I like this ind ind uh, index comparison capability here where you're able to just very easily see um, the convergence and divergence between uh, two different, uh, I was gonna I was gonna call it securities, but whatever, do you know what I'm trying to say? Um, all right, back to the matter at hand here, the trade on Meta now popping back up again through 219 so that Essentially, VWAP holds this time around. That's 218.50. Now we're popping back up near 20s. It's the time to take some more shareage out here. So we'll get a nice little red triangle as we pop through 219s, but still holding the majority of this trade. Let's go ahead and sit uh, near or 35s. I know that's a ways away from where we are, but uh, there it is. I'll set my profit taker through there. The last time we got up to these levels, I think we broke the quarter dollar by a penny or two. Yeah, actually we went up to 30s. So the last time we were up here, we got up to 30s. What's up? Why? What happened? Amazon just will not break this 101. He just put his hands up in the air. Like, I thought on. something really bad happened, so that's why Come I kind of stopped talking and looked at him. But, no, no, my yeah. bad, my bad. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> just trying to cheer Amazon on here. Time oh. to take out 10101. Come on. Gonna, come on, man. Come on. Let us print. There Let us go. print. I got a tiny little bit out here. Obviously should have added in this consolidation, but uh, didn't do it. Uh -huh. um, our small caps are I'm going to give you one trip. guess how much meta is up this year. You're only going to get one. Make up it good. Uh, Since start of 120%? No, man. Can be reasonable, bro. It wasn't it at $100? In October, it was at 80s. Okay. I, well, then I don't know. I guess, uh, let's say $100 per share? Yeah, no, year? percentage, percentage. Percentage, like yeah. 80% then? Wow, bang on, 81% year to date, calendar year to date. Wow, that's crazy. And what a NVIDIA, swing. I think NVIDIA is a little higher, actually. NVIDIA is higher. Yeah, not, NVIDIA has been that a AI catalyst chip. for, uh, for oh, NVIDIA bro. was, yeah. uh, that was everything. And it's that a changed well -run the game. company, bro. It's a well run company. Jensen Huang, shout out. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I know. So, yeah, big boy moves on some of these big capper names. All right, Max, 4152 just got taken on the ES. Yeah, that's so a new high day. One, sorry, 13154. 50 new HOD on the NQ June contract. That's so, the kind of action like that you want to see. Like it comes oh, down, baby. looks like it's going to break down, and then we just shoot back over the high. There you go. Looks like there's buyers in this market right now. NASDAQ mm -hmm. still hasn't quite taken the high at 55, but uh, you know, look like we're going to do it. I like Large it. caps looking good. They're Tesla looking going good. up. Yep. Google kind of still in range. Our small cap uh, stocks right now, that IDAI actually bounced off of $5. So okay. came up, broke this high here, bounce off of 97s, I guess, and then uh, a little quadunk back down. Quadunk. But look at this, it holds the teal. Love it. And they're soaking it back up, looking to push it over $5 maybe for that, uh, that big move. We're kind of over all the resistance that we talked about from pre-market and, uh, and the daily chart. So now it's just like, you know, 560 and this 750, $8 level that, uh, that's left on this name. Okay. Not a whole lot holding it down anymore. Um, so by the yeah, teal, people are saying it now in the chat. It's becoming and a we thing. kind of uh, we let this one go, but it holds the halt price, which we talked about. Yeah, goes up, holds the halt price again for the third time. Oh yeah, I mean, what a money How buy right there at four twenty. 
Never. But can I say you something? Rarely see that. I think. I, no, come on. It, they that they, they hold, hold the Hall price. Yeah. Three well, times though. No, no, not three times. Yeah, exactly. But you usually have at least one play off that Hall level. Yeah, I know one it's really play small for sure. Crap, crap, for players, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to say something. I think that the halt level dip buy is a lot better when the small cap crappers are tre trending up. Now, you'll recall, yeah, remember course. December, January, we had that play on the small cap crappers where they made a new high and you faded the new high and that was the game. You secured your choice It in is the working today, though. If, what? But it's kind of working today. Like the, the, this, the shorts? Yeah, like this OCEA kind of broke the... Yeah, but it's making But you, it's only giving you scalps. It's not giving yeah. that, like, quadunk, like, end of... No. Come on, zoom in. There I was talking go. about like consolidate all day yeah. off the high, so the downside. And that yeah, was like yeah, the money yeah, trade. Yeah, you yeah. could be in and that you can all just day. Hold it all day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, we're not seeing that no. anymore. So let's see the ones where now they take off the high and then they go into a halt. And then we can really start making some money around here, Sharif. Those would be great. That's what I need. I, I you know, I can't I can't just scalp a small cap for 10 cents. Yeah, it's, it's not just, in my brain. Hey, man, you're, you're just getting back from beers and <laughs> golf and uh, yeah. all sorts of uh, coastal weather winds. and uh, The weather was horrible. Whatever. You're it by was the horrible. water. We were golfing. Clean air. It was uh, 10 degrees, so like, what is that, 45 for uh, the people who do Fahrenheit? Oh, and windy. Fahrenheit. We were on the ocean, and it's raining <laughs> and windy and 10 degrees Celsius. And here it was, it was really good. I don't. And yeah, get it, here it's nice. We left here for the weather. Yeah. Do you guys know how hot it is in there. Toronto today? It is going to be almost 30 degrees, 29. We broke a record yesterday. We're going to break a, a record today. If you guys don't know what 29 is, neither do I. What's 29 degrees? degrees in Fahrenheit? About. Who's going to tell me? 84.2. 84.2. That is unusual for Toronto. Uh, at this time of the year, although we do get like a day or two, usually in April, uh, that is unseasonably warm. Uh, we've had more than a day or two. Or we had more like a, a week almost of good weather. So pumped about that. We will take it. But you know what? To be honest with you, like you can do patio well into October. So we yeah. have good weather well into mid-October from now yeah. onward. So yeah. I, people always dog about Toronto and people think Canada is like a... I, I mean, know, it's just freezing a bunch of in January. Husky walking, yeah. uh, igloo living. <laughs> like people, no, we're not. We have really good weather for six months of the year. Yeah, the uh, yeah June, July, August is like, you know, that eighty to ninety degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah, it's really 29, hot. Twenty nine. Toronto's super humid Celsius. too. Thirty uh, Celsius. Speaking of things that are hot, Amazon takes off the high. We're at tens. I oh, took a baby. little bit more out, but I am holding like ninety percent of this position for that one hundred one thirty as the market trying to make new highs. Um, NASDAQ. With I love mean, to all your jokes. Canada is American Siberia. <laughs> yeah. OK, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's the not. Wall, wall, uh, the, Siberia is hot today. It's is, almost 30 degrees. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Does Siberia Same. ever get hot? No. I don't know, man. I, I haven't no been idea. to Siberia. We'll ask our friend Poutine I said that the Paci there. Pacific Ocean was on the, uh, the yeah, East Coast there, so don't ask nice. me about geography. It's all good. All right, uh, we get that 219 rejection again on Meta, but we're still above VWAP. We're still at high a day on the ES and the NQ. So no reason for me to, to sell this. We're seeing constantly higher lows on this. I've got my stop set. I've taken some nice shareage out. I'm sitting at, I believe, 35s for the next out there. Yeah, 35s, 219, 35s if we get that continuation. Otherwise, we shall see I'm long 18s. So still in the money on this one, but it's been a, a range-style trade. Now, the reason I have a higher cost basis than 18 is because I added on this pop-up. I thought this was the... This was where we were going to print a newer uh, newer high through that 219.80 break. We didn't end up printing that 219.80 high, so I ended up adding on that 219 dip. So this uh, little ad over here helped me lose my 218 cost basis. So that was poopy, but, um, you know, it is what it is, and we'll have to defend that, that level. So let's see what we... Toronto Young Street, LOL. All right, Steve A., I guess you've been here before. Renata says Canada is so cold. Incorrect. Canada it's cold depends for a on where you are. It is Number definitely one, cold. Vancouver rarely gets snow. They That's did true. this year, but they rarely do. Um, it's just damp and wet most of the time, though, right? Because yeah. like the, there's a rainforest in uh, Washington State and uh, British Columbia, right? It's beautiful a North uh, American style rainforest. Though. Those like old redwoods, I yeah, think they are. Exactly. 
gorgeous, right. like Amazing. huge trees. Because they just grow all year and it rains all year. All year it's raining there, man. Beautiful, yeah. But right yeah, back. no, Canada's only cold for like four months, guys. Yeah, it's only really bad. Like we only get snow for three months of the year, four months if Unless it's a bad Unless you're in Alberta, year. then yeah. it's uh, No, no, that's freezing. a different story, bro. Alberta's a different <laughs> Alberta's climate. Alberta's a different story for yeah, sure. Yeah, no, Kilwana, BC, Mr. Longshorts. I like your name, that's funny. Um, all right, um, let's see what else here. It's only cold for a few days. No, no, we're not, we're not making that kind of stuff up. All right, what else is moving here? Um, INPX popping off the, the lows that, or that retracement area there, CXAI as well, also kind of getting going off that four and a quarter, now looking to test four and three quarters. You have CRSP uh, hovering at that $50.20 top that it's been rejecting off since about 11.40. So almost an hour off these top. This is the one minute chart on CRSP. And uh, GFAI really holding that $31 level, that close of yesterday. So really, really tight uh, at that 31 level on GFAI, not much to do there. WW also rejecting off eight for now, getting up all the way to 795. Now Did back it. down into seven and three quarters, but it's been up and to the right for uh, WW. So those uh, dip trade uh, retracements have been money. Uh, with respect to the futures, we're very close to both the day highs on the ES and the NQ. So it's been very bullish day, and that's why we're long. And uh, we're going to stay that way until the trend changes, Max. Oh, we got a bid here on Amazon at 101.20, 900 lots. So that's 90,000 shares times $100. That's like, I don't know, can't do math today. Too tired for that. But you can guess that's a lot of money that's sitting on the bid on Amazon right now that they're not looking to fill at the moment. So looking for that uh, push up, I got my off-road at 102 to get, you know, 10% out because we're going to 105 today on Amazon. Amazon crushing it. Uh, Tesla also making new highs now. So I didn't even look at Tesla today uh, because it's just had such a uh, downwards catalyst for the past week or two. I wasn't looking to long it. It's not high enough for me to short it, but uh, Tesla putting in a decent 3% move today. Uh, nice little wick down here below 181 and then just shoots up to the high side. Maybe Tesla's the one that you can fade, but yeah, NASDAQ looking pretty strong. Looking to take out the highs, not exactly looking to get short anything at the moment. Um, we also got the CXAI that uh, Sharif was talking about. This is like the classic manipulation pattern that I look at on, uh, on these small caps or uh, theoretically manipulation. You push it down, consolidate it, wick down here, and then you get right back into range and then they break the top here. Now everybody who's short here is getting squeezed. Once they take out the highs here, then everybody who's in the name is getting squeezed. So. Look out for CXAI, not done yet. It would be below $4 if this one was truly done right now. Uh, so yeah, CXAI, keep that one on watch. Now starting to get volume. Uh, kind of reserving 75s here. Let's see if this one can take it out. I think if we take out five on this one, that's the, uh, that's the next move up. But obviously the tape on this one's been a little gross. You have to be patient. You have to buy the dip on it and uh, just wait for that rip. This, this little wick down though is like, that's how I like to trade these. I just wasn't watching it anymore based on this kind of quadunk action. <laughs> but I think I need, uh, I need to go back to something like five minutes after it quadunks, maybe like set a timer for myself or something. Because if they're not down at VWAP and below VWAP by now, that's when you should be buying the dip on these. The if they, uh, yeah, if it makes this move and it doesn't continue, that's, that means that there's buyers. That means that there's people who are short, who are getting squeezed, or there's a, uh, some kind of algo that's buying the dip. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this one still looking Whatever to make it that is, move. It's, yeah, it's making the move. Man, the NQ, the ES, we are, how many times are we gonna say this? High of day, high of day. Uh, Apple leading the charge, Amazon leading the charge, yep. Tesla leading the charge, even Microsoft waking go. up now. Uh, Meta, not so much. Meta is napping at the moment. Meta will be up uh, maybe during 1 o'clock, 1.30 or so. But for the moment, it's asleep, hovering at VWAP, you know, unable to really sustainably break that 219. We get wicks above it, but then we're automatically retracing. We're going to have to have a lot more buying volume to kind of propel that trade to the high side. But 
What a trade on the ES today. Whew, let's bring in the ES, man. All right, so where did we start off at here? So yesterday's close right away, 41.19. Look at that 41.19 test early on. You didn't have another test for that uh, after the bell. It kind of got down to about 41 and a quarter. And it's been uh, 25 points plus now to the high side on the ES. So very similar move on the NQ. Even though the NQ was more bullish than the ES early, the ES has turned bullish now. It's obvious that the NQ is more bullish because it's up 1.57% on the day versus the 0.81 for the ES. Look at that up and to the right. Now slowing down a little bit. We had a consolidation area here on the NQ for the better part of the morning, but we've since broken through that. That level, I would have, um, you know, guesstimated was that 13, 137. Now we get up to 5.8, so clearing that by 20 points. I know there's a lot of excitement since Pradley's been back there, right? Prad uh, is very loved on the floor, and he has brought amazing energy back. Energy, yeah, it's he's been a little yelling. quiet recently. I love now it. we got Prad on the floor. <sighs> We Let's got get uh, to some people chat. moved around. It's uh, good, good vibes here now. Good vibes. Julie Argon, dollar ninety nine super chat. Thank you very much, Julie. Thoughts on NNDM market cap six hundred fifty million and one point two billion in cash. So those are more fundamental um, indicators that we have to look at but uh, that we don't necessarily consider on an intraday trade. But let's have a look. NNDM. I mean, you can have as much cash as you want, but if they have Great. like $10 billion in debt, then the company is worthless. It, I mean, so. it, it helps to have cash. I mean, the, it it's helps, one of the things yeah. that they always report. But like, let's have a look. NNDM, intraday. Uh, from an intraday perspective, obviously nothing to speak of here. You have a low of 48 and a high of 54s. Uh, sorry, not 54s, 56s. Uh, that's after the bell high. So not for me, I wouldn't do anything intraday. So let's have a look at the daily chart to see what kind of swing this one's uh, possibly brewing up here. You have uh, earnings. They responded really well to earnings. It looks like they reported uh, back on the, what was that, 23rd? No, that's the 29th. They reported on the 30th, actually, excuse me, of March, and they popped up nicely on that news, but you're still very much within the, the recent range, that 321 top, and then you... Obviously got several levels to deal with with respect to resistance on the way up. You've just only uh, now reclaimed, actually you reclaimed the 200, but then it rejected off it. So I, I don't like anything with respect to this one just yet. From a swing trade perspective, definitely doesn't look good on the long-term chart, to be honest with you. Uh, with respect to an intraday trade, I don't see one there because of the lack of move and the illiquidity. So uh, sorry, I hope that doesn't... Uh, that doesn't kind of dampen your spirits. I don't know anything about this fundamentally. I'm not looking at it. I'm looking at it strictly from a technical perspective. Uh, but it looks like it did respond well to uh, the earnings uh, report there. Uh, it popped up on that news. This is the weekly chart. It looks like we're also rejecting the 50 period on a number of occasions on the weekly, but getting a lot closer to it. So hope that helps. And I hope uh, if you're along, you have success with it. Did you cover the debt? Because my thing says that there's no debt, really. 17 one billion in cash. Did you Maybe look? something I can weird. have a look. I mean, that's what uh, have a whole trade ideas here. says here. Okay, I'll have a look. Current okay. debt, 17 million. Cash, one billion. I don't... Mm. I mean, we're not analysts here, guys. We just read the charts and, you know, make YOLO All trades. right, here's the brief on it for my platform. For the fiscal year ending 31st of December 2022, Nano Dimensions Limited... ADR, so these are American Depository Receipts, revenues increased from 10.5 million to 43.6 million. So revenue increased ni nicely. Net loss, though, increased 13% as well from 227.4 million to 227.4. So they're bleeding a lot more than they are bringing in. Loss of 227.4 million and a, a revenues of 43.6. So the balance sheet in the, in the red there. Revenues reflect Europe and Israel segment increased from 7.2 million to 25 million. United States segment increased from 2.5 million to 14.3 million. Higher net loss reflects future valuation adjustment of financial investments increased from 0K to 62.8 million expense. Labor and related expenses in R&D increase as well. So it's a long-winded version of uh, what you may have been able to pull off on the net anyway. All right, Max. 
I, I mentioned this one in passing earlier because the liquidity was a little suspect on this one, but look at this CRSP top break here at 5020. We talked about that. It had rejected off that 5020 multiple times, and there we go. We get the break up to 5078. We make a new high. We break uh, earlier high of that 5055, 5056 or so. CRSP, let's have a look at the daily on this bad boy. So it is a secular move. Um, bouncing off yesterday's close of 43.50. Now looking to test 51s, but we're still, you know, if you're looking for a swing, we're still definitely on that down cycle. Have not made a higher high. I need to reclaim that 55 to break the 200 for a nice little long-term move, but intraday looks fantastic. By the price action, I'm guessing there's basically no volume on that. You can today. tell just yeah. by looking at the chart, right? Yeah, that, you can that's, tell. that's screen time, baby. <laughs> that's, that means you got screen time. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've looked at a lot of charts yeah, in my day. Likewise. And, in uh, my day. And that one looks like uh, it's just cruising up on no volume. The spread's probably 20 to 40 cents. And uh, yeah, probably not something that I can trade with my risk management strategy. But uh, congratulations for long that one. If you're swinging it, I mean, looks great. Yeah. I don't know what the news is on it or, or whatever. I'm sure it's uh, something biotech related or something like that. But uh, yeah, we are. Uh, someone's asking me, by the way, why my average price keeps changing. It's because I averaged bio in. Bio bid. It's a bio so, bid, by the way. NNDM, bio bid. Just bio for, bid. Yeah. Right. Revised $20.05 share bid for the bio. I NNDM, see. yeah. Go on, sorry. Anyway, so, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so I bought three times. So that gives me an average price. And then our system is uh, first in, first out. So as I'm taking profit, it is changing my price down to my uh, lower bids. So that's why my price keeps changing. Eventually, when I have only 30% left, my price will be uh, 72s. Uh, so that's why that keeps changing. And our next profit taker is on the even 101.50, we can get up there. Um, stop is now kind of break even on this trade. Because we're so in the money, we are not gonna lose on it, but I'm still trying to do that intraday swing kind of idea on this. And uh, yeah, still like market holding up at highs. So, you know, we can probably just get that, or hopefully get that uh, afternoon just kind of cruise up on light volume that we've been seeing recently, you know, Two weeks ago, Friday, last Thursday, same thing. The market just goes up on no volume, so you oh, have yeah. to be ideally long early. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm long late and looking for continuation today. Mm -hmm. CXAI now looking for possible, we talked about the, this Ford and a quarter bounce on CXAI, here it is. You get a, a kind of a little double bottom-ish motion here on CXAI, now looking to test that $5 again. Uh, we broke through it. Uh, I think this is a long max. I don't know, I don't think we, we reject five times twice here, so let's go ahead and uh, what's life without whimsy? Uh, let's get in here on CXAI. Oh, refresh, there we go, let's zoom out a little bit. Um, the out will be the break of 20s here. So let's go quarter position. All right, we're gonna go quarter position for this test of five. Uh, the out will be this break of 420. If it doesn't hold up there, but I think we might squeeze if we break through five and I wanna front run it and be a part of it. Uh, you know, oftentimes with these ones, and I've seen this before, you get an initial test of a, of a key level, rejects, it winds up, uh, dusts itself off, and it tries again. It, sometimes gets through. So if it gets through, I want to be part of it. Where'd I get? I got 86s, okay. So we'll see. Um, I'm gonna look to take profit. Um, I wanna say at 10s. So I'll take a little bit out at 10s. Let's go here and we'll sit right. In fact, I'll sit at nines because you, know, you don't wanna get, you don't wanna get hunted there. So we'll sit at nines. We'll see if we get a, a day break. But my out, again, full out on this one, gonna be through 20. But looking for a squeeze through possibly 550. This, this exit here is just to de-risk a little bit and then the remaining portion will be for a hold. So in two positions now, both longs, Meta and CXAI. CXAI though, much smaller position should be very much, I wanna make this very clear because this is a much more speculative type of play. Up 200%, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? <laughs> right. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm looking at Google right now. We haven't really covered this today, I don't think. Uh, but yeah, this 107 kind of acting as resistance today. We're in this big, long consolidation. So usually, if you get a very long consolidation like this in a, in a tight range, when it finally does break out, you'll get like an, an outsized move and maybe continuation. Mm -hmm. So looking for Google to kind of get above that high. And if we can hold 107, I think I'll try to get along on Google if the market is holding up. But uh, still strong today, not, not really breaking down at all. Um, kind of, I mean, a lot like a lot of the other names, but Google just like really flat and still like higher low, higher low, higher low, and now trying to like take out that high. So your, um, what do you call it, compression pattern? Mm. Your compression is looking to break if we were able to draw a, uh, a trend line here. Oh, we're baby. breaking it now, kind of. I mean, gonna I don't know how to draw trend lines, but uh, no, I'm not going to punch on this. I would like to see it. I'm more of a level guy than mm -hmm. a technical no, guy, that's, so that's I want to see that 107 level. I think levels see are it hold. technicals. I think yeah, that there yeah, is I a guess. great degree of confluence between the two. Yeah, versus yeah. like, I guess. Just looking at patterns and candlesticks, but usually yeah. those are indicative of something. Exactly, that's exactly. You use everything that you have at your disposal to exactly. structure a trade, so I want to see that 107 hold. Some people might be getting in right now. I mean, you get a little retest of that trend line, which uh, it's funny how when you draw something, it ends up like looking so perfect. And mm -hmm. wow, trading is so easy. But yeah. Uh, yeah, you try drawing trend lines and trading off of them. I don't think it's going to work that you easy. You hear this guy back there? Prad is smoking it in the back, mm. apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Prad, send us your trades. We'll show them to the, uh, we'll show them to the viewers. I don't know if he hears us. I think he has his headphones Does on. Does he have his headphones? I think so. Fred's just uh, back there killing it all by himself. Coinbase is hwadunking, people are saying. So we're going to have a look at coin real quick here, even though we have egg in our mouth at the moment. But such is the nature of live broadcasting. Look at this, Max. Rejection off 72.50. And now we are looking 70 right in the face. We broke through VWAP. What's the close on this one? I have to look at my other chart. Switch to my small caps. We'll go coin. The close on this bad boy is that 67, 80-ish level. A little below 68. Let's just let's just say 68. Okay. That is the level. I mean, it's up three and a half percent on the day. Do we see that level? I, I doubt it. The pre-market low. Sorry. The um, the um, after the bell low is 69 event exactly. So it's about $1.25 from where we're at now. What's going on back there? <laughs> That's a lot, a lot, a lot of distractions today. I know. Um, anyway, so yeah, $69, the level possibly for a bounce on coin. That'll take it to break even. Uh, but yesterday's close, uh, sorry, that will take it to a low of day. But yesterday's close to get to break even is that $67.85. No trades on that, though, um, as it makes a big move down. Don't know where to pick it up. Possibly 70, maybe that key psychological level, the whole dollar level at 70 on coin. I won't be participating in this, but I know a lot of people have been trading this uh, all day as crypto has had a hell of a day. You have Mara up 14% and BTBT up 18.1. Riot was up earlier, almost 10 percentage points, now retracing back to eight and a third. So what a day it's been. It's been good for these... Uh, I want to say index names that we yeah. trade. For sure, for sure. Index? Very like specific index names because you have your right. the chips are kind of died today, right? Right. Um, well, not so much. They kind of recovered, but uh, yeah. I mean, what a move off the bottom on like an Nvidia that went 263 to 269, basically. I mean, Nvidia can do bigger moves than that. Oh yeah. I mean, Meta, Google, Amazon were kind of the trades of the day, probably, but nothing really doing those like big. ATR kind of uh, Not really. like multi ATR moves. Meta did it did like the five dollar move, but uh, yeah, nothing like going going wild today. Um, just still waiting for this Amazon to pop off at the moment. And I kind of remembered that 101.30 is my level on Amazon, which I was forgetting about. So I think I have to take some more profit in front of this because I can definitely see the scenario where this just rolls off that 101.30 and it kind of did that already so we'll see how it acts around here I might just take this out at 101 now if this comes down because uh, yeah just kind of uh, remembering that my uh, 101.30 level is uh, pretty strong 
which, you know, the uh, the king of the jungle in the back, Obi, is always talking oh, about yeah. 101.30. So I don't want to step in front of it. Or... Bro. <laughs> he had no patience for it. That's your level, man. That's bro, your level. How can you have no patience Come for your on. own stock? You're you the should king be short jungle, right now. Bro. Obi, we're going to have to... We're gonna have to uh, Talk about that yeah, King we're gonna of the have Jungle to have a chat. Uh, thing there. If you've got no patience <laughs> for for the, your own stock, it'll be Javier Cortez, two dollars super chat. Thank you very much, Javier. Uh, please tell Shop to break over today high. Absolutely. Let me just get on my phone, and I will give Shopify a call. Do they have a <laughs> call, Alfred? <laughs> call Alfred. Shaw says, yeah, there you go. Uh, they have a, they have a, uh, an office in Toronto, I'm assuming, right? Do we have? Yeah, they are based here. Okay, so yeah, they're based here. Uh, Shopify, shout out, Canadian company. Here we go. What are we looking at here? We're looking for high daybreak. Well, that's going to come at 46.72, so essentially 46 and three-quarter break. Uh, it's been a slower day for Shop. It's up 2.12%. We're about midway between the low and the high <laughs> day right now. We're at 46 and a quarter, low day. 45.67, as mentioned, 46.72 high a day. What's been the uh, latest outlook here for um, shop? Well, oh, I've got a trend line drawn that's holding, that's holding really nicely here, Max. Okay, our trend so line's my the trend new line, thing. My trend lines are. Trend you know, lines trend are line moving is averages. the new teal. No, trend line is no, the new teal. Teal is the new trend line, baby. That's T -T -T, how it is. T T T, trust the t trust the trend. Trust the triple trend, T, trust baby. the teal. I like it. Um, I here know. it is, guys. We, uh, we made recent highs at 58-ish area, but um, I think the better level is to get it somewhere near the lower area here, and that would be, that would be where we're at at the moment. Uh, we were definitely off October lows. Where did we get down to there? I think we were down at 24 bucks at one point. Wowzers. Yeah, this, obviously this is post-split, guys. This, guy, this bad boy split. What did split at? What was the split on uh, our friend... Uh, Shopify, forget if it, what was this sh split was on Shopify? 30, was it 30, 30 to 1, 20 to 1? Yeah. I forget. Um, anyway, 10 to 1 maybe. Okay, let's have a look here. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Let's go 10 minute, yeah. What was it? All right, uh, yesterday's high though, we had a big intraday move. 10 to 1, guys, that was a split, 10 to 1. Uh, intraday, uh, yesterday high, we got up to 48.75, so that'll be a top if we make it up there today. But 46.72, I don't know if it's in the cards. We're going to have to see some more uh, momentum coming in here. The volume really slowing down this. I, Ponzi we'll Fonzie saying, will the real Fibonacci Alfredo please stand up? Ooh, who's that? <laughs> Who is that? Is that Sean? Is that Sean? I think they call him, uh, do they, are you Fibonacci Alfredo? <laughs> no, <laughs> Ponzi, Ponzi, because well, well, you were talking about the fibs earlier. You couldn't get the fibs off your chart. So okay, Italian. there you go. And yeah, he's Italian, <laughs> exactly. Fibonacci, so Alfredo. No, no, I didn't. Uh, I have no idea who Alfred is uh, yet. Would trust him with my life. <laughs> there we go. I gotta send him that later. I sent him a little excerpt from this morning, guys. Uh, with respect to what we said about him on the morning show, uh, guys. Coin making a big boy move to the downside. It's a bit of a frowny face. 72.53. We're really moving here. We talked about that 70 level possibly being an area of support. We had a consolidation top uh, in the pre-market at that 70 before breaking it eventually. After after the bell, but uh-uh, 70 not going to hold. At least, uh, you know, we have we don't know. It could close above it, but for the moment, this five-minute candle indicating that we are Khwadunking on coin, moving aggressively to the downside. Are we seeing a move down on BTC? I am seeing BTC going down. It's not down on the day. It's one, up 1.7%, but uh, decided move down here on our front BTC and coin. Uh, looks like it's paying the price of that. Max. Yes, sir. That CXAI is still, uh, still making those higher lows, eh? That one, you know, trying to fake you out. Trying to fake you out for sure. Amazon trying to fake me out at 101. I didn't get faked out. Dang it, Still Amazon. holding this guy. Got my stop down a little lower, closer to break even. Uh, but probably time to take some more profit on Amazon if it can't take out these 20s very, very, very soon. Um, market still hanging out at the highs. Google, what happened to that 107 on Google? Never happened. Want drink? Uh, yeah, you getting coffee? Yeah, I'll take a like coffee. coffee. Sure. Thank you, sir. Gonna get some energy in the uh, 
in the broadcast today. <laughs> Sharif getting the coffees. Uh, yeah, so Google kind of broke that trend line, which didn't stay there for some reason. But uh, yeah, our trend line broken back to the downside. Still haven't seen 107. If we hold above 107, I will be long. Uh, but yeah, Google coming back to VWAP, everything kind of hanging out, pulling back, getting ready for the next move up. What is Meta doing? Meta kind of leading uh, some of these large caps today and still just doing nothing, hanging out below VWAP, kind of uh, chilling below the teal right now, see if it can break back above, hold VWAP, and then uh, make that next move up. I really thought we would see 220 today, but uh, the bell has not rung yet. So looking for that 220 on Meta, uh, probably take that break. That's a key level that we haven't seen in a very long time. So there should be uh, quite a bit of size up there. There should be some people who are looking to stop out above that 220. Um, so yeah, Meta can do volume this afternoon, get up there. If it does it around 3 o'clock, 3.30, that would be ideal. Don't really want to see it midday doing that break because there won't be the liquidity there to back the break up for me. Um, what else are people looking at? Can you check AI, please? I can check AI. I haven't had a look at this one today. Come on and load. AI, so still like hanging out in range. If you look at the uh, daily, I guess, since it uh, quadunked here last week, or two weeks ago, really hasn't done much. Bounced off that 20, Sean had that crazy long off 2040, which went to 23, and we're still kind of there. So I don't know, nothing really going on on AI, no catalyst yet, and as you can see, lightest volume since these down days is today, so yeah, nothing really going on on AI. I mean, if you like range trading, you can try to train, trade this maybe off of VWAP. It kind of held around here a few times, but I don't really see a trade on AI, maybe a triple top kind of action. This would have been a beautiful short, actually, off that 22.85, but uh, yeah, not really in play for me today. Doing a decent amount of volume, but uh, yeah, not, uh, not making any, any wild moves today. Um, let's see what's happening with this Amazon. So we're still hanging out on Amazon. Google starting to make the move back off VWAP. So I guess the VWAP buy is the way to go with Google today. But I want to see it, you know, prove that it's going to be super strong in the afternoon before I decide to take a long on that. Apple won't stop. Apple, I just didn't have on watch today because it's right in the middle of its range. Look at that. Just straight up on Apple today, 161 holds and you get 164. I haven't been looking at the markets this week, so what has Apple been doing? Yeah, basically double bottom there on 160 and then, uh, you know, does that daily breakout back to that 164. Obviously, 165 key level here on Apple. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say that doesn't happen today. If Apple wants to be strong this afternoon, we could definitely see that 165 break. I will be paying attention if that happens in power hour uh, because Apple breakouts at the end of the day tend to uh, kind of suck up to the next level uh, when, they, when they're good. They just kind of grind into the close. Thank you very much, Sharif. Um, what else is going on here? What else is going on? Okay. Oh, okay. Here we go. Meta. Meta trying to take out that 219. That's that 220. Yeah, I like well, the 220 idea today. If you can structure a long on Meta saying 220 plus is my target. So if you get it in like the low 218s, that means if you want like a 2 to 1, you can give it a dollar yeah. to 217. And I mean, unless Meta is super weak, you're probably not getting stopped out on that one. I'll tell you the truth. I wouldn't even give it to 217. I'm going to give it to low. The, the recent lows... Uh, after the breakout, which yeah. is 217 and three quarters. So 217.75, I've got my low below right here, my uh, stop below right here. So breaks that. I wanna see it hold VWAP because we are trending higher up into the right with higher lows on the NQ and the ES. So you assume, you know, we get into the more liquid part of the day and we're really close to that because we're five minutes away from one. Um, this one starts moving to the high side. At least that's what I've been waiting for. 218 hold the majority of the morning. Uh, we had a couple of tests below 218. They were immediately bought back up. I'm talking about the dips here that I picked up at two, uh, 217.94 initially, but the low there, 217.76. So uh, 
Yeah, for the most part, that 218 has been defended, but we, you know, we've been kind of consolidating, zigzagging here um, within a range for the better part of the morning after that big move up, though. But that 220 test was uh, was definitely in play this morning. 219.77 was the high there. Microsoft, good R versus R short, risk reward short. Yeah, um, 288.19 high on Microsoft. Uh, very similar chart to Meta where we kind of made that big boy move up and then it's been kind of consolidating, zigzaggy the rest of the day. Um, you got to assume 290 is going to be in the cart soon. In fact, we did get up to 290. What am I talking about? Back over here on the 6th. Yeah, the 6th, we got up to, where did we get up to there, Max? We got up 292.08. Yeah, so that was decent close. But we've been kind of in that range between 282 and 292, a bit of a $10 range going back to the end of March. I feel like we need a catalyst to kind of break out of that range on Microsoft because we're so high up right. since, uh, I mean, I don't remember trading. I wonder at, if like, it's going to be AI related. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, it has to be, right? right? Like, it's always been so AI-related lately, yeah. right? Especially with Microsoft. Who do you see coming out on the better side of that? Uh, I don't think they, like, the one race. person's going to win and one person's going to lose. There's plenty no, of no. different uh, uh Okay, so platforms. on the short term, I'll, I'll let you, by give you an even uh, more I mean, yeah, specific yeah, definition. Open Let's AI say is kind of killing it right now, and yeah. Microsoft owns, what, 20% of that? So, mm -hmm. yeah, Microsoft winning right now. Google has the user base, though, oh, yeah. with their Google That's search. Huge, so. Sure. You're really going to get people to switch to Bing with C3AI or I hate with uh, OpenAI? I Everybody dislike hates Bing. Bing. Everybody hates but, Bing, uh, for sure. they, I know a lot of people don't like Edge as well, but I use Edge. I don't know why at home. I use Edge. I use Chrome at home. I, I just use Chrome. Work here, but uh, they've incorporated it in the side, and it works quite well. I'm talking about ChatGPT. And they the have. thing is, you can kind of use it to get recent data. You say, search the internet for, and that's what that's a workaround with ChatGPT. You just tell it to search the internet. Right? And I've done that. I'm like, search the internet for this, this, and this, and then by virtue of it searching the internet, it's able to... It's giving uh, you... <laughs> I'm getting chokes texts here from people. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's able to get updated information. So that 2021 block or whatever, um, oh, you're okay. Able to you're getting around, around the. Uh, yeah, you just tell it to search the net. Now, maybe it's not as thorough of a response as you may have gotten yeah. from the original database, but it's still able to dissect that information for you, which I really like. I like Bro, that. Bro, there is a whole growing body of like knowledge and skill that's developing around prompt engineering. Exactly. And I'm getting a lot of these like memes that are showing me what to type into chat GPT in order to elicit a specific type of response. It's saying, here's what the prompt here's is. How Enter you use this. this. Yeah. To get your people your are work really done. giving it to you like flat out. The the thinking is really being removed. And all here. of that is like also teaching the chat GPT how Absolutely. to work better. So Absolutely. it's just like everything is Compounding. Yeah, machine learning still going Singularity in Singularity incoming. Bro, we're done. <laughs> we're done. We're done. We are man. done. We are just the meat machines we for the AI. We are done. They are going to be in control in no time. <laughs> but for now, you know, we can still try to make some trades before the AI bots put us out of commission. No, 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 no. We're good with the AI, bro. Don't say anything yeah, bad we're about good. the AI. We love the AI. No, 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 no. We're good with the AI. Love it. <laughs> tell me what to do. I am a terrible decision maker on yeah. my own. You know, I am just no tell me how threat to, to you. Yeah, no, I am no threat. <laughs> no threat. <laughs> just uh, do right, whatever you want. We're laughing about this now, but something tells me we may not be laughing for a while. All right, Meta back up into that 219 territory. We're creeping our way into the 80s. We're stair stepping up, but we're still within that range well, within that 218, 219 range that we've been in since 10 a.m. this morning. So looking for a decided break through 219. Let's see what we get. What are we up to with our CXAI um, trade here? We got in originally at 85s. The ad at 60s was good. We get back into 77s. Now we're doing a little bit of a dance, but I'm seeing consecutively higher lows, and that bodes well for a possible high of day test. That's what you want to see when you're approaching high days. Again, though, my out will be very specific. It's through this low of day through 20. Let's go ahead and put that in now. This is a quarter position initially, followed by a 10% position. So a 35% position being held here as you know, the stock is quite extended up 190% on the day. Let's go ahead and put that out for my stop. So my share is such, there we go. So we're gonna go 
ahead and put $4.19 and we're gonna give it to 15 in case it goes really huadunk um, and uh, the spread opens up. So we'll have a look at that. Back to Meta, same thing on Meta. As we are now one o'clock and maybe the volume picks up and we start pumping here to the high side. Full-time, part-time picker, Sharif. LOL, you are hilarious with that baby coffee mug. This is a Spro Cup, man. A Spro Cup. Spro Come Cup. On. Shout out uh, to the Spro God Luca, wherever he is at the moment. Luca Sproman. Luca Sproman, yeah. So this is uh, not a coffee, this is a Spro. This is a single, so this is a short. And then there's a bigger one, I'll show you that next time. It's very similar to this, but thicker. And that's a, is that a tall? Do they call it a tall or a double? When you get a double espresso. This is a short, double. right? Tall. Yeah, tall. It's just a double espresso. It's just a double, right? Yeah, it's a double spro, Sean says. So uh, there we are with that. <laughs> so no, it's not a coffee, a mini coffee mug, but that's funny. Havana Woody, hey, you, HYMC Bulls, don't forget November 2025 warrants, HYMC warrants at 1150, execute at the nickel right now. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. GFAI, baby, someone's yelling. GFAI, it is pumping to the high side, breaking through 32. It is really going now. It's about to test 35. Where's my GFAI chart? Oh, we got rid of it for our friend Netflix. GFAI, let's get into that. Wow, big move up finally for GFAI. It is now up 11 points on the day, but rejecting off 35. Oh. What could go wrong here, Max? The spread, scary as always on this, just a mere 15 pennies at the moment. But like you said, I, I really like the example you gave before you left. The spread technically is 15 pennies, but what really is it? I mean, uh, yeah, these levels. Is it 25? Is it 30? Here we go. Here comes 35, baby. It's about to break. 34. Where do we get up to there um, on this five minute candle? We got up to 34.95. We're 99s now. There it goes. There it goes. It goes up to the half dollar. No, that was a fake wick. Yeah, it did go up to the half dollar. 35.49. This one's really going. GFAI. Continuing its big boy move from yesterday, but you know, this is one that I'm not going to participate in. It's scary as hell. Uh, what a move on GFAI. Take from it, CXAI. Learn from GFAI and print me up here through fives. Let's go, bro. Where well, that's, is that sympathy play? That's what I was going to say. Like, start looking for the sympathy plays. If uh, GFAI is going to go, CXAI should be the next one. And I mean, it's right there at that high. It's right there at that $5. So, yeah, you look like you might be. Uh, can't even pull it up. You, might be, you look like you might be about I hope to I don't print quadunk, though. on this guy. Yeah, the problem with the GFAI is that thing can quite do ten dollars in like two <laughs> seconds. Shot a deal like that. Well, there we go, baby. Um, making like like flush. Aggressive yeah, aggressive Only to the downside though. To, to the, the downside. downside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, uh, we we need a quadunk animation, baby. Uh, we'll get that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, by the way, did we did we get anybody uh, emailing from the chat or from uh, the yeah for the animations? Oh, Remember we put that out. Yeah, we got a bunch. So shout out to you guys. Justin's working on it. Justin's working on it. <laughs> I feel like they've heard that before. Um, Justin is working on it, and we will be getting back to you guys with that. And it would be awesome, I think, for uh, the animations to come from our own viewers. I think yeah. that that would be so cool. We have a couple of new ones. Hit them, Sean. Right, we have uh, this one. Those are not from the viewers. <laughs> These are not from the viewers, but they are new nonetheless. I like that. Okay. Printing money yes. on his way. He's riding a donkey. I like that one. Okay. I see a theme there going. Oh, I like the green airplane. It's dropping money. You missed it. It was bombing oh, money. It. <laughs> it wasn't dropping bombs. It was oh, dropping money. I like that money. new bang. Yeah. Look at this one. It's... Oh, oh look yeah. At that I like that one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's classic. Okay, we're going to hit this one, though. We're going to hit this one because we haven't hit this one today. If you don't like the video right now, subscribe to the channel. I might dunk on you. <laughs> there you go, baby. There you go. You heard it from the man himself. Sweet New Bang says elevate the frequency. Uh, uh, Sharif, we need Arun to say hola. Yeah. Good luck with that, Renata, yeah, <laughs> because... Hola, like and subscribe today. <laughs> because Arun uh, refuses to do a promo, 
right? And so getting him to do one is uh, is tough. So if you can do it, great. Um, I, were you in that Google trade uh, earlier? Or were you talking about it? Because you liked it off VWAP, right? That consolidated uh, it. I mean, it's VWAP was highs again clearly the play on Google today. Yeah. But uh, I liked it to hold 107. So we're going to still see what happens here. I mean, volume pretty light relative to some of the other larger caps that are going. So... How much do I love Google? I don't know, but uh, I mean, we have those Friday highs here above 109, actually. Yeah, that was a crazy trade on, uh, on Friday. But uh, yeah, this 107 kind of area is key on the daily for that breakout to push new highs. Um, so yeah, Google, I mean, I like the idea of 110 breaking. I don't know if this 112 day is real. I would have to check that on a different platform, but uh, I'll do that now, actually, because I should know before I enter the trade. I like it. All right, meta no, back into the real. 80s. Sorry? Those were not real. But 112 is the level from, oh, my God, back here. So 112, next level on Google, kind of doing this, uh, whatever you want to call that, the cup with no handle yet. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we're kind of curling, we're curling back up on Google. So if we take out these, mm -hmm. like, 110s, 112s, Bump and it. next stop, Maybe I can't do this with this uh, wick there, but uh, yeah, next stops, I don't know. 122 after the split, I think is the high. None of these platforms will give me the uh, split information. But yeah, 122 kind of uh, next levels on Google. Sean's getting excited. What don't you want to go? No, I'm going to dunk on you. I said, I thought you were saying don't go. I thought you were short something. All right, yeah, no, Sean, there we go, baby. All right, so Sean is short, AMD and JPM, JP Morgan short there on Sean's, he's short at 60s on, the, on that one, on JPM. All right, all right let's get back, a J, 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 uh, G, F, A, I, kind of consolidating sideways a little bit, but the consolidation range is about a dollar and a half. It's a 35, uh, 50 top with a 34 bottom. So, I mean, yeah, to say it's, to say it's spready is, uh, is an understatement. That anyway, an you may, if you get a 34 dip, that may, be, uh, that may be a good trade. It's just the issue is how far do you have to give it? And on my chart, you got to give it to at least 32, 32 and a quarter. That's a lot. Uh, I'm not saying it can't. The R&R would not be there. It definitely is there. This thing can move five, six bucks at, on a dime. So it's there, but you have to size in accordingly because if you – size up and you're gonna give it, uh, like say you get in at 34 and then you get it at 32, that's two bucks or 32.50 is a dollar 50. So that's obviously, uh, that's obviously a lot, so. Um, Quadruple top on Apple, 164.20 yeah. that just broke, went to 21s. Man, Apple's, Apple's really the today. strongest Apple's name on the market. Today. Yeah, I, did, I hadn't even looked at this until 2. someone 5, in the chat. 2.56%. Yeah, I know. It hasn't been Apple's time. Apple's been stair-stepping up, though, very, very deceptively. Dude, we have, like, a 180-ish top on this. Yeah. Right? We're not that far from it. We're, we're what are we, 14 bucks off that top. That's the all-time high? It's 180-ish One, something. It was January, I believe. Let's go yeah, daily. Yeah, we go. 183.50, 183.30 kind of all-time highs on Apple. So, oh, yeah, Apple never up. really, uh, you know, we made this big move down. Yeah. And then it never really made the second move down that a lot of other names did. It just held that 125 price. And Solid. Just shooting up. I mean, Apple's, Apple Apple's is Apple. Apple staple, and Microsoft though. are the strongest yeah. names in the market. Always wow. are. Have been for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, Apple just showing its strength, just moving back up. I mean, this is still a big move for one of the biggest names. Yeah. Or the second biggest, whichever one is, decides to be the biggest today. Yeah. But, I mean, 125 up to 170 is All right, know, 45 on my... points. 33% move. Right. It's huge. Um, on my market cap watcher right now, Apple's market cap is 2.59 trilli. And then uh, our friend Microsoft is at 2.14 trilli. 2.142. Three now. So Apple, king of the jungle at the moment. Uh, not by a lot i mean i'm talking like hundreds of billions are not a lot but i mean <laughs> it's so funny everything's so relative yeah no uh, apple king of the jungle right now almost 2.6 trillion there was a time when it was the first one to hit three trillion yeah right but then uh, you know uh some people say aramco actually uh 
understates some of their assets. Yes, some people say that we don't actually know how big Aramco is, no. and uh, I probably agree with that. Yeah, Aramco, big boy, obviously the Saudi oil giant uh, there, and it's not a publicly listed company, obviously, it's a private company. I don't know. It is listed. It is listed? Uh, some of it oh. is listed. Oh, I didn't know that. I have no I idea. I thought it wasn't. I'm 90% sure. Okay. But Double check. Not that. sure. I think they listed like 10% or ah, something. I see. Okay, that makes more I don't sense. Know. But Aramco. The big boy for now, Apple, is uh, making Where new is highs. It Let's find out. Stock. Yeah. Aramco stock. Yes. It, what is that? T A D. Where is this? Saudi Arabian Oil Co. I thought they listed. S A R. It okay, so S A R is the ticker. Let's find out. Ooh. <laughs> Learning something new every day, baby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The oh, futures yeah. just blew up there. New HOD on the NQ. New HOD on the ES as we look to Saudi Arabia here uh, to, to look at some of that. But there we go. We get a pop through 219 on Meta. Uh, the, finding resistance again. So we'll take a little bit of peace out here as uh, we, we test those uh, levels again. But there we go. Apple, new HOD. Apple and Amazon really leading the market here. And Microsoft as well, also leading the market. Those three, real big right now, lifting it up. And uh, are we moving to the high side here, Max? Are we going to take Apple's out high days? screaming through highs. So, go, uh, baby. you know, Thursday, not options day, but looks like Apple wants that options level of 165 today, maybe 170 tomorrow. I like it. Who knows? Uh, but, yeah, Apple's still uh, smoking it to the high side. Uh, just like when it takes out that triple top, gives you 20 cents. Pretty simple trade that you could structure maybe a 10 cent risk and get 20 out of oh, it. Oh, baby. But I mean, I'd be holding this thing for the moon given all that volume that just went off on Apple and the market starting to rip. So if we look at ES, again, apologies for the black chart here. I haven't changed it yet. But uh, taking out that 41.55, that was kind of a key level. Was that yesterday? That was yesterday. So uh, yeah, next level is kind of 41.65. Oh my maybe. goodness, bro. And uh, yeah, we still have these highs that are very much intact. Um, maybe that uh, the, that dream of 13.250 comes true today. On the, it's uh, moving, on the baby. It's moving. Uh, 13.169 and three quarters, 41.59 on the ES. Take out some more through that uh, two. Where are we at? 219 um, and a quarter pop on Meta. Again, holding uh, within that range, but we're seeing constantly higher lows, and I'm looking for that top break. The top break will be that 29.50. Uh, we're still sitting at 40, uh, where do we? 34s. We still haven't been filled on that one. Nicole Harris. Shout out, Nicole. $5. I think uh, Nicole's from Atlanta, so shout out to Atlanta. Uh, Apple moves with Bitcoin, hence Bitcoin white papers on every Mac computer. I had to check both of mine, file called Simple Doc PDF. Yeah, I heard about that. I heard the original white paper was on the new OS update on Macs. You just had to like, there was a way to find it. I don't know why it was included in That's there. Uh, yeah, I saw it. Guess where I saw it, Max? I saw TikTok? it on TikTok. Hey, wow. man, this guy, he hasn't been next to me for that long, <laughs> but he already knows, bro. Um, yeah, I saw it on TikTok. Yeah, guys, you heard it here. Get all of your facts from TikTok and believe all of it. Hold on. No, that's not fair, man. Look, it plants the seed. It gives okay, you the okay. idea. I'm yeah. not saying extract all your information from there, but like get the, the little tidbit of knowledge and then go broaden your horizons <laughs> through appropriate sources. Uh, that's what I'm saying. But yeah, look at that. You're ex extending my... Uh, what is that called? When you extend my argument to its most absurd um, absurd conclusion, it's called, um, oh geez, man, I forget. Did you take a modes of reasoning class in undergrad? Uh, like, uh, you mean like? like so the, York, uh, you have to take four core class courses. Or whatever? Yeah, NatSci, yeah. a social sci, yeah. a modes of reasoning, and one other one I can't remember. Those were the four that you had to take no matter what if you were a Bachelor of Arts, right? And the modes of reasoning, this one was called uh, techniques of persuasion. And it kind of like, you know, the if then statements yeah, and how yeah, you yeah. structure like arguments and stuff like that. So we got to uh, argumentative fallacies. And there was one where you could take someone's like uh, proposition and take it to its most absurd end, <laughs> right? And yeah, like yeah. kind of paint it in that picture. And I forget the name of what that 
argumentative fallacy is. If someone in the chat I knows, am sure there's a smart person in the chat who can yeah, tell us. Yeah, there is that argumentative fallacy. I forgot. Something ad absurdium. It's something ad absurdium to its most absurd end. Something ad absurdium. I'm almost certain. It's not straw man, Damien, Damien, but good one. Reduction. Yeah, reductio ad absurdium. Yes, it was a Latin term. Reduction. So we're going to have to hit that, bro. Tick. What's that name? Tick I? <sighs> Reductio ad, Clayton Brun uh, coming in with that as well. Thank you. Yes, Red coming in with that as well. Yes, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Shout out to you guys for that. We got some intelligent dudes and, and ladies in the chat, by the way. All right, well, let's take some more out there. Through uh, that 219, we're hanging out at 219.10. Uh, ultimately, though, we want to test high a day. We're still holding well over 50% of the position, and in fact, much more. Um, on this meta trade, it's been a range trade so far, but range trade at near day's highs above VWAP. So, you know, it's got all the right signals if you're looking for a top break so far. It's just, you know, it's got to materialize. Yeah, it took a little bit more out on this Amazon as well. It went right up to the same price and then fell back down. Uh, the reason that I took some out here is because you can't see it now, I don't think. No, but there was a thousand lots at. 101.33 just sitting there, uh, kind of random price, random uh, offer. So I got out a little bit in front of that. Um, yeah, just still hanging out in this one. But uh, I don't know. We're going to need some real volume in order for this to take that offer out. Uh, maybe this Google taking out 107 right now will be enough to get us through that. Uh, and Apple still testing that 164.20 price. So here's Google. Going through 107, we'll see what this break looks like, see what uh, the bids look like when it pulls back into 107, and then maybe get long Google for that uh, next push up to that 108 level, which I really like, and then 110, 112, 112 uh, which would be the next stops. But uh, not really thinking that that's going to happen today. I'm just looking for a dollar here, probably risking 30-ish cents, um, you know, three to one. Love those and see if we can trend for the rest of the afternoon. I think it's really just going to depend on what Apple wants to do here. If that will, uh, no, yo. Yep, yeah, if, if Apple higher. decides to keep trending, holding the 50, then the market's going to keep going up, basically. Where is resistance on Apple? Like, we really haven't looked at the daily chart for this one. I'm going to go like, into it here. Psychological, right. but okay. So we've been higher lately, dude. Um, some days I just forget the price action that we've had. Looks like on the fourth we got up to 167, rejected off 167. The the high exactly that day was 167. The day prior to that we got up to 66.31. The day after that the the open was 65.80. So you know 67 a clear top. Do we see that today? Don't know, but you know it's been stair stepping up. Apple after, I was going to say October lows, but this one didn't do October lows like the majority of the market. Uh-uh. This one had January lows. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting divergence there from the overall market. We saw meta lows in October. We saw NASDAQ and ES lows in October, but nah uh Apple held up, and it made its lows back into 125 here right at the beginning of the year. But look at that. Since the 6th of the year, January, sorry, 6th of the year. Since January 6th, it's been, you haven't had um, a lower low since that time. So it's been up and to the right. Again, like Max was talking about, we saw the 183 top. Looks like the next level that we have to contend with here on the long-term chart is gonna be that 175, right? And that's the this peak over here, and I'm looking at the daily, and then obviously after that, we have that 180 test. And that's even though we broke above 180, eventually, ultimately, though, it is 180 that will be the level, I would say. So Apple looking fantastic, man. If you've been buying that in the beginning of the year, um, lines with our numbers. Um, I have to check, Neil. I'm not exactly sure. I'll just have a look in a second. Um, yeah, so Apple has been having a, a hell of a year, Max. Yeah, Apple looking strong. Google broke that 107, showed me the bid that I wanted to see. So I'm in kind of half size right now at 107. My stop is kind of below here, below the, uh, below the teal, like 79s. So we'll add more into here if it happens. If we take out the high, no real structure to be able to add to this. But uh, 
yeah, basically just looking for like a three to one on Google, get like 90 cents up to that uh, 108 level because NASDAQ and ES both looking like they want to trend this afternoon and Apple's still strong. So see what happens on Google. High right now, 107.09. So just take out that 09, that 10 level. And then uh, we'll see some profit takers in the 30s, I believe, if I go find my levels. Yeah, like. Oh, baby. Yeah, 30. So I'll, I'll offer out 29s for the first one. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see where we go from there. Uh, All right. But looking good. And Amazon as well. So yeah, I Sharif, bet. We can see that offer now on 33 there. 1,000 lots. So if the bots are listening, please take this out for me so that I can print. Uh, 10133, the problem on Amazon. But, oh, there we go. They were listening. There you go, baby. Right through that 33, offers out at 50. Amazon looking strong. Oh my goodness. Google probably still looking good, looking okay. Uh, yeah. The market. Oh, now does someone not puts care. another offer back on that 32. So maybe somebody trying to sell this area. We did deem this a key kind of level. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess uh, we break 101 again. I'm done with this one, but. Yeah, still, uh, still like an Amazon. Uh, where is Google? Still above 107. So, yeah, just take out the highs, guys. Come on. All right, guys. A dollar in a dollar thirty almost now in the money on this meta trade. Two eighteen oh five longs. So we evacuate all those. Uh, this this trade here. This is kind of what got us above that 218 like look, these two entries were both at 218 and then we added on this fake breakout and that kind of that's what messed up our cost basis we had a 218 below 218 actually cost base now we're back in there as uh, those shares have been liquidated and now we are holding our cost basis is 21805 so let this one run we're going into the 40s again max we're knocking on the door here i'll take out some at 37s but ultimately you want to see that 50 break and then that 77, 219, 77 high. But you got to assume that if you're going to make it up to 77s. You're making it to 20s. There you go. You I think that, that I think if you buy 77s into 20s, that's got to be like 90% probability for me. Like that, uh, these, these stocks, they always go to key levels. They always go. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying take the breakout, but I do like the 220 breakout if it comes maybe at 3 o'clock, not right now no, in the middle of the day. No, definitely not. I mean, I like the fact that we're now 120, almost 130. It's probably a little bit more liquid than 12 to 1, right? And you're seeing that reflected in the move up. Uh, liquidity, the volume is increasing a little bit here on uh, some of these futures contracts from what I can see. And not so much, though, on uh, these big capper names still towards the lower side of uh, the volume, I would say. So we're ascending higher on lighter volume. That is a good observation, Max. Um, all right, back to the small cappers. We've been talking big cappers. Let's bring in the small cappers because they're definitely in play. Uh, what's that trade that we've got doing on our friend CXAI? Our friend CXAI is disappointing so far. Thankfully, this is a, a small boy trade at 35% uh, position here. But, mm, you know, the out is going to be through the 20s, like we talked about, 420, 425, that area is... No, 420. Four, uh, 420, I know. Every I, small cap is 420. Uh, right? Nothing I can do about that. That's the level, <laughs> what can I say? Uh, below that, we've already got our stop in place, so if this one gets uh, stopped out, it gets stopped out. But it's holding the 50 period. It hasn't really broken uh, and made a newer low, so let's not... Uh, start writing its obituary quite yet. Uh, back to the meta trade. Now, this five minute candle that I got on my chart has a high of 39s, we're at 36s, so we're real close to breaking the high of this five minute candle uh, and then continuation into 50. In fact, let's sit here with a little, uh, a small out, we'll sit at 44, because what's life without whimsy? If we get printed there, uh, great, and then we'll test some on the other side of 50, maybe we'll sit at 55s at that point, Max. Yeah, hanging out here on Google, waiting for the uh, the dip buy into like the 85s, and then uh, we'll stop out like 79, basically below this consolidation. Um, but yeah, I mean, market's still strong, still hanging out at highs. Yeah. I am kind of worried that ES has not yet taken out that uh, that 60. Is just hanging out below, not yeah. really making new high on the 15. You know, in a strong manner, it's like 50 pennies for that uh, little breakout. So I want to see ES 
moving higher and definitely not taking out this uh, 55 kind of area uh, for these longs of mine. But uh, yeah, just kind of waiting, waiting for, for the right prices. Don't want to chase anything. Amazon still has that offer at uh, the 32s here. So, you know, if the bots are listening again, <laughs> there's 1,500 more lots for you. You can have them Do we, right uh, now at 101.32. You know, last stop bots, because uh, I got that 102 offer. I'm, uh, I'm not canceling it. I like I'm not it. canceling that offer. <laughs> Do you think we see uh, 77s on uh, the ES? We got, we got up there yesterday on uh, the initial CPI print. I know you weren't here for that, but was there was not, the sadly. CPI print popped up super aggressively on the algo spike in the morning, and then basically we sold off all day off that number. Yeah. Uh, this is what I'm talking about right here. So this is probably an interesting area of resistance. Let me just bring that in so you guys can follow along. Uh, we're at 59.50, so Max was talking about that 60 level, definitely in play at the moment. But yesterday, um, we on good volume too. Now you gotta assume it's an algo move here because it was the reaction to the print, but we did get up to 77, 75. 41, 77, 75, that 8.30 a.m. pop. Um, yeah, so we'll be seeing if we can continue to there. Uh, that would be interesting move there on the ES. Yeah, I think it all depends on our boy Apple now. So mm -hmm. if Apple uh, you know, takes out the high, gets above these, uh, these 50s, kind of, you know, magnets into 165 where these names want to be at these even kind of $5, $10 levels, then the ES is going to keep crawling up. But uh, yeah, if Apple's done here, gives up the, that 164, then, you know, ES probably, probably done for the day. But uh, yeah, I don't know, we're just still hanging out in these yeah, great man. longs, right? I mean, yeah. Google not looking so great anymore, but uh, I'm going to add to that one more time if we hold oh, up crap. here on the market. Um, right, and cool, yeah, yeah, stopping out below the, the 50 here. On <laughs> Neil asking in the chat, how do you spell quadunk? All right. That's, that's good spelling, man. Yeah, it is. I like that spelling. But like, I have the ch, because I'm Arabic, right? So yeah. we, we say that naturally in a language. You guys, English people don't say that. They say that the Q or the C. I got to do KH on this one. So I'm going to have to go. I'm going to type it in the chat. Here we go. Kwa dunk. All right, I'm going to go K H W A D double O N K. Um, maybe we should get a, an interesting poll on how to spell Quaduke. And if, say it again? And he wants a definition. And he wants a definition. You know what? I don't know, Neil. I haven't come up with one yet, but essentially it, the, work, the, the working one is that it goes down and it goes down aggressively, and it only down, not up. Aggressively down. Quaduke, D Loaf says. All right, our Ben Nguyen saying the way that I want as well. Said Judd says, K-W-A-D-O-O-N-K. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not even going to re uh, repeat that one, actually. Come on now, man. Uh, two, two, I don't even know how to say that. I don't know about that, man. I, I don't know either, dude. I'm kind of, it's a, it's a work in progress. I'm going as I go here. Everybody has their, uh, their version of what, dude. Put in your best one. Qualcomm, someone says. No, 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 no. That's not Qualcomm. Just because there's a Q there, it doesn't equate uh, to Qualcomm. A stock that flushes. Yes, Ron John. Ro John. Exactly. A stock that flushes, essentially. That's what it is, Max. Starting there to fly on Amazon now. We are, man. The, uh, the bots listened. They took, the, uh, they took that offer there in one go. And now we're up to 40s. Just print me 50s. And uh, yeah, we're, we're kind of flying here. So Amazon looking great. Look at this volume spike when they take these offers here. And then, uh, yeah, if we can continue now, now it's going to look very good for that move up to that 102 <laughs> level, which is my next stop on Amazon. What are these guys saying in the chat? Oh, man, hilarious. Think of the Nissan 240SX. Oh, I remember that's a 90s car, is it not? Uh, I got to pull that up. I'm pretty sure uh, that's one that of those is need for a speed. 90s. Uh, yeah, hold on. Yeah, Nissan Fast and 240. Furious uh, there it is, SX. Okay, We're not for sale. We don't want that. Yes, this is exactly what I'm thinking about, man. This is oh, like yeah. me in high school looking up cars that I could not afford. Remember the Honda CRX? That's a beauty. Uh, man, that was a car back, and that's what I used to love back in the day. Hatchback, yeah, Sean knows exactly what I'm talking about. This Honda CRX, this is what I was talking about. Honda 
CRX, oh my goodness, yeah, this was it. And like you put the Alteza white lights on this, oh my God, no one even knows oh, what Alteza lights? lights anymore. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. These are Alteza, Honda CRX Alteza, um, I don't even know how to spell it, Alteza lights. Let's see if one comes up. Yes, these are it right here where they were see-through and you could only see like the red, oh my goodness. These are the white lights for it. So their white lights came out first, then Altezas came out after. I like the white lights a lot better than the Alteza lights on this, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Um, I think MAD is the Moroccan uh, Durham. Yes, 50 Moroccan Durams from Lord TV. Hi guys, can you check XRP USD? Thanks, you are the best. XRP, that's a uh, crypto, right? That is a okay. crypto. So, let's, uh, let's pull up this trading view. XRP, what was that one? XRP USD. Yeah. Tether US, it's a tether, yeah. XRP, what's, uh, nothing's happening here on XRP, guys. In a consolidation, tiny little day on XRP, yeah. so consolidating, call it a bull flag if you wish. I probably would, and uh, yeah, get over this like 53 cent level for the next move up on XRP. Obviously, a ton of room on all of these altcoins back up to the upside. So uh, yeah, next next altcoin rally, who knows where this one goes, but for now, consolidating, basically doing nothing. Uh, but I mean, looks good off the bottoms, 35 cents to 58 cents. It's like almost 100%, pretty good. Maybe uh, next stop $1, I guess. Call this when it's over a dollar. XR. Yeah, is that, uh, does it have like other functions other than, you know, you're not know a crypto guy, is. right? Like, I mean, like, you know how like there's smart contract functions on ETH and stuff other than just being uh, a security? Well, let's not call it a security just quite yet. Uh, unless uh, Gary Gensler had his wish, he'd be calling it a security, I think. <laughs> uh, shout out Gary. All right, AI making a top. Renato was asking me earlier, um, do you see a possible head and shoulders on AI? And I said, I don't know about that, Renata because I'm seeing consistently uh, higher lows here on AI, and that's what we're kind of getting at the moment. We bounced off that, I wanna say uh, VWAP, it was a nice VWAP bounce here at 22.40, and now we're gonna make a new local high. Um, in fact, we could make high a day, I believe. We're like four pennies, two pennies now, a 22.87, uh, the high a day on AI. We're about to break that right now. We're at 83s, 84s, it is up three uh, and two thirds percent on the day. A bit of a compression pattern with higher lows, but not much in the way of higher tops. Could we really big boy into uh, into the clear over here? Yesterday, we had a top, uh, not even yes, yeah, yesterday. We had a top uh, pre-market. This is pre-market, by the way, guys. This is on the CPI print. We got up to 23.60. We're at, uh, there we go. We break the high now. We just printed a new high on AI. So AI waking up. Uh, I'm looking for a possible maybe 2360. There's a bit of a gap here that needs to be filled. So we shall see Andy Fischella, $20 super chat. Thank you very much, Andy. You two together have great vibe and energy. Good calls on midday markets when things slow down. We're going to spend the money, money for you. Money, and money, money, thank you very money, much money, for that money, comment. Money. I appreciate you, Andy, and a good friend and viewer of the shows. Here we go on AI, though. We're about to touch 23, though. I don't know. Oh, is AI catching that uh, that bid? AI, I mean, 4% now. What is the short interest reported on AI yet? Let me give that a check real quick on trade ideas. And nothing will ever load for me on this computer. So, <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay, yeah, short flow is still sitting at 30%. I'm guessing it's a lot higher than that because it takes about a month, I yeah. believe, for them to report. I'm guessing it's probably closer to 50 at this point yeah. on, uh, on AI. So this one definitely able to run. I have not had any trades on it since it was at like that $28, $30 level when I was trying to short it at 30 and it was running at 34 or something crazy. Uh, but yeah, AI, I mean, people probably betting that that accounting fraud thing might not be totally true. And I mean, I don't know who this capital firm well, is that reported okay, that they right. have accounting issues. We know that they're great. They're called C3AI. They have yeah. AI in their name. But what do they actually make? Do they, have I used anything? Let's, <laughs> let's read some other stuff here. C3AI is an enterprise artificial intelligence. So they're doing enterprise AI. Uh, artificial, artificial intelligence company. The company provides software as a service SaaS application that enables development of enterprise scale AI applications. Okay, so 
they enable deployment of enterprise scale, scale AI applications, okay, so they provide the network for that. C3 AI provides two families of software solutions. One is the C3 AI suite and the C3 AI applications, okay? So you got the suite and you got the apps. It's C3 AI suite is an end-to-end -end platform as a service allowing, so a pass platform as a service allowing uh, customers to design, develop, provide, and operate enterprise AI applications. The company's customers can utilize the C3 AI suite to build, their, to build and operate their own enterprise AI applications. Okay, so kind of, uh, yeah, I see, I see what it's going for there. It's moving, so it just broke 23. Uh, it's going here, so AI is making that move through the day top. It is now up 4.5% on the day. We were just talking when it was up 3 and a third percent. It's since broken through that. That top there at the 80s has been broken. Good move for AI. Again, I, uh, you know, I believe that we'll find if we make it up here resistance at 2360. Uh, that is the level, the high yesterday going into yesterday. That was on the algo spike. So. Uh, keep an eye out for that if you're long. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That 2360 seems like the uh, the spot on AI. Uh, if it rejects 23 here and and breaks back down, maybe you could do a short. But I mean, it did the double top, and now it's breaking the high. So mm -hmm. all of these people under that double top are now getting squeezed. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't be looking at AI for really anything <laughs> until it gets to like 2360. I think that's like the breakout spot for that move up to those uh, 25 highs, I believe it was. Yeah, these 25-15 highs. Yeah, that's where, that's where it is. 23.60, breaks to 25. If it rejects 25, that's where you can really get a money short. Yeah. Maybe get a dollar out of that one back down to 24, 23.50. You gotta put an alert for right that now, one. Yeah, exactly. Right now, like, we're still inside this consolidation range. 2360 down to 21.50. Yeah, I've been that way for a while. Looks yeah. like, yeah. All right, uh, the futures still at days high, both on the ES and the NQ, and we're uh, we're continuing to scalp baby outs here in front of this 219.50 on Meta. I want to save the majority of my position through the break of the half dollar. I think that's when we we will really move and maybe put in a test into 220 like Max and I were talking about earlier. Yeah. Apple breaking the highs Apple too. is breaking highs, 164.62 now, high of day up and to the right Apple, oh baby. Um, and you're seeing good highs as well on Amazon. I just printed 101.46s there, so those two very strong. Meta also uh, only 40 pennies off the high, likewise with Microsoft about like 30, 35 pennies off the high. Uh, Google, eight pennies off the high, but you know, that one slowed down a little bit. And then Stressla, it's a buck 17 off the high, so not much to say about that. But there we go, we get the fill on Meta through that 44 break. Yes, a dollar. The patience on that one. Man, You've been in that one all day. All day, baby, all day. This was the entry over here. This was back at 10.30. Uh, then you add again through the fake breakout at 10.48 and then the dip back into 118, sorry, 218 at 11.27. So it's been an all day type trade, but it's been paying the bills. Let's take out some more in front of the half dollar here. Good trade to the high side. Yes, Brando Commando, Microsoft is at Microsoft. that level, but it's Apple, the big kahuna, 164.66 HOD. Apple saying it wants to be the biggest market cap in uh, in the market. It is. Um, I, uh, the position board, uh, we're going to get that fixed up. We're just uh, dealing with that at the moment, guys. Uh, but that will be up shortly. Um, let me just see here. We have a, a Nicole Harris. Sorry. She sent a super chat. I missed that. Sorry, Nicole. $2. Oops. Thank you very much, Nicole, for that. What about Chase earnings tomorrow? Banks, hedge, yeah, banks coming in hot and heavy tomorrow, Max, finally. Bank earnings are going to be exciting, I think. I mean, I think if they outperform, you short the pops, and if they underperform, you chase the short, because I don't think anybody's buying banks right now. Well, uh, can I say something with respect to that? I think we got a couple of categories. We got the uh, mid and small cap size banks that have the problems Which, with... Uh, those ones are hard to uh, trade. Yeah, I'm not but. touching that. <laughs> but uh, the bigger cap names, they've, they've done a little bit better lately because they've been yeah. taking all the business away from these guys, right? All the money's I, been flowing to them. 
I, I like for the short, though, that they've been kind of floating up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And now, oh, even if they perform well, then people are going to be there selling, for sure. People yeah. who bought the dip, people who are scared of this bank thing, who missed their yep. chance to, uh, to sell earlier. So I'm going to be looking short on all bank earnings. I will not be going long any banks, no matter what. And uh, Google just touching the highs. I missed my ad here on Google down at that, uh, uh, what is it, 50 period. And, uh, but I added a little bit, and now we're through the highs on Google, so looking for that 107.10 break, and we're going to be taking some out at 29s, I believe, I had. Uh, so yeah, Google looking good, Amazon looking good. Amazon took out that 101.50, so my only offer left on Amazon is 102, and then we'll be holding 20% of the position for whatever dream there may be on this one. I haven't even uh, thought about what the dream is on Amazon yet. Let's take... <laughs> Let's go to the... Uh, I don't the, know what the dream is. The 30-minute. Uh, 102.65 is the dream on Amazon, so... Oh, baby. That will be the final out if we get up there. I uh, I don't think we're going to get up there today, but never if we do, never. you know, you're going to hear me clapping in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. You never know. Maybe you'll be clapping on the show. All right. Maybe, we got uh, We got to get to another uh, super chat. 499 from Ian Respeto. I hope I didn't butcher your last name there. What do you think about JP Morgan going into earnings tomorrow from what you can best guess by the info you know? Mr. Beat, hoping it will go up. All right, so you, you know, I'm obviously not uh, qualified enough to give you a, uh, a fundamental analysis of what um, JPM is doing, but let's have a look at the chart. Here we go. Let's go duplicate free floating window as we continue to print big boy here on Meta. Uh, there we go. We get the fill. Meta now testing high day. 77 is as high of day. We're at 71. So here we go again with Meta. All right, let's go to the time frame on the daily for JPM. Okay, so, okay, I don't like this chart. I'm going to bring in this other one. One second over here. I'll get to that one in one second. Sorry for the anticlimactic action here. Uh, JPM, there we go. Let's go daily on this one. There we are. All right, so we make October lows like many of uh, the equities on uh, these exchanges here on JPM. We, 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 did we get to 100 bucks? Man, we got to 101 bucks. We almost touched 100 on JPM, and it's been stair stepping up. Now, obviously, it's sold off over here on the banking news. Hard to say, man. I mean, look, if you're looking at it from a big picture perspective, we heard about all the inflows. We heard about 40 billion, 50 billion in one week with some of these banks. I don't know if it was Morgan Stanley or Goldman or whoever was reporting that kind of inflows. Obviously, it had to leave from somewhere. So many banks, uh, mid and small, have had this problem, and the benefactors have been these two big-to-fail names, JPM, probably uh, high there among them. Now, you know, that's how, the, how that reflects on uh, going forward is tough for me to understand. I'm just, the finance is not my background, and the price action looks good, though. Uh, you're holding this bottom, this 130 bottom. We're in and around it. Uh, that's... Like when we, this is an obvious 130 level of, over here. We, we have a lot of price action at 130 over here. When we retrace, we break it. Uh, so now it's looking like it's a bit of a, a resistance level. We'll have to get above 130. But look at how the 50 and the 200 are really closely tight together there. That gives you an idea that we may be in a bit of a consolidation pattern on this one. I don't know. We'll have to see uh, what earnings does. But when you get these two indicators, especially on the daily, real close, it's usually a bit choppy. What is a weekly show on this bad boy? Yeah, likewise. Same thing with the weekly, man. Really close together, the 50 and the 200. Uh, on the weekly, the 50 is above the 200. That's what you want to see. What's on the daily, likewise, with the daily, you got the golden cross over here, but they're awfully close together. Um, from a technical perspective, it looks range bound, but that could change on a whim if earnings really come in and propel this up. But yeah, I, I personally wouldn't hold it in earnings, but that it looks like you're already into the position, so I wish you luck on that. If anything, if there was a, to be a bank I'd invest in, it would be some of the big names. It wouldn't be some of these smaller names, even though you know some of the smaller names may have more potential upside because they're, they've sold off so much. Um, hope that helps. <laughs> We're hanging out here, Sharif. We are, dude. We and just I'm come on, on here, this one, man. get long, money, money, large caps, money, and print money, 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 every day. Money, money. It's crazy. It's good. Mad Max is long Google. He's long Amazon. He's printing on both. It's a good day. Yeah, let's um, see if we can get this. These futures, they continue to stair step up to the right. 41.63.75 on the ES. 13.188 
on the NQ. Meta's high of day still holding out at 77s, but I've been scalping through uh, with heavier size, as I said I would do through the 50s. Uh, but we're looking for ultimately that 22 test. We may see it soon. It is 145. Um, the show, the big, the big boy closing show, is going to be coming on in about um, a quarter. Uh, yeah, a quarter hour. Quarter hour. A quarter hour. On the quarter hour. All right. All right. Uh, reliable Rudy. Is that long on CXAI accurate for your positions? Thanks. Yes, Rudy. It is. This is where I got in initially. I got in with a quarter position here, 485. Let's say I added a 10% position on this dip into 460. It's holding the 50 period. I have my out set up for the dip below 420. Yes, ironically, it is 420. If it breaks and makes a new low here, I'm out. Otherwise, I'm looking for a 50 period hold and a high day test through five. We re initially rejected off five on CXAI. I thought maybe round two would be a little bit different. How much it cost me to find out? A, qu a quarter and then a 10%, so a 35% position. Still holding levels, not gonna get out of this trade. I'll let it stop me out, if anything. New York, 499 Super Chat. Thank you very much for that. Says, Delta was a good trade. What do you think? Good, good long term for the next quarter? Look, I'm not gonna give you financial advice, but Brendo and I were talking about that this morning. Delta showing a lot of positive stuff. We've talked ad nauseum about consumer spending shifting from goods to services. And um, one of the biggest benefactors of that spending shift has been the airlines and hotels and anything travel related because people have been spending on experiences rather than goods. And, you know, we saw that you know, confirmed by their forecast. They didn't, they didn't do that well in Q1, but that was because of the weather and there was a whole grounding thing that they had there. Um, and uh, yeah, it was more, mostly weather related that they had an issue with. And remember, the airlines were all grounded there for a little while. But Q2, and usually Q1 is the worst time of the year for the airlines. Q2, Q3, much better. It looks like they're... Uh, they're forecasting a 17 to 20 percent year-over-year increase in Q2. They said that their revenues from uh, their, their business and first class actually um, outpaced their revenue from economy. I'm not talking about margins. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about actual total revenue coming in more from first class and business than they did from economy. So that's huge because that's where they make the majority of the money. They don't make money on the economy stuff. It's the upgrade stuff that they're making money on. That's where the margins are. So that's what they, they want to see. So some good indicators coming in for Delta. Now, if you're, if you're taking the position that consumer spending will continue to be strong into the year, yeah, maybe this is your play. Um, I hope that helps. Anyway, back to Meta. Back to these days highs again. Haven't broken through that 77 high, but we have come awfully close, Max. We got up to 73s here. Is nice. that another super chat? Yeah, we had another super chat from Mardi Cat. Thoughts on NVIDIA. Looks like a big wall at 270. I kind of agree. It, uh, NVIDIA was, oh, these wicks are so bad. But NVIDIA was holding above 270 for a long time. Now it breaks back below yesterday. Has, these, uh, has this resistance here at 270, and we're just trading below it. So maybe the short off 270 is money on NVIDIA. Obviously, the long today off the bottoms was quite money. Just shoots up that $5 from those 263, 264 lows. Uh, but yeah, definitely a strong, Let's go, Meta. strong level in front. And now everything kind of taken off. Waiting for my 102 on Amazon. Just, uh, I did get a little other piece out here because I didn't really like how it was trading, but uh, yeah, maybe I should just walk away from this one, set my offer. I need to set that uh, 102.60 offer for the last uh, 20%, but yeah, Amazon crushing this trade, $1.10 in the money now, and uh, Google now like 20 cents, so took a little tiny piece of Google out uh, on this consolidation, and now looking for this to take out the highs, get something out in front of 30s, and then, uh, yeah, hold the rest, probably for the dream. Uh, we'll see what that is. I had 108 as a target. I initially. like it. There it's it is. not really accelerating, though, so I think I might have to lower that target a little bit on Google. Maybe we get 50s today. 
But uh, yeah, this Old one kind baby. of slow versus your Meta and my Amazon, which are just ripping faces off at the moment. Max, we are a dollar eighty in the money, 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 money on money, Meta. Money, We're money, along two seventeen ninety eight. We're back up to two nineteen high seventies. We just tested again that seventy seven high. So we're you know we're almost two bucks in the money. Uh, still holding uh, a. a the, the majority of this, I would say, but you know, you gotta expect, you gotta expect uh, we're gonna have a lot of resistance at this 220. I don't know if we can really get there um, freely without really finding uh, some, some I'd turbulent say headwinds. I'd, I'd say, say it breaks too. Here we go again. Are we back up? No, we're not quite at 77s. We're at 76s again. So we're really testing, knocking on the door of high days. We are at high of day. On the NQ, we are at high of day on the ES, so this all makes sense. Uh, Everything yeah. just cruising to the upside. Yeah, yeah, baby. I mean, I was kind of joking when I said 13200 today, but uh, here we are, just still going. Everything's light volume, though, once again. Whatever. I feel like we just cruise up on light volume yeah. these days. Whenever it's a it light is. volume day, someone just turns the sell algo off and just lets things go up. And that's exactly what Brendo said to me the other day. He's like, dude, do you look, see how much we're going up on the indexes on the daily and compare that to before with respect to volume? The volume yeah. is much lighter. Yeah. That gives you an idea how much money is actually sitting on the sidelines waiting to get in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel that that's kind of good for the bulls because if we keep going up on lighter volume, eventually this money on the sidelines is going to want to partake. Right, and then once they come in, uh, we could really see ourselves moving here. I mean, like that's the way I see it. The way uh, I see it is like either way that it goes when the volume comes in is going to be, you know, strong. As long as there's volatility. So if there's panic that comes in, then that selling is going to really tank things. If there's a ton of buying and positivity that comes in and it's on strong volume, I mean, if we can do this on light volume, what can we do on strong volume? That's what I'm volume? saying. Yeah. And Ron asking a decent. I mean, no, who's who's asking that? Yeah, Ron. Who would want to buy with action like yesterday? I mean, not sure. I mean, you're going to have those days where you're like, oh, my goodness, what? why are we going down? We got a positive CPI print, this and that. I mean, because we also got the Fed minutes. And we saw that, you know, some of them were thinking 50 bips until the whole banking thing. We saw what their outlook on the banking issue was like. A lot of them think that it's worse uh, than, you know, initially... Uh, stated it would be we saw uncle warren as well come on cnbc yesterday <laughs> for three hours from tokyo and give us his take on what he thinks the banking issue and that you know so there was a lot of uh things to digest today we got the ppi print it was good and it was another i guess confirmatory signal that inflation is easing and you know the market kind of reacting did we break through yesterday's highs on the es let's look at the es here real quick uh, no so yesterday's high What's this? What am I doing here? No. Come to my chart for a second. Yesterday's high, yeah, we said our 77s. That was the algo spike, so we're still uh, 12 points off that from today's high. But so I not mean, quite 12 yet. points, that's, 12 that's points. nothing. No. Yeah, I, no. Uh, I really didn't think that we could get to yesterday's highs, but now looking like we can. I mean, if it's going to be an inside day, it's got to turn around pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, but all these names taking off. Google making new highs. Oh, Amazon baby. making new highs. What's Meta up to? And CXAI no decided to no wake way. up. Oh, baby. Are we 100% uh, on the show right now? What? Are we 100% right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. We got haven't had trades. any losers. It's CXAI and Meta. I mean, Zero I losers else. for yeah, the yeah. midday show. First time money, ever, probably. Money, 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 <laughs> money, money, <laughs> We're crushing money, it today. Money. There we go, man. All right, CXAI making a move. Here comes $5. We're knocking on the door, 490. 490 broke. Here come the mid 90s. Uh, we're long 79s. You know, it's oh, nothing to get excited about. Juicy. I just want that 510. Let's go 510. Here comes 497. Uh, did I take a piece out of this? No, I haven't taken anything out of this. So the uh, here it is, baby. There we wow. go. We get the 510 break. Let's uh, go. Watch the Hwadunk, though. Uh, this is very <laughs> Hwadunk like. So this could happen at any time here. Uh, oh, let's we're going three. Yeah, no, dude, I'm telling you, this could turn around on a dime. This is bamboozlement central, these stocks are. Here comes back down into five. We're long 76s as a result of the cost base. There it is, right back into the 80s. Why did, I didn't know it was going to do this, right? Like, it's, <laughs> it's so bamboozling. Um, all right, you always gonna, know gonna when hold. you're not involved. Right? 
right? Yeah. But once you're once you're long, it's like, no, it's not gonna do that. Right? It's not gonna do that. But As look it's at them doing push that it back max. Up. Okay, I, forget about CXAI. Look at Meta, <laughs> man. We are gonna hit 220. Oh, baby. Apple looking right, for we'll 165 as well. All right, the long term is happy at the moment. Uh, as we knock on the door of 220, where'd we get up to? 219.95 HOD on our friend META. What a day it's been for Meta. It's up two and three quarter percent, five dollars and eighty cents. It's been a good couple of days for our friend Meta. There we go. We get the rejection it, like we anticipated off that 220, 219.95. We're now into the 80s. I don't even want to call that a rejection. That's not a rejection yeah, yet. Yeah, that's a misnomer. Uh, but here we go again now testing. We're going to take some more sharage out around these levels because we did say we were gonna, Yeah. Uh, hold on term. over here. Yeah, yeah, I've been saying sharage for a little bit now. Sharage. Yeah, yeah. Everything sharage. is edge free. <laughs> I'm a unique guy. What can I tell you, bro? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're taking we're taking some more out there. We got two seventeen ninety eight longs. We are two dollars in the money, money, money on this meta trade. Let's take some more out here, and then uh, I guess we'll hold a piece for the dream eventually. For the dream. For the dream, baby. That two. Maybe I don't even know where to look after that, man. Uh, I have to look to see where uh, where the price action takes us. I think I told you, what was it? Uh, two fifty five. I think. You and I were talking about this last week or the week prior. We looked at the daily on, yeah, Meta? on Meta, yeah. Um, Meta's gonna, got room still, for sure. I'm going to get out of this uh, CXAI trade. It's just, you know, I'm sized in so small. It's not really worth my time uh, concentrating on it. We'll get out for a tiny little winner. We get out there 490 and 510. It's very exciting to watch, but in terms of having uh, actual shares in this to make it worthwhile, keeping an eye on, not so much. So we'll focus our, uh, our efforts here on Meta as it retraces back down, Max, into two 1980s. Do we get the actual 220 break? That will be the, the key in here. Uh, Reliable the Rudy got pissed that I got out of uh, um, CXAI. No, hold a piece for the dream. Remember, no, I know, dude. You're right. I should have done that. But uh, <laughs> the fact of the matter is, you know, I just got to focus on this one. But, yeah, I mean, it just wasn't worth it. We're talking real small size here. So. And here we go on Amazon. 97 is now the high of day on Amazon. So uh, let's get through that 102. I am not canceling this offer at 102. I'm joining the size to get, uh, you know, another, what is that, third of my remaining position out on Amazon. Looking beautiful on this one. Took a little bit of profit on Google as well. So Google still messing with that 107.30, 107.50 is my next level on this one. So I'll be offering out like 48s, something like that. But uh, yeah, I mean, all the longs are printing right now. ES making a little bit of a wick high, but not really anything to worry about. Uh, yeah, what, uh, what else do we got going on here? Nothing really. Tesla hanging out at the highs. Apple almost got to that 165. So we, we thought it was going to get to 165. It gets to 93 and then rejects. I don't think that Apple is not going to get to 165 if it gets to 164.93. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This it, is probably going to break. What a day. I don't think I can take it at this time of what day on the day, break. What a day, bro. But like, what? yeah, what a day. What a day for these big cap names. I mean, yesterday you had the bamboozlement. We said, oh my God, great, CPI lower. You know, uh, core as expected, you know, great. PCE was good before that. Jobs are starting to cool, this and that. Everything's pointing in the right direction. And we sell the entire move off the algo. And then today we buy everything back up. And we're, we're 10 points below the uh, algo spike on the ES. So great day today. Bought right back up. If you're long, some of these big tech names, I'm, I'm sure you're real happy. What's the NQ look like in, in relation to yesterday's highs? We looked at the ES, but did not look at the NQ. Okay, the NQ algo spike high, 13.242, I believe. I want to double check that. 13.241. So, yeah, still 45, 46 points away from that on the So you're NQ. saying NQ has room to run? I am saying that. But you know what doesn't have much more room? Time on the show. Yes. Because oh, wow. we are 45 seconds from the end of the midday show before we send you up to Brendo and the big kahunas to my right, Neil and Sean. They'll be taking you through the close. But what a day it's been. Uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty to talk about at highs on some of these big indexes and some of these big tech names that we follow with the indexes. Wow, Google, day's high. 
Microsoft, days high. Meta, days high. Amazon, days high. Apple, days high. Except for, I mean, uh, Tesla. Tesla's asleep. Right, it's up two and three quarter percent on the day, but people not loving the old Tesla these days. Mm -hmm. That's okay; it'll come back into form eventually. Oh baby, says KD and flips. He puts the O <laughs> on the baby. Oh baby, yes, absolutely. Ron Williams. All right, guys, it is up for us. We will be back tomorrow. It'll be TGIF, maybe a free for all Friday to give back all the games we made today. But uh, probably, yeah. Who knows? Who cares? As long as there's uh, as long as there's uh, volatility. All right, guys, exactly. we will see you same bat time, same bat channel. Hey guys, welcome back on a very positive Thursday afternoon uh, for both the S&P and the NASDAQ. It is tech that continues to lead us uh, here late in the afternoon as we head into uh, the final couple hours of the day. If, I'll show you the board here, the sector board for the S&P. But if you remember back this morning when I showed you this, it was almost 50-50 uh, 